all places, people, events in this work are solely a figment of the author's imagination. It all has nothing to do with real people, places, and events of 1980. The fly looked at him greedily. She treated him like garbage that could be eaten at any moment. It was a fly climbing over his face, and he felt it moving its paws. He felt its every movement. She flew around his head and constantly made buzzing sounds. It was terrible torture for him. The commander looked at him, and in a loud voice asked why he was grumbling under his breath. The young man whispered for food. He kept asking for food. He was very hungry and wanted to eat. One of the thugs who beat him came up to him and said that he was completely crazy. Maybe in the South they feed dogs like him, but in their great republic they don't let people like him eat. The young man replied that if they want him to tell all the information himself, then they just need to feed him and after that he will tell who he works with, tell his rank and give his name. The only thing they had to do was give him something to eat. He was very hungry. The thug turned to his boss saying that this guy was completely crazy, that most likely he didn't understand who he was talking to and couldn't imagine what they could do to him. The boss turned to the young man, said that he was a stinking dog and continued, if they feed him, he will tell them how he got here and what his goal is. He definitely must tell everything. The young man agreed to everything they wanted and was ready to tell them so that they would only know. He wanted them to give him food, all this was to earn money for food and now he is hungry. The boss turned to his wards in a dissatisfied voice and told them to bring this guy food one for his subordinates turned his head at the boss I told my master that this is wrong. The boss ordered his subordinate to close his mouth because he didn't ask him whether it was right or wrong. If they hand him over to a higher authority without information, then none of them will receive encouragement from above and they won't be allowed to work. But if this guy gives them all the information then everything will be perfect differently. The subordinate understood everything and agreed with his boss. He said that he would do as he was asked. He would just have to wait a little while they found food. They brought him soup and some strange porridge. The young man looked at this food and wanted to vomit. The food looked disgusting, but he was too hungry. One of the guys who had beaten him before brought a spoon that he could eat. He put it right on the table in front of the young man and said he wanted to eat so let's eat now. The imprisoned young man carefully examined the spoon and the chopsticks that were brought to him. He tried to understand what they were made of. He took the spoon in his hands and realized that it was made of metal. This spoon suited him for his plan that he wanted to carry out. He looked at the boss and his henchmen and realized one very important thing. Perhaps these people were strong physically and put pressure on him with their majority, but they were very stupid. The young man scooped soup into his spoon before eating it. He said that he always knew that northern food was not so tasty. But he couldn't even think that it was so tasteless and turned to the thug and asked them, Did they really put machine oil and tail in the soup? The young man turned to the boss asking him why their soup was so thin. It didn't look like rice at all. Most likely it was corn gravy. He asked if he would eat the same crap. The boss looked at him with a surprised look and asked what he meant. Everyone knew that both in the South and in the North, army food was always unbearably disgusting. It was impossible to eat. One got the feeling that it was being prepared for waste in society. The subordinate looked at the young man and decided that he was completely crazy. He was some kind of psycho. He was now worried about the taste of food instead of thanking them for bringing him at least some food. Turning to the side of the boss, he asked for permission to kill him guy to shut up. But it was already too late. The boss had an iron rod sticking out right in his forehead, which the young man had thrown. The boss was already dead, and it was unlikely that he would have been able to give another command to his subordinate. Before he completely lost consciousness and died, the boss managed to say the last word. He was only interested in one question, what happened? After which the boss fell and hit his head on the table, and an iron rod pierced his head right through the guards looked at their boss. There was fear in their eyes. They didn't understand what could happen to him. Now the young man was standing right in front of these pumped-up guys, holding a second iron stick in his hands so that the guy would be remembered once and for all. The taste of food is always important, and you should never neglect it. The guards thought that this guy was completely crazy and decided among themselves that they needed to kill him now because he killed their commander. They needed to punish him. The guard, turning to the young man, 
said does he really think that he will be forgiven for this act, then he will most likely die in a punishment cell where he will be beaten every day for killing their boss. They considered him a stupid cretin. The young man was ready for the fact that these guys would be unhappy with his action, but he could not do anything about it. In his hands there was still a second iron wand with which he wanted to figure it out. They didn't even imagine what he could do for them. It was a surprise. The next moment, the iron rod was already covered in blood. It was the blood of the guys who kept him here and beat him all this time. He decided that he would keep his promise only because they fed him. He began to tell the already wounded guard that he was higher in rank in the special forces and his name was Du Zhanglong. He got here by crossing the whole sea. His goal was to kill northern soldiers like them. This had to be done immediately. Before he left here, he wanted to do one more thing that was very important to him. The fly that had been climbing over the young man's face all this time landed on the wall and sat there calmly for several seconds. The next moment her life was over because he threw an iron rod at her that killed her. It was his revenge for all the time that this fly tormented him and climbed on his face. Everything in this world must be punished for its actions. Even the fly that did not allow him to be here in peace had to be destroyed because it tormented him. After some time, he was already in Seoul. He stood near a shop where they sold food. He still decided to go in. He waited for the waiters. He ordered two servings of salantin. Opposite the young man at the table sat a man with black hair. He was wearing a brown suit and constantly smiled when he looked at the young man. His name was Park Jungnan. He was the boss of Zangin. He told the young man that his company did not have such an employee and he did not understand why he suddenly decided to quit. The young man replied that he no longer likes army food. He is tired of it, and he finally wants to eat in restaurants. The waiter brought the young man's boss his order, placed it on the table, and wished him. Bon appetit. When he looked at this soup, he realized that he was hungry again. Most likely, this was a very tasty soup in the guy's opinion because he was drooling every time he saw this magnificent dish. The boss offered a bowl of soup to the young man because he was very hungry and he decided to order one more serving for himself. The guy took the plate that the boss wanted to give him with his iron chopsticks and pushed it away from him. He definitely didn't want to eat it. Pushing the plate aside, he asked for forgiveness that he had to refuse food, but he definitely couldn't eat like that. He never put all the rice in at once, but added it as he ate and preserved all the taste of the dish. This way the rice will not swell while it is in the broth, and you can enjoy every grain of rice when you take it out with your spoon. Zhang Long turned to the young man. The boss maybe he wants to quit because of the one who recently passed. What kind of hints were these? He completed his task flawlessly and returned back unharmed. He even managed to try the enemy's cooking, although he didn't want it. The boss looked at him for a few seconds and then said that he himself knew what kind of operation was being discussed. The boss said that the original plan was that it was every man for himself, so it was not his fault that only one returned alive. The young man explained to his boss that this is not the case at all. He wants to leave the service for a completely different reason. The boss looked at the guy for a few seconds, then took a deep breath, then exhaled. He tried to understand what was happening to him. What was the reason for his leaving? Then he suggested that we eat normally and not discuss business while eating. This was wrong. The guy thanked his boss, he did it anyway. Although the boss didn't understand why and why they were thanking him, it was strange for him. Then Zhang Wang replied that he was grateful to his boss for giving him the opportunity to live and eat well when he was a homeless and rootless guy. It's unlikely that anyone else could measure him up. The boss said that the guy is great. It's only because of his skills that he became the way he is and he will live well after his dismissal because he is a very capable guy and he knows a lot. A whole year has already passed since he quit his job. There was only construction around him. He didn't see anything else. The workers were talking among themselves about their new employee. Before Zhang Long, of course, he was new here. But when he was working, he simply flew among everyone who worked at this construction site. He was the first person who did everything so well. He was doing work that meant carrying heavy things around. Type of cement log blocks. Every day when he went to work, he was determined that he needed to move these bags of cement even faster. He should earn a lot more money because he needed to hurry up. Now he needed to move the bricks to the top floor. All the work he needed to do as quickly as possible. As his boss said, the young man's abilities were very good and of course they were appreciated. 
But strangely enough, he did not live in wealth and prosperity. Despite this, he did not lose heart and continued to try. It was time for lunch instead of going to eat. He needed to go to the bank located not far from the construction site. He went into this bank and looked around. He wanted to understand which bank employee would be better for him to approach with his request. He saw a young girl who was helping her grandmother sort out her bank card. This girl turned around and looked at the young man. She smiled at him. She noticed him as soon as he came here. The young man waved his hand at her in greeting and she began to smile even more and was embarrassed. He really liked it when they smiled back at him. Every time during lunch he went to the bank, he started doing this a year ago, when he first got this job, he took the envelope from this girl's hands and told her words of gratitude. A strange man approached the young man. What he said was not entirely clear. He suggested that Du Jianlong stop wasting money on all sorts of nonsense. The young man did not understand what he was talking about. He asked again what this strange man wanted. What the man continued to tell the young man not to live one day at a time and collect money so as not to be left broke like those guys who drink in bars every Friday. And I explained to him that he is still young. This money will help him achieve what he wants in the future. Unlike all those guys who lost their youth for some stupid waste of time. The young man didn't know what he wanted and didn't know what he was saving this money for. So the next day at lunchtime he found a bank next to a construction site and there he saw this girl for the first time. On the very first day, she opened my savings book and explained that now all his funds would accumulate on it, thanked him for deciding to use the services of this particular bank, and told him that she was still waiting for him at the bank. And I was simply beautiful. He saw her then for the first time and to this day only she remains in his head. He constantly remembered how she smiles. The young man could not help himself. He just stood and looked at her like a statue. And at one time she glowed like sunlight and he saw nothing but her. After that, he goes to the bank every lunchtime to see her, and every time he deposits a book of 5,001 because he wants to go there as often as possible. Thus, during this year, certain relationships and money have accumulated in his account. At first she began to recognize him among the other visitors to the bank. Then they began to remember each other's names. He filled in her name thanks to the badge that hung on her blouse and she remembered his name thanks to the monetary contribution and the statements on which he signed. In a conversation with a girl, the young man found out that her name was Sona and she grew up in love in a good family. Although she had money, that's why immediately after graduating from a women's higher education institution, she began working in this bank and Sona also found out that he was a former military man and that he has either a home nor a family and I knew that he works at a construction site. Once she had a question and she asked the young man why he worked as a military man for a long time but he had no savings, it was not very good. She said that she could not help him in this situation in any way. The guy replied that all the money he earned there was given to the family of his colleagues who died. It seemed to him that this was the right decision because they needed the money much more than he did. He didn't have a family and he didn't have parents. He didn't have children. And in these families there was no breadwinner. So he helped them. No big deal. He'll earn more. The girl looked at the guy with surprised eyes. He seemed somehow special to her, and his actions were also special. For some reason it was always difficult for him to talk to her. He seemed speechless when he was next to her. All he could do was take his passbook and say thank you. This time the girl invited him not to come every day but to collect money for a month and bring it to the bank. She had a lot of clients do this. He didn't agree with this. Well, why would he do that if he brings money once a month? Then he will see her only once a month and he didn't want that. The girl did not agree with him and said that he was wrong. Let them take their book and thank you for using the services of this bank every time she was nervous at that moment. Every time he looked at her before he left the bank, he really liked to see her every day. Just for this reason he came to the bank and left his money there on this book. When he met her, the young man had a desire to have a good life. He found his dream and strived for the best, but he still could not afford a luxurious life. Unfortunately, he was too far from what he dreamed of. There was a radio in his room and on the radio they said that today the director of the Yidi Sam Social Center received a presidential award, that this center makes a great contribution to the public life of the city, it clears the streets of homeless people, placed them in their homes. He was very annoyed. He came up and turned off the radio because he was tired of listening to this false news. 
He was very tired of this nonsense that was said every day on the radio. Upon reaching adulthood, he enlisted in the military and was engaged in various things, breakthroughs, infiltration, terrorist acts, carried out the most difficult assignments, this was what he did well, but over the past year he had not had such a feeling, he could not understand in any way what was happening in his life now. Or it was that he didn't know how to live like other people, he desperately wanted to eat something very tasty. He heard that someone knocked on his door and opened the door. The young man wanted to go in, turned towards the door and thought that he needed to open it. Before opening the door, he asked that who needed him there. The man who stood on the other side of the door said that he needed Du Zhanglong, that he was from his boss and he needed to talk to him about a very urgent matter. The guy opened the door and looked very carefully at the man who stood in front of him. He asked who he was and why he needed him. In front of him stood a brown guy in an expensive suit and slicked hair. He greeted the young man and asked if he remembered him. After all, they served together, and that his name was Cho Taman. The young man remembered him. Yes, of course they served together. It was the same junior sergeant who ran with him. This junior sergeant Cho Taman worked with the young man only once, and only on one of the assignments. He was an excellent soldier. Well, he left the service because of his character. It seems that he adapted well and began to make excellent money. This was evident because the young man had an expensive watch on his hand. And the suit was not at all cheap. Cho Taman answered indeed. He started making good money after leaving military service. The young man asked how he found out where he lived and why he found him. The guest explained that after he quit, he looked for him for a long time and therefore went through hundreds of rooms to find that he had a very important matter to do sunbeam him. It was very unexpected for the young man that he came to him. I also found his room and now I offer him a business. It was not clear what kind of business he might have. The guest said that he wants to offer him a business in which he is the best in which he is the best and in which he simply has no equal. The young man was wary of his words. After all, he was already beginning to understand what he was leading to. Most likely, he would want him to carry out some military operations again but he left the department a year ago. The guest explained that when he heard that the young man quit, he collected all possible information about him, and he has a very good job for him. All this, of course, was very interesting, but the young man would like to know what kind of work we are talking about and what they offer him. The guest said that he is offering a job in which he has no equal. He does it better than anyone else. The young man replied that he was not going to stain his hands with blood again for the sake of money that he did not want to return to this dirty business. He was tired of it. No, you got it all wrong, the guest said. He didn't ask to kill anyone. He just wants him to teach some people a lesson. The young man said that they should tell him everything as it is, absolutely honestly, what he should do and what they want from him. He should know the whole truth about the business that is offered to him. This man told him that he was just an entrepreneur in the eyes of the public. But to be honest, he is the head of a large gang. The guy asked him if he was in a gangster group. To this question, he answered that yes, and he wants the young man to deal with the head of another gang. He told the guest that he could forget about it. He didn't leave his job to do something like that. He doesn't want to kill people anymore and doesn't intend to get involved with the criminal underworld. The guest didn't understand whether he really left his job to live in such a terrible place like this and engage in construction while earning pennies. The young man told the guest to better watch his language and he will not tolerate insults addressed to him. If he wants to somehow offend or hurt, then he is ready to close his eyes to the fact that the guest is a very respected person and will fight with him. The guest did not stop and continued to clean up the young man. If he takes up this matter, he will give him fifty million won. He thinks that he has never seen such money. With that kind of money, he will definitely be able to buy a normal house somewhere in the capital or open his own business, and no longer worry about the fact that he has no money, said the guest, and he continued whatever he chooses to do with this money, he will be able to live better than he lives now, the young man thought fifty million won is a very large amount of money, in order to accumulate such an amount he will have to save five thousand one ten thousand times, well, if he changes his mind, the guest said then let him come to his office, and said that the building of his company is located in Dessen, he handed over a business card and explained how to get there by express bus. But before going, he asked to be contacted, and she continued that this is very strange. 
What is a great man like? How is he trying to avoid his fate? To avoid those matters in which he has no equal? His business card began to carefully examine everything that was written on it. He thought that this could be a good opportunity, but for now he did not want to do it. He put this business card on the bedside table that was in his room. On this bedside table there was a TV and toilet paper that held this business card. It was already too late in the yard. It was dark. A man was lying on the floor and could not sleep. Various thoughts were creeping into his head. He looked at the ceiling and kept thinking about what happened today. He thought about his life and about all the events that happened in his life. The appearance of this man in his life began to sow a seed of doubt inside him. He could not calm down and forget about this proposal. He thought that this guy was right when he said that he shouldn't live the life he lives now but still he tried to do what he was doing for a while so of course he won't be able to make a lot of money maybe he should still accept the offer and then he can normal life. And it's strange who this person is, his words that he avoids doing things in which he is indispensable. Can he live without doing these things in which he is good? All these words greatly influenced the young man. The next morning when he came to work, there were boxes in front of him with bags of cement on them. This was his job for the whole day. He looked at these bags and realized that he was already feeling bad just at the sight of these bags of cement. His days were absolutely the same. Nothing new happened in his life. They approached the young man and told him that today he needed to move all these bags upstairs. He was a better worker than them. So they were completely confident that he could handle it. The young man asked his boss where all the other workers were, and the boss told him not to worry. He only called him. He saw him the other day. He liked the way he worked. The boss realized that he was a conscientious worker and was confident that he would fully cope with this task. The guy was very upset. He wanted to punch the boss right in the face after such words because he behaved disgustingly. Did he really call only him today to carry these bags of course? He was a very strong guy. Well, he didn't want to work alone all the time. There was a break at the bank. The girl went outside to get some air and drink a cup of coffee from a paper cup. Sun had a very terrible day at work and she didn't know how she would survive. Until the end of the day, she couldn't do anything and couldn't cope. And her work colleague told her not to be upset, that her face always lights up when it's time for lunch. It probably had something to do with that guy. She became happy every time that guy named Du Zhanglong came. It seemed that she was very interested in him. Everyone around saw how the girl began to smile when he came. Came every day to deposit money into his account. If it was a store, he would be their regular customer so he needs to be treated very well. Of course, this young man was not so handsome and looked very poor, so most likely his girlfriend could not have liked him. Of course he was not the most handsome guy on earth but he had a very beautiful body. They decided this was all due to the fact that he is a builder and he has to carry bricks and metal sticks all day. That's probably why he pumped up such a body for himself. Sona drank coffee from a paper cup and said that she doubted that it was because of the construction because her dad also used to work at the construction site and he didn't have such a beautiful body. And she continued saying thank you to her friend for meddling in her affairs and asked her to stick her nose out of her affairs. In turn, she would not poke her nose into her affairs. She meant here an affair with a manager who recognizes them because they are from a technical school for girls so she asked for more. Don't meddle in her business. Sona, at her desk, she didn't have a single visitor. She said that she was always waiting for only one thing. When will this guy come? Wait, why was she so angry at this girl? They were just talking about this guy who was a bank client named Du Zhanglong. Then why did these words hurt her, and she couldn't help herself? Today was no exception, and this guy also came to the bank today. He doesn't miss a single day every day to see this girl. Today he also came to her. He entered the bank at the entrance, and waved his greetings to her. It was one of the most favorite moments. For the young man, this is the moment of their meeting. Sona immediately jumped up from her seat and asked him why he came so early. It was not yet lunch. She heard an answer from the young man that he would be a little busy during her lunch. So he came a little earlier. The next question was about the purpose of his visit. How did he always going to put money into the account? The young man replied that no. Today he will not deposit money into his account, and he went to the bank branch only to see Mrs. Sana. He said that he would return soon and deposit a huge amount of money. Well, now he came in to say goodbye to her. 
he just wanted to see the girl again. The girl was a little embarrassed and said that if so, the bank's services were not needed today. She was glad to see him and would wait for him when he sat with her again. He came just to see me. The girl thought something must have happened to him, that today he didn't bring money to put it in the bank, but came to meet me. It was very unexpected. When the young man left the bank, he still felt that the girl's gaze was following him. It was very pleasant for him. It was important for him to see her before he carried out a new task. He went to the bus. It was a bus station, said the guest who offered the job. The guy went to buy tickets. He needed one ticket today, saying. He told the cashier that he needed a ticket, preferably for the very near future. He needed to get there as soon as possible. After that conversation with the guest, he didn't think long and called Cho Taemun to say that he had accepted his offer and that he would come soon. The young man needed money, so he made such a decision. He was tired of living very poor. He wanted to finally get out of this vicious circle and earn enough money so that he could afford everything he wanted. When the bus arrived at the place, you young man got off the bus. He needed to go to the office that the person who offered him the job was talking about. To his surprise, people were already waiting for him near the bus stop, waving to me and there was a car behind them. Most likely they had come to accompany him. He walked up to them and got into the car. The next moment the car started moving and drove off. He sat calmly and waited for him to be brought to the place where they were supposed to discuss everything and finally include the contract. But Cho Taemun did not wait for the car to reach the office and already in the car he immediately began to discuss the task that needed to be completed. He said that the target was a man. His name is Park Gwangho. He said that now this man's gang and Cho Taemun's gang are fighting for the right to sell machine guns in a tourist hotel. This is a very profitable business. Cho Taemun said that he wanted to break into him himself and fight face to face. He did not want to interfere with anyone in this matter. But someone from the top warned him that if he himself was liquidated, he would not receive this right. The right decision would be if this is done by an unknown person who has nothing to do with this matter. He should suddenly appear and make Park Guanho appear. Then things will go much easier. The young man listened to his new boss and said he will do everything as he is told. But it won't be easy after all. This guy knows that Cho Taemun wants to poison the bandits on him. So he's walking around with a million of his mongrels. So it's probably better to wait until he relaxes a little. The young man suddenly asked his new boss what time it was. He looked at him in surprise and didn't even understand why the guy needed this. The new boss looked at his watch and told him now it's about 12.30. It's still just the beginning of the day and, in principle, what's the hurry for me? The guy looked thoughtfully out the window and muttered under his breath that it was still so early and until 16.30 the bank had been open for quite a long time towards his new boss and said that he should be taken to this Park Gwangho or whatever his name is, that he will quickly deal with him and immediately get his money and asked again, he will be able to deposit the promised money into his bank account today. The boss explained that if the young man goes to carry out tasks today, he will have to additionally fight with his subordinates, who are constantly guarding the goal. Of course, the young man was one of the best mercenaries and special agents who had ever met. But the boss was not sure what exactly this task needed to be done today, and so he asked the young man again that it might be worth waiting until Park Gwangho relaxed. Of course, let's continue the boss. He should not interfere with the progress of the operation. He suggested that they find out where this person might be now and take him there. The car stopped on a building with a signboard Yong Hua Du. The young man looked out the window and tried to inspect this place. The boss said that Park Gwangho and his subordinates are now in this very building and warned that he has a huge security guard whom he carries with him everywhere. This man was involved in Korean national wrestling. Therefore, you need to be careful. When the young man looked around he looked at his new boss and asked what is the best dish to order in this restaurant. This question surprised the boss a little. He did not understand in what sense the best dish was and what the young man was talking about. After thinking a little... He answered that he had not been to this restaurant for a long time and had not ordered anything here. The driver who was driving the boss and the young man all this time turned around and said that this restaurant has very tasty fried dumplings and he advises you to try them. So fried dumplings the young man thought that this restaurant had the most delicious dish. It was very good. He got out of the car and said that he would be back very soon. Getting out of the car, the young man headed towards the restaurant. Most likely, 
He wanted to go to this restaurant to look around and at the same time satisfy his hunger. The boss turned to his driver and asked him if this restaurant really has very good fried dumplings. The driver answered him that yes, indeed, they make them themselves and it turns out very tasty and asked if the boss is sure that this guy can handle it himself. The boss answered his driver that if there is another young man like this in the world, then in the queen house and after that he took out a cigarette and stuck his teeth in. You can watch this for a long time. When you pour sake from a bottle into a cup, the man who needed to be killed was sitting at a table. There was a lot of different food on his table and his assistants were constantly fussing about pouring him sake. When a young man entered this restaurant, you sat down at a table. A waiter approached him. He ordered fried dumplings. During this time the guy managed to analyze the situation in the restaurant. He saw this man who needed to be killed. His target was sitting at the very end of the hall. A young man sat and looked at the dumplings that were brought to him. He liked the smell. He wondered what they would taste like. Of course, he really wanted the dumplings not to disappoint him and, in fact, to be very tasty because he wanted to eat well. He took the soy sauce jars that were sitting next to the other jars of condiments because he liked it the most. He poured this soy sauce into his spoon. He wanted to hold on for a while so he could enjoy his meal later. There was no saucer on the table for sauces and the young man took it out, so he poured the sauce into this saucer. He took the next jar that stood next to the sauce. It was a jar of vinegar. He needed to pour the saucers in proportion to exactly the amount of sauce he poured. So he took the spoon he was measuring and poured vinegar into it, and then poured it into the dishes that were on the table. The most important secret is that you couldn't skimp on ground red pepper. You definitely had to sprinkle in more in order for the taste to be rich. Finally the young man started eating. He dipped the fried dumplings into a bowl which he made his own unique sauce and kept it in this sauce for a while. Then he brought it to his mouth and took a bite of the dumpling. When he started chewing he felt an incredible taste. It really was great. The dumplings in this restaurant were incredibly delicious. The young man ate the entire portion that was brought to him very quickly and didn't even notice how it happened. The taste of the fried dumplings was incredible. As always, in such restaurants they bring something as a gift from the establishment. And this time the young man was given a gift of a drink with which he washed down his lunch. He thanked the waiter for the food and said that it was very tasty and that he had not eaten such delicious food for a long time and that he loved people who knew how to cook. And now he needed to get down to business. If he really was so happy about the food, then things should go very smoothly today. The young man decided to start his work right now while he was in this restaurant. He decided that he would throw a glass at his target and see how his security would react to it. The glass that the young man threw crashed against the wall above Park Guanho's head. This is the man he needed to kill. From behind the table where the glass broke, a scream was heard that who did this, who dared to throw glasses around. Let the one who did this show himself, the guards shouted. The young man came straight to these guys and said that he was trying to pick a fight with them because they were very boring when they ate at their table and made loud noises when they chewed pickled radishes. All these noises irritated the young man. The man who needed to be killed told the guy that he had gone completely crazy and that he was walking and they didn't understand who he was talking to and ordered his guy Sheba to deal with him was not yet completely angry. He shouted for them to grab the guy and break his face so that the guards would show the young man that he had made a mistake for which he would have to pay, that they couldn't just offend their master. One after another, the guards began to run up to the young man and try to engage him in battle. This moment the young man liked the operation the most. He really loved when a lot of guys want to die for their boss this moment always amused him this was the time when you need to show what he is capable of. There was a plate lying on the floor. It was turned over, there was once soup in it, now it leaked out and a puddle formed on the floor. The soup spread all over the floor of the restaurant. Everything around was broken and scattered. The tiles on the floor were broken. Here the big guy his new boss told him about was already lying in a puddle of his blood mixed with a puddle of soup. In the restaurant on the floor there were many corpses and wounded guys, he beat them all who were guarding Park Guanho. Opposite the young man sat the same Park Guanho whom he was ordered to kill. This man asked Du Zhangong who he is, where he came from and why he did it. And he also added that he didn't know that in their circles there was such a strong guy like him, and no one had talked about him yet. The young man replied to be remembered as an outsider with serious problems with anger control, that's all, and asked not to be treated as just another fighter. 
The guys he had just beaten were lying on the floor and writhing in pain. They could not do anything. He beat them to such an extent that they would lie in the hospital for a long time and heal their wounds. Park Wanho sat and looked at the young man through his broken glasses. He didn't understand what was happening. It seemed to him that the amount of security that was near him was supposed to protect him. And now he was left alone with this guy. An outsider means the man said and I will continue that it is very interesting for him to meet him and that he is hearing about him for the first time. He asked who paid the young man. It wasn't Cho Taemun. And if so, he would pay more than the amount that was offered to him and Park Gwang Ho needed such a guy to work for him. The young man thought that he was now being offered an amount twice the amount that he was supposed to be paid for his murder, which meant that he had just been offered 100 million won instead of 50 million. But in reality, will this man be able to pay that kind of money? Park Kwon Ho continued to insist that the young man tell him the amount he was supposed to be paid for the work and he would immediately double it, and also said that he was ready to pay him much more, and then fell silent for a minute. Everything he said had no meaning. The young man asked why he stopped there and did not finish speaking because he still wanted to say something. At that moment, the young man heard a strange sound behind him. One of these guards who worked for this man was still able to get up. The young man wanted to see who it could be, turned his head and saw that it was the same thug who scared him. The thug stood and held a stool in his hands. Most likely he wanted to come up from behind and stun the young man, but his plan did not work. Du Zhangong realized that this thug had already come too close to him, and he did not have time to dodge the blow, so something had to be done. The thug struck with all his might. He was indeed a very strong young man. He did not expect that he would be able to miss such a strong blow. Before Zhang Ong, you at home were absolutely not prepared that he would now receive such a blow. It seemed to him that he would knock out this thug, and he had to stand up for me. Park Guangho shouted to one person calls himself an outsider, and it's not just that he will be killed right here in this place. He may not even expect that he will be able to escape from here. At this time, the thug rose again to strike again. He thought that if he succeeded the first time, then he could strike the young man again. This time he didn't succeed because Du Zhanglong stood up and dodged this blow to the side. The man slipped between his legs and struck right between his legs with his foot. The thug did not expect such a blow. He hit him so hard that the thug started to have tears in his eyes and foam started coming out of his mouth. Of course, the young man put all his strength into this blow that he could concentrate into it at that moment. Then, without stopping, Du Zhanglong struck again. He wanted to completely finish off his opponent and neutralize him for a while. He hit the thug with all his might. After this blow he fell to the ground. When the thug was already lying on the ground, the young man finished him off completely with his last blow. He wanted him to be unable to wake up here again. Yes, this thug was really very strong and very resilient. It was rare to find such strong fighters and that's why Du Zhangong you were able to cope with him. The young man turned his head towards the guy who was sitting in the corner. He asked him what time it was and asked him to do it as quickly as possible because he was worried that it might already be 16.30. The guy replied that it was not yet 16.30 and not even 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The young man breathed a sigh of relief. And this suited Du Zhanglong very well. Now he managed to do everything he had planned for today. The man began to be indignant, did not understand what this meant and why he said that everything was fine, he did not understand what he was saying and why he was going to leave. But the young man ignored him. This led to the man losing his temper and starting shouting at him that he was a scumbag, and he just couldn't ignore that he is obliged to answer his questions and have no right to leave without his permission. This was the same building on which the Chon Bank sign hung. It was the bank where the young man's new boss was serviced. The boss, together with Du Zhanglong, left this building and the cart handed the young man a book with money on it, which he promised to pay after completing the work. His new bus said that he really didn't believe that they would make it before the bank closed and that the young man works very quickly. This is the first time he has seen such a good result. The boss asked the young man what he planned to do with the money he earned for this work. The young man was not sure yet well. Most likely he wanted to buy an apartment. Today he saw that apartments were being sold not far from the car park. The new boss looked at him and said that he had nothing to do in this area and it would be much better if he bought an apartment in the city center. The guy never thought that he could buy an apartment in the city center. 
Maybe he should try to buy shares now everyone is involved in shares then. He advised that he knows what share to buy. The young man replied that perhaps these are shares of the Khan or Sam Corporation. Most likely, these two corporations should buy shares of the Khan Corporation. The shares of such a company cannot go bankrupt because this company provides electricity to the entire country. Of course this is correct, but the Sam Corporation also seems fine with a smart look, the guy answered. Japanese electronics are much better than Korean TVs, rice cookers, everything is made in Japan. The young man lowered his eyes and felt some very strange pain. He had never felt anything like this before. This pain was unfamiliar to him. His hands began to hurt very much and only started to hurt now. A whole hour had passed since he fought, but the pain appeared only after a while. He had never experienced anything like this before. The new boss suggested that he go to the hospital of the man. There was pain in the place where he received a blow from the thug. The boss insisted on taking the young man to the hospital if he had a health problem. The boss said that he would take him to the hospital which he very often visits. In this hospital there is one old doctor who does not ask unnecessary questions and is never surprised when they come to him with live wounds. He simply treats all the boss's subordinates, and he is a very experienced doctor. The young man agreed to go to the hospital, where he was examined and a cast was put on both of his arms. It was the doctor who said very scary things to the young man, something he definitely didn't expect to hear. Of course the young man was scared. Not only was he scared, but even the boss felt uneasy when he heard what happened to Du Shanglong. The young man said that he could not believe everything that the doctor said now. It was simply impossible. The doctor continued to say that Yi young man has a crack in both hands, that these cracks in the bones are not very big, so they will heal in about a month. He said that he should recover quickly, but he will have to walk with a cast for a whole month. The young man asked the doctor if he really had to walk like this for a whole month with a cast on both arms and that he couldn't do anything about it. The doctor replied that the young man understood everything correctly. And he also added that he should not move his hands, that they should not be strained, and the most important thing is that he should hit something in order to slow down the process of bone fusion. The young man thought that he was terribly unlucky. How could he get into such a mess? This of course was a problem for him. Now he won't be able to do anything with both hands at once. The boss immediately approached the young man. He said that of course this was big trouble and now he would have a hard time and extended his hand to take the young man's medicine. The boss invited the young man to stop by one of the establishments to relax a little and drink some vodka. Du Zhanglong agreed and they went. When the young man drank a little vodka, he felt much better. For some reason he began to understand the fact that his hands were broken and he needed to be very careful with them. The young man really liked this condition, but he didn't know if he could drink when his arms were broken and he was taking medicine. Of course, what could have happened because he drank alcohol? The boss reminded him of the good old days when he taught how to heal all wounds with alcohol. The young man laughed at these words. Yes, indeed, there was once such a situation. Well, that was a long time ago. Of course time just flies by talking and their days in the army now they were just drinking and remembering the good times when they were in the army together. They drank a lot of alcohol together in a restaurant. The young man had not drank like that for a long time. There were a lot of empty bottles around them. The new boss said in a conversation that he knew that the young man was very strong, but he had no idea how strong and did not think that he would be able to fight not only with the guards, but with this thug. Just in case, he prepared a weapon. The young man asked did he find a real weapon how could he do this. The boss replied that he really found a real weapon for the young man and that he thought that it could be useful to him well. If not this time so maybe the next young man asked again and took out the weapon. The new boss said that shotguns are always easy to get because I sell them for hunting animals. But with a pistol everything is much more complicated since they need to be smuggled from Russia. But it can still be done. The young man told his new boss that he had chosen the right job, he seemed to be doing well, and if he had access to weapons, this was very good news. He told the young man that the army suited him very well, that he felt good when he served in the special detachment, and he did not understand why Du Zhanglong left there. The young man pulled the glass towards him and poured alcohol down his eyes. It was very difficult for him to tell the reason why he had to leave the army. 
The guy drank the alcohol that was in his glass and said that he and three junior soldiers participated with him in the same operation. The only one who returned alive from this special operation was a young man. All the others died and he felt guilty for what happened. Everything that happened to him then was all in his head and he thought that he no longer had the right to serve in the army. So he left. He felt guilty for the death of the soldiers. He thought that they would come to him in a dream and he would see them again. But in all this time they have never appeared. He thought that this was all because they also believed that it was he who was to blame for the death and that he could not save their lives and now they will forever be angry with him. The interlocutor handed the young man a glass of vodka and told him to drink it. Then he would feel better. Du Jamon looked to the side where the box of alcohol stood and realized that most of the bottles were already empty, which only meant that they had drunk enough. He told his companion that they had already drunk normally and he didn't even notice how they emptied all these bottles. He replied that this was certainly good, but let's order more. Du Jamon said that his interlocutor was too drunk and that it was time to stop, that he could no longer drink and they had already brought enough alcohol. And what did he say? The young man thinks that he is very drunk. This is not true. He is absolutely sober. If you look at him, he has not blushed at all. He asked the young man again why he thought he was drunk. Although he was not drunk at all, he was fine. You couldn't tell from him that he drank a lot of alcohol. The young man said that this was all nonsense, and he went home, that he could no longer be here. He needed to sober up and rest. The new boss asked how he would get home. The young man answered him that he would go by bus and sleep at home in his bed, so it would be best, to which the boss told him to go very far. He offered to give him a ride or, in the second case, rent him a hotel room so that he could sleep and I'm back home tomorrow. Du Jamong didn't want to be dependent on someone, so he said that everything would be fine when he gets home. Let them not worry about him and he already went goodbye, saying that maybe I'll see you sometime next time. To which his interlocutor today replied, You young man says that he's drunk it would be better if he looked at himself, he can barely walk. He felt very bad because he thought that he had eaten a lot of food and that he needed to eat less and he drank alcohol normally. But he was sure that he was going to feel sick because he ate a lot. He decided that he needed to sit and rest for a while. He was very tired. He needed to take a breath because his legs had already stopped obeying him. He loved lying on this bench so much. He was ready to sleep on it, but he understood that he couldn't live on it for a long time because he still needed to buy a bus ticket and get home. He tried to get up, but he couldn't do it. There was only one thing spinning in his head. He promised Mrs. Sona that he would see her tomorrow and he must keep his promise. Therefore, he urgently needed to get home today. The only question that arose in his mind was, do buses run at night? There was a car driving down the street with a sign that it was a bus and that it belonged to the Day Singh Homeless Help Center. This bus stopped near the bench where the young man was lying. They saw him and most likely thought that he was one of the homeless because at that moment, he was sleeping soundly on the bench. The car door opened and people started getting out. The young man didn't notice them at first because he was very drunk and then fell asleep on the bench. These people didn't look like people who really wanted to help in any way. They looked more like bandits who drove around in a cover car. One of these men got out of the car, said to look at the young man and added that he was not only drunk, but also with two broken arms. How could this even happen? Most likely, he fell after another drinking session. All homeless people sleeping on the street have the same thing. One of these guys said that they need to take the young man and help him. At these words, everyone else laughed. These people loaded the young man up without even asking whether he wanted to go with them or not. They didn't even think about waking him up. They just carried him into the car and threw him in. The car door closed, and the car drove off. The car was somehow strange. It drove for a very long time. It didn't go through strange places and drove somewhere into the forest. In the forest, the car drove up to some very large gates. They opened and the car drove into a protected area. When the car had already driven inside, the gates automatically closed. At first the only thing was that there was some kind of protected area here and the young man found himself in some kind of unpleasant situation. Above the gate at the entrance to this territory there was a sign about which there was an inscription, the social birth of Desen. The young man lay with his eyes closed. Well, he clearly heard someone's voice. This voice repeated only one word, Mr. Then there was this terrible scream from all sides. 
the sergeant major was heard. It was the only thing the soldiers called him. It could only mean one thing, that one of them needed help. Sergeant Major Du Zhanglong stood looking around. Everything that was happening around him was already familiar to him. He had seen it all once. He stood in the middle of a field on the street. It was deep night. Something was glowing from different sides. Most likely it was fireflies, where I thought he was. What kind of new place was this? Someone's voice kept repeating. Sergeant before, the young man was sure that he had heard this voice before. One of his colleagues was calling him. The voice was continuously repeated by Sergeant Du. So in the young man's head it sounded like a drum roll. He did not understand where he was and why exactly this familiar voice was shouting to him. Before Zhang Wang looked around, it was night and it wasn't very clear. But who should be nearby for him to hear so clearly what's his name? Somewhere in the distance, he saw two shadows of his soldiers. They stood very far away and called him. These were the same soldiers who died in his last battle, because of which he quit military service. When he examined them, you saw that hanging on their workshop were the same chains with medallions that he removed after their death. Sergeant Du Zhanglong froze for a few minutes and then asked again, Is it really them and the most surprising thing for him is that they were here with him? The young man replayed in his head all the events that happened to him and why these soldiers died. All of this he only blamed himself for not being able to help them survive the last operation. On earth, right in front of him, lay his combat pistol. It appeared precisely at the moment when he began to blame you for what was happening. This pistol was a solution to his problem. He told himself that this is exactly what happened. This gun will be the solution to the problem, and he will never torment himself with these memories again in his life. Sergeant Du Zhanglong presented the pistol to his temple removed the safety and was ready to pull the trigger at the last moment. He asked his dead soldiers is this really what they want, and if so, he will shoot right away. He began to press his finger on the trigger, and at that moment someone began to tug at him what it was. He opened his eyes and understood everything that had just happened to him. It was just a dream he dreamed of dead soldiers for the first time today. The young man was lying on someone else's bed and a guy unknown to him was sitting next to him and was quietly muttering something. The situation was a little tense. Before Zhang Ong, he didn't remember how he got here and what happened to him yesterday. The guy who was sitting next to him said that it was time to wake up, so do Zhang Ong should get up. He said this very convincingly, and therefore most likely it was necessary to do so. Before Zhang Ong, these words outraged him a little. He couldn't understand why he had to fulfill this guy's request. So he asked who he was and where he was and the biggest thing that surprised him was why he was wearing the same clothes as everyone else. The guy said that he asks a lot of questions at once, and he will answer them one by one. He said that his name is Yi sung Jo, and that they are in a social institution Dayson. They are the same for all prisoners, and since he is here, he also has the same clothes. In addition to this, the guy said that there are still a lot of things that need to be explained to him, and most importantly, how to lead here. Du Zhanglong did not fully listen to this guy, stood up and walked along the long corridor. In the direction of the door, the guy asked where he was going, to which Sergeant Du replied that he was going home. They looked at him in surprise. When a young man approached the door, he saw that the door was bolted and there was a huge lock hanging. It was simply impossible to open it. The voice of that guy shouted to him to wait. He was ready to explain everything to him. The most interesting thing was that this door was locked from the inside. That is, someone who was in the room had keys to open this door. When the guy approached to Zhang Long, he said that he wanted to explain this to him, and would continue that putting people here against their will really angered the young man. How can you put a person in a closed room against their will? While the guy was explaining everything that was happening here, before Chan Gong, someone was heard screaming. Someone asked them what they were doing near the door. The young people turned around in response to the scream. In front of them stood a huge bald man in the same uniform as them. He had a bandage on his sleeve and keys were fastened on top of this bandage with a pin. The guy said that this man was the commander of their platoon. And I'll continue that this commander is incredibly hot-tempered. So you shouldn't irritate him. You should only do what he says, otherwise he'll see for himself what will happen. The platoon commander continued to shout. He asked what they were doing there near the doors. Du Zhanglong drew attention to the keys fastened with a pin on his sleeve. The young man, without hesitation, told him to give him the keys to the front doors. He didn't want to stay here anymore. 
This whole situation was incomprehensible to him. The platoon commander looked at him in bewilderment. The next moment the young man saw the platoon commander's leg begin to rise. He stood pretending that nothing was happening. Of course he understood that he wanted to hit him. The platoon commander missed and could not hit the young man because he moved away in time. This made him very angry. He began to shout that the young man was an impudent idiot. Lately, no one had behaved like this with him. The platoon commander shouted. He considered himself the most important among all the prisoners here and thought that everyone should obey him unconditionally. But here some new guy is behaving very defiantly. In addition to the fact that this new guy dodged his blow, he was also ready to strike the platoon commander, which infuriated him even more. Before Zhang Ong was almost ready to strike this screaming platoon commander as he was called here, he remembered the words of the doctor who put a cast on him in the hospital. The doctor then told him that under no circumstances should he dare move his hands. He should not strain them or hit anything with them, as this would only slow down the healing process of cracks in the bones. It's good that Du Zhang Long remembered these words of the doctor. Otherwise he could have struck now and then the crack would have become even larger and his hands would have taken even longer to heal. Several more young people approached the platoon commander. They asked him if everything was okay and if he needed help. Apparently these young people were friends of the platoon commander. One of them suggested completely breaking Du Zhanggong's hand because he was trying to hit their platoon commander and then send him to the hospital. All these three aggressive guys didn't understand what was wrong with their new guy. He had two broken arms, but he acted as if he could stand up for himself. Du Zhanglong thought to himself that even if both his arms were injured, he could easily cope with these three who were ready to tear him apart. But these three were also one of those who were driven here against their will. That's exactly what that guy in Sunjo said, and this only meant one thing, that there were others who brought them here. It will be difficult for a young man to restrain himself in such a state. He wants to escape from here, then he will have to wait until his injuries are completely healed, and then he can easily cope with everyone who will prevent him from doing this. Well, if a fight starts now, they might hit his hands, thought the young man, and that meant only one thing. The injuries would most likely get worse, his hands would hurt a lot. Then he had to fight with these three and try to protect his hands. Of course it would be difficult. He didn't know what to do at that moment, and Sunjo intervened. He shouted for the commander to stop and listen to him. And Sudza said that he is new here. He was brought last night. He still doesn't understand where he is, and that's why he behaves so defiantly. And he continued that no one had yet told him how good their commander was. Of course he couldn't have known this. But if he had known, he wouldn't have behaved so arrogantly. Such words, of course, were pleasant for the platoon commander, he thought. The guy asked the platoon commander to give him a chance, and he would train him well and asked the platoon commander to please forgive him this time. The platoon commander listened to everything the young man had just said. These words seemed fair to him, and he decided that he was ready to give the newcomer a chance. The guy turned to Du Zhanglong to ask for forgiveness from the platoon commander. The young man did not quite understand why he should ask for forgiveness, because he had not yet done anything reprehensible. The guy continued to insist that he apologize and admit that it was his fault, which he had to do as quickly as possible so as not to anger their commander. Everything that fell on the young man today was all very strange. He had no idea what was happening to him. How he got here, he didn't remember. Well, he decided that he needed to get out of this situation. First, with this situation, and then he'll figure it out further. Du Zhanglong lowered his head down and said that the platoon commander would forgive him and admit that he was wrong. These words were very difficult for him, so he closed his eyes. The next moment he felt a blow to the head with a fist. It was their commander who hit him and said that he behaved well further, and he added that now he must prepare for the roll call. And Sunjo came up to him and said that he did an excellent job and everything that he did not have time to tell him and explain he would tell him later after the roll call. The platoon commander ordered everyone to sit down and pay off. Whoever was in this room sat down and then, one by one, they began to pay off, saying one, two, three. When the turn came to the young man, he said the number seven, which meant he was seventh in this platoon. Everything that happened was very strange. Then I heard eight, nine, ten, it was so incomprehensible. After all, they were not in the army, then why are they being counted and here is some kind of platoon, an incomprehensible uniform, everyone has the same. 
Twenty-four people include a newcomer, the platoon commander said out loud, then said that this is very good. He reached out with his hand to the keys that were hanging on his sleeve. This man approached one door, and with the key that was hanging on his sleeve he began to open the padlock. The young man thought that he really was right and the keys were inside this room all the time. He decided to observe the whole situation. The first thing he thought was that the commander opens the door only after counting the people. In order to open the doors for some reason it took a number of people. The commander removed the lock and pushed the bolt. The door slowly began to open. This means that in this territory there is not only this room, but also other rooms. All twenty-four people who were in this room went to the exit. Du Zhangong asked where they were going now, and Sun Zhou told him that they were going to breakfast. Du Zhangong was very happy after yesterday. For some reason he was hungry in the morning. This was the first good news he heard today. It was not a military base, but they all behaved as if it was one and it was not a prison but here there were people imprisoned against their will. It was some kind of very scary place. Well, the worst thing for Du Zhangong was to be disappointed in what they called food a few minutes ago. The news that he was going to have breakfast even lifted his spirits. But now he was completely disappointed. It was something that looked very inedible, but they called it food, so Du Zhangong lost his appetite completely. He definitely didn't want to eat it. He was ready to stick chopsticks in the forehead of the person who cooked it. Not only did he not know how to cook, he also ruined a large number of products. A young man sat down at the table and Sunjo is ready to explain to him this place is accepted and helps the homeless. Du Zhanglong immediately responded to these words. He said that he is not homeless, he has a home. That's right. At first everyone says that when he disappears here, the guy continued, they say that they are not homeless. They are picked up on the street and brought here and then forced to work and he continued that every homeless person receives money from the state to get this money. These people catch and bring people here from the street. The young man asked that they were simply detaining people on the street and bringing them here for their own good. What kind of people are they who are engaged in such an obscene matter? Someone said hello very loudly. Everyone turned their heads in the direction from which the greeting was heard. And Sanjo told the young man that he was asking what kind of people would do such a thing, so you can look at them. There were two young men standing in the doorway. One was shorter, the other was taller. In the dining room everyone stood up and lowered their heads as a sign of respect and greeting to these people. These two people were the children of the director of this corporation. The one who was smaller this was the vice president, and co-founder of Day Singh this was the eldest son of director Park Kwan the second young man this was the general director, and the second son of director Park Yong. They went into the dining room where all these people were eating, these two bosses began to approach people and ask if everything was okay. Everyone thanked them as one. The young man had the impression that some president was conducting an inspection here. These two sons of the director gave the impression of very powerful people. And now Yi Sunjo set his chance to definitely pay attention to this powerful man. Du Zhanglong did not quite understand why these words were said and what he should do. One of the directors, the smaller one, approached Du Zhanglong and asked him where he received such injuries. He was a newbie and this director had not seen him before. The guy who was sitting next to him, that yes, he was a newbie who got here only yesterday and his hands were already in plaster. The director listened to everything and said this is a very incomprehensible situation. Well, can he live in such a place? The guy continued that he takes good care of him so there will be no problems with the newcomer then the director continued that, and Sun Zhou is such a good friendly prisoner guy replied that the director is too kind to him, and he asked the director if he was good enough to become honorary. Most likely it was some kind of certain difference among the prisoners, both honorary and chalk some additional rights. The director asked the guy again. He wants to be chosen according to the even prisoners. He said that he will remember the young man and the next time he chooses an honorary prisoner, he will not forget about him and asked him to tell him his name. The young man stood for several minutes satisfied with himself. Today the director paid attention to him. This meant that he could move to the highest rank. The guy said his name, said that his name was Lee Sunjo that's why he was so willing to help the young man. It turns out he had his own motive for this. The director turned to Du Zhanglong. He asked how their new injured prisoner was doing and whether he liked the food they served for breakfast. The young man didn't try to be nice. He sharply replied that the food in this canteen is simply disgusting. It's unbearable to eat. 
No one has ever said that here. The director did not know how to immediately react to these words. Every day when he came to the dining room and asked the prisoner, he was always answered only with words of gratitude. The guy who was sitting near Du Jianlong froze in fear. He thought that the young man had just asked for forgiveness from their commander, and immediately after he told them who these people were, he insulted them again. There is one thing this guy doesn't know about, and that is that Du Jianlong doesn't joke when it comes to food so he can't lie about it. The young man was completely sure that this is food not for people because the fish was very salty and rotten what it was unclear how the soup was cooked because it was bland and all the vegetables were boiled and turned into porridge. And the director took the delivery that was standing in front of the young man and said let's look at these products that they brought you. The next moment, everything that was being distributed was poured onto the young man's head by the director. All the food was dripping from his head. Today this was the second time this morning when he finds himself in a stupid situation. He started shouting that he was coming. He should be grateful that they even give him this kind of food and he has no right to ever complain about anything. He continued to shout for the young man to pull himself together and stop being rude to him. This was the last warning he was going to give him. The young man sat and pieces of food flowed down his head in any other situation. He would no longer tolerate this and quickly resolve this issue. Now he was restrained only by two broken arms. His hands were already clenched into two fists, and he was ready at any moment to strike his offenders. The director couldn't calm down and continued to shout. He called the guy who was looking after the young man and told him to do it better because do John Long some nonsense. The guy replied that he understood everything and this would not happen again. The guy didn't understand what was wrong with the salted fish and thought that there were still idiots like this young man. The two directors returned and went to the exit. Nothing was stopping them here. He approached the young man and asked if he was exercising and that he needed to clean himself up because there were food residues in his hair and on all the things he was wearing. Before Zhang Long, he had not been so angry for a very long time because he never allowed himself to be mocked like that by people who tried to offend him in this life. They always ended badly. He sat clenching his fists and could not answer this guy. This was before Zhang Ong. This was twenty-nine days before the healing of the hands. They came to a room that they called a shower room. It was a fairly large room with several taps and showers. They could both bathe and wash their things. The room was very old and one wall, due to the fact that repairs had not been done for a long time, was covered in mold. It's good that there was water here. The shower didn't work. That's the only positive thing that happened to the young man lately. He stood under the shower so that all the dirt and pieces of food that were on his hair and body could be completely washed away. He had to stand under the water so as not to wet his hands, which were in a cast. He caught himself thinking that even washing himself was very inconvenient, but he is ready to endure another twenty-nine days so that his hands become the same as before and his bones grow together. After he had been in the shower with all his things— all the prisoners were forced to clean the courtyard, including him. Despite the fact that he could barely move his fingers, he also began to take revenge in the courtyard. Only half of the clothes that the young man washed could dry properly, so in fact he put on wet clothes and, in addition, after that he went to work. Everything that he had to endure now was all because of this director because he poured food right on his head. How irritated he was by the fact that he was here, the way they treated him. For some reason he had to walk around in incomprehensible things, and most importantly, he couldn't get out of here. The clothes will dry on you, said his son Joe, and continued that it was very good for the president to do this before the shower, and he managed to get himself in order. Before or after, is it normal to treat people like this? It's not at all humane, said Du Zhanglong. The guy seemed to agree with him, but he still had doubts. The little plump man said that he agreed with the newcomer. He was one of those who generally supported him. Everyone else pretended that nothing had happened. Before Xiaomong for the first time, he was surprised by the behavior of one of the prisoners. None of those here were completely on his side. They were unselfishly ready to help him. The guy saw this man and said about your superiority, you are here. Du Chan Gong was very surprised because this plump little man was addressed as your superiority in Korea. So only the president can be addressed. The young man thought that most likely he had already been told about this president here because he had not seen other presidents here. Another prisoner came to the threshold and shouted your superiority. You said that you would wash everything with a rag, 
but you are relaxing here and ordered you to immediately approach him. The little fat man to whom everyone addressed your superiority began to be indignant. He thought that it was unfair that every time he had to do it. The young man became interested in why they were addressing this man like that, and why he was talking like that. He behaved as if he were the president. The guy answered him that he was not pretending, but he actually thought that he was the president. Then he's probably a little crazy, the young man asked and the guy replied that yes, this guy has gone crazy. After returning from the Vietnam War, he saw all sorts of things there and had nightmares. Was this little fat man really a soldier? Now looking at him it was impossible to see anything that connected him with the army. The guy continued to say that then this man was sent to a correctional camp in Samchon. After this camp he was very afraid of that bald president. Every time this president was shown on the news he trembled with fear. As he grew older, this man became bald, his hair began to fall out a lot, and then he stopped looking in the mirror because it reminded him of that president. Du Zhang thought that this was a very terrible story, and it could happen to any soldier who went through such ordeals. The young man asked the guy how he knew all this and then he answered that this guy's friend was also here. So he told him everything but he had already died from some kind of disease. The young man asked again. He died here in prison. These events seemed very strange to him. This meant that there was insufficient medical care for prisoners here. The guy added that many people die here. Some are injured during work, others because of illness or because they were beaten by the center employees or the commander. He reminded the young man that the commander said that they would send him to a hospital ward if he went there. They would not treat him there and not they just leave people to die. Just everything that the young man heard was simply terrible, and it was in no way invested in his concepts. How is it possible to make money from people without feeding them and then leaving them to die? The loud voice of the commander was heard. He called on all the prisoners who were doing the cleaning to pay attention. Most likely he wanted to say something now. The platoon commander stood near the open door of the building and shouted to the entire yard that today was the day of interrogation and that everyone finish cleaning and immediately gather on the sports ground. The guy said if today is the day of interrogation, then this is where you can meet the most terrible people who are here. This was one of the next mysteries that Du Zhanglong has repeatedly encountered today. All the prisoners were gathered at the stadium. They stood in groups since they lived in front of them there was a small podium behind it. There was a man. Most likely he was the director. These were all the organizations. After the podium there were two young men. These were his sons. They were all guarded by guards. Behind the podium stood the director of the social institution Day Sing Park in Ji. He was ready to proclaim his speech to the prisoners. All the prisoners, when they saw the director, lowered their heads and shouted hello. In this way they showed their respect for the management of this company. Before Shang Long finally saw the most important person who invented this company and became its director, he now knew his enemy by sight. The director began his speech. He began to tell that there are various trees in the world and each tree has its own purpose. That some trees are used as supports for mansions, he continued. His speech began from somewhere far away. Most likely he wanted to say something with these words. I will continue that some trees are used as firewood to light a fire in the stove. Everything that he said he allegedly tried to convey to those prisoners who stood in front of him. He began to scream and his face became aggressive because he began to talk not about trees, but about people who use their purpose depending on their character and potential and love for God. Even St. Peter and Pavlov Paul used according to their characters. Well, you are just a non-entity. He addressed all the insignificant creatures standing in front of him who are no good for this center. All who are here are ugly trees. His speech reached a climax, and he began to compare you with Jesus, that he also became a carpenter, and that he prunes such useless trees as all those here so that after that they can be useful. When the director finished his speech, his guards loudly clapped their hands on one side. This was a sign for the prisoners to start clapping too, and on the other hand, the guards counted in the same way as the director. All the prisoners who were standing there from the stadium also began to clap their hands loudly, they applauded their director, although many of them did not understand what we were talking about. Before Shamon was forced to stand in this crowd, he understood that the director was saying all this nonsense. Without any shame, what he said there was not a single word of truth, it was all crazy nonsense. I pretend that he is listening to the director's speech. He found out the location and structure of this institution. 
he only had to stand and look around in order to assess the situation. The Dessen Social Institution is a place that was built cutting off the middle of the mountain. It was supposed to be a completely deserted place, and no one was supposed to see this institution. Most of the institution is surrounded by a high wall. It was built specifically to prevent anyone from leaving this institution in any way. The only place where there was no wall was the rock, where they cut off the mountain. It was also impossible to get through this part in any other way. It was possible to enter and exit the territory of this institution only through the main gate, which was also quite high and opened and closed automatically. The young man thought, if he tries to escape through these gates, then most likely he will be immediately attacked by guards, and there were a sufficient number of them in this social institution. He thought that with hands like his it would be very difficult to escape, so he would have to put up with it for exactly twenty-nine days until his hands healed. The director of this social institution began to descend from the podium. He was met below by his two sons. They thanked their father for his kind words and said that they would go and take care of the rest. The director thanked his children and said that he lives and will live. I trust only the two of them and that he loves his sons very much. They reciprocated and all three of them hugged and they stood there for several minutes. But this was not the end of this meeting, so the eldest son climbed to the podium. He said that he would now announce the most diligent prisoner for many who lived here. This was a very important moment because everyone lived with the hope that his name would be heard now. The prisoners who stood below perked up a little. They began to look at each other, and then at the director's son, waiting for the fact that maybe his name would be called. The president found out his name, which means he has a chance, said in Sunjo. The young man did not understand what diligent prisoners mean and why do all people want to get this particular title. The guy explained that, as the name suggests, the most trained prisoner receives this title per month. Three or four prisoners are selected after they are released from the institution. Of course, it was very strange. They could just let him out just because he was a diligent prisoner. And so after a short pause, the director's son said that this time the diligent prisoner was coming from the fourth group. The guy was very upset because he was from a completely different group. He was from the third group which meant that this time they would tell me his name. A few more seconds and it became known who received this title. It was Kak doing. The fate of everyone else was already decided. They will continue to remain in this institution. Kwok doing jumped for joy. He definitely didn't expect this. Everyone else stood and looked at him with envy because he was the one who would leave this establishment today. The, the director's son asked to give a speech to today's winner. He walked up to the microphone. First he said thank you and then began to stutter a little. It was most likely out of surprise. But then he pulled himself together and said that he was free and now he could go home. It was the happiest minute of his life in recent times. The guy couldn't calm down because he still hoped that his name would be heard and he could leave here. He even shouted that he was seriously jealous. Everything that was happening now at the stadium was completely incomprehensible. Before Chan Gong, he understood that something was wrong here and it was too easy. They were returning people back home. Today's lucky winner was invited to the office of the employees. They had to let him go home. He sat and waited for permission when he could leave here. The lucky one plucked up a little courage and asked the son of the director of this institution when he could go home. He was very impatient to leave this institution. The director's eldest son answered him that the doctor would come and check his health for the last time. This is very important since everyone who leaves here must be completely healthy outside the walls of this institution. Kwok doing thought that this should be the case according to the rules, so he obediently agreed with the words that the director's son had just uttered. The second son of the director appeared at the door, accompanied by a doctor. In the hands of the doctor there was a tray on which lay his medical instruments and medicine. The doctor, smiling, said that he was ready to check the health condition of the diligent prisoner. He began his examination with the condition of the cornea of the eye and continued to do a full examination of his body. And look at him, the doctor concluded that he is in good condition. Well, the only thing is that he needs to get one injection. The man didn't understand why and asked the doctor again. The director's eldest son intervened in the conversation. He said that these were vitamins and nutrients, and that they were obliged to release him completely healthy. Therefore, he should only endure one injection, and he added that immediately after the injection they would let him go home. The man heard these words that they would immediately let him go, and immediately agreed. 
The doctor began to give him an injection. The man realized that something was going wrong. He began to lose consciousness. His eyes began to close and his whole body became cottony. Gathering his last strength, he asked why they did all this. Of course, he no longer received any answer because he could no longer hear. He was passed out. The doctor felt his pulse and said that everything was ready. He passed out and that they could already take him out of the office. Two prisoners came into the office. They took the body of Kwok Doing, who was passed out, by the arms and legs and began to carry him out. The director ordered them to take off his clothes. It can be useful for beginners since sewing new ones is a waste of money. He heard these words and said that their vice president is simply an amazing person. He doesn't understand how one can think about money in such a situation. Most likely money is very important to him. The vice president looked at the doctor with a disapproving look, and in response, of course, the doctor didn't care about the money. He squandered the hospital that his father-in-law opened and lost all his remaining savings. And he continued that for a doctor who works for them. It may seem that money is of great importance. In fact, it is so. The vice president warned the doctor not to try even in front of this line with him if he wants to keep the money he earns thanks to this organization. Night came. Each of the rooms were already asleep. The prisoners were already asleep. This was the time when it was possible to do the most terrible things. And that's what happened that night. Kwok Doing was lying on the operating table in only his underwear. He was very thin. His body looked exhausted. This operating room was entered by a doctor who was already wearing a mask. He was putting rubber gloves on his hands because he was preparing for the operation, turning his head to the people standing behind him. He asked what they ordered today and heard a clear answer from them, liver and kidney. The doctor thought about how to perform this operation. He had to remove the liver and then the kidney at one time. The vice president of this social institution came into the operating room. When he saw him, the doctor thought that he was so tired of this little idiot. Besides, he was very rude. All he did was for money. One of the prisoners who helped the doctor asked him if he shouldn't be given anesthesia. He thought he would wake up soon. The doctor replied that he was not a doctor, and I thought to myself that even the prisoner treated him with disdain, give him a reprimand. Kwok doing opened his eyes. He immediately couldn't understand where he was, what was happening to him. Everything was still spinning in his head and he didn't feel very good after the injection. He raised his torso and sat down on the table where he had just been lying. There were a lot of questions in his head. Why is he in this form? What is this? And where is he in general? Why are there people in masks near him? The doctor began to make excuses and said that they were just examining him so that he would not be afraid. Nothing bad would happen so that he would calm down. Kwok Doing did not believe a single word they said. He shouted for them to get away from him, jumped off the operating table and headed towards the exit from this room. When he jumped off the table, he was able to push the doctor away. So he fell to the floor. Kwok Doing ran to the exit. He wanted to leave this establishment as quickly as possible. The doctor shouted to catch him quickly Kwok Doing along the corridor he had only questions. Why was he here? After all, they had said before that they would let him go home. At the end of the corridor stood the second son of the director of a social institution. He was a very huge young man. He almost never spoke. Kwok Doing ran up to him. He still had hope that he would now tell what happened to him, and the director's son would let him go home as promised. The next moment, Kwok Doing received a strong blow to the face with a fist. Blood sprayed in all directions. He staggered and fell to the floor. Kwok was lying on the floor with blood. But he tried to shout to the director's son. He screamed. They promised to let him go home. Why is he still here? The director grabbed him by the leg and dragged him back to the operating room. This huge man held the practically naked, very thin Kwok doing by the leg and dragged him along this long corridor. Traces of blood remained on the floor. He dragged him into the operating room door, which closed behind them. This could only mean one thing. In a few minutes, Kwok Doing would undergo surgery and his liver and kidney would be removed. At the same time, in the city at the Chasinman restaurant everything was as always. The doors were open. Visitors were ordering their favorite dishes. Sitting at a table in a restaurant were two well-dressed men. One of them was the new boss of Du Chang Gong, a task he had just recently completed. These two men were talking to each other. One of them said that Park Gwang Ho and his people were hospitalized. So his organization was completely weakened. 
As a result of this, Congressman Choi's office immediately decided to give them the right to operate gaming machines, which was very good news for them. The man in the brown suit admitted that he had a terrible hangover, of course. Yesterday he and Du Jianglong drank a very large amount of alcohol, which is why he felt so bad in the morning. The man in the gray suit said that Congressman Choi's office knows about everything. All these events happened in one day, and he said that he would immediately give the business to them. To which the second man replied that Congressman Choi is a wise old man. He became a member of parliament only because he knows how to make decisions quickly. The man in the gray suit said that in any case, if there is no problem, then they are ready to cut the ribbon to celebrate the opening of the slot machines. A man in a brown suit brought fried dumplings to his mouth with two iron chopsticks. He remembered something about yesterday, how it all happened, how he met Sergeant Du at the station, and when they arrived at this restaurant, Du Zhanglong asked what is the best dish here. For some reason he did not understand this question from Sergeant Du and began to say something indistinctly. Most likely this was because he was interested in something completely different. But the driver answered that this restaurant has excellent fried dumplings and explained why they are so delicious. Sergeant Du then opened the door in the car from the side where he was sitting and came out with the words okay then fried dumplings and that he would be back soon. These fried dumplings are really delicious. The man in the brown suit thought as he took a bite. It's not for nothing that the driver then said that this is the most delicious dish in this restaurant. The next thought that came to his mind was as a sergeant major. Before he returned home, he had both arms injured. Was he able to get home safely at night? Although the doctor said that you couldn't move your arms, Du Zhanglong had to do the same work as all the other prisoners. He sat and assembled bottle sprayers. All the prisoners sat in one large room at a long table and did their work practically. This is how their every day went. The guy who looked after Du Zhanglong all day sat next to him, yes, at the desk. He said that enough time had already passed well. He still doesn't know the name of the newcomer, and asked what his name is. The young man answered Du Zhanglong. Then he asked who he worked before he got to the social institution Du Zhanglong for a few minutes because he didn't know what to answer to tell him. He served in the army in the special forces and carried out the most difficult missions. It wasn't necessary to know that there was no one here so he answered that he took on any job where physical strength was needed. Then the guy asked Du Zhanglong that he had injured his hands at work. He was very curious and always asked a lot of questions. Sergeant Du remembered how it all happened in a restaurant where the thug took a stool and struck a blow in order to soften the blow. He covered himself with both hands. So the blow came all on his hands. The young man decided not to tell the whole story. I answered that yes, he was injured at work. While they were chatting, the platoon commander came up from behind. He was not entirely happy with how they were doing their job and therefore we would make a remark so that they worked more and that they should not just chat. The guy got very scared and began to apologize. The platoon commander turned to the newcomer with a question about what he said to the vice president. The young man reacted and shouted at him and wanted to explain the events that happened in the dining room. The platoon commander told him not to worry too much and to forget, just not to create problems in their group. This is the only condition that the platoon commander asked to fulfill. Du Zhanglong was silent, which made the platoon commander very angry. He hit one person on the head with his own hand for a crack and told him to answer when asked by an idiot. The young man sat with his head bowed and replied that he understood. He could barely restrain himself so as not to respond to the insult directed at him. The platoon commander walked between workstations and continued to observe everything that was happening after he made a remark. Before Zhanglong, he switched to other workers, he also shouted at them. Are they going to work? When the platoon commander left them, the guy began to say that they, too, were afraid that they themselves would end up in a problem situation, so they went around and monitored the work of each of the prisoners. Before Zhanglong, he didn't say anything, he listened carefully to every word this guy was telling, he watched everything that was happening here in a social institution. Before Zhang Long asked the guy he was very interested why are the barracks being taken from the inside if they are trying to close it isn't it better to take the barracks from the outside. The guy replied that a long time ago someone came to check that closing the barracks from the outside is wrong. It looks like a prison. Therefore, since then, the commanders have kept the key and locked the barracks from the inside. But the commander is also stuck here and why is he closing the door? The young man asked himself. 
Well, the guy answered him that they gave yellow armbands to people who had no power outside and they were obsessed with the fact that they now have so much power. Everything became clear to the young man. Well, the guy continued to say that he was very jealous of the lucky guy who became a diligent prisoner today and that he was most likely already home. At the same time, in the doctor's office, a mini refrigerated container is in the hands of the two sons of the president of the social institution. At first only one thing is that he did his job. The doctor turned to the vice president and said what happened earlier. He really wasn't very attentive. That's why it happened. But despite this, he completed everything that was needed without incident and asked to inform the director. After listening to the end of everything what the doctor said, the director's son said only one word, Mr. Why did he say that? The doctor didn't quite understand at first. Therefore, the doctor did not know what to answer. He could not even imagine what might happen next moment. He was a little naive. The vice president has the same stony face that he always had. I think for a long time I kicked the living doctor. He was spinning in pain. It is necessary to speak. Mr. Vice President said the son was the director of evolution. There was no emotion. I never forgot to understand what he was thinking about. The doctor was squatting, crouched in pain. Mr. Vice President told him that if he had made a mistake, then let him accept it and think about it and threw an envelope in his face. And I will continue so that he doesn't try to fix everything. This is the way people move forward. The doctor thought to himself that there is nothing good in the way they do business and how they treat people like meat. The doctor put the envelope in his hands and began to count the bills. He thought to himself, Well, let them treat them like meat. At least they pay well and decided that with such a sum of money he will definitely win today. It was night outside on the pier. There were several boats. Not a single person was visible anywhere. Everyone had been asleep for a long time. It was just that time when it was possible to do dirty deeds. Mr. Vice President was carrying a container to a minibus on which was written duck professional butchering. Most likely someone was waiting for him there. The Vice President handed the container into the hands of a man sitting in a minibus. This man was wearing a mask on his face and had a hat on his head so that his face could not be seen quite clearly. He did not want his face to be seen. This man also gave the Vice President an envelope with money. Only this envelope was dozens of times thicker than the one he gave to the doctor. The director's son took the money and went back to the office of the social institution. He walked along a long corridor. He performed all these actions purely automatically. When he approached the office on which the director's office was written, he knocked on the door and said that he was his son. He had to follow all the rules. Entering the office, he handed the envelope with money to his father. The director was very happy and praised his son for his excellent work. I told him to have a good rest. He was probably tired of walking back and forth on the seat all day long. The son replied that yes, he wants to rest. The director of the social institution turned to the side where the safe stood. He began to dial numbers. This was the code for the safe to open it. Inside the safe on the top shelf were dozens of the same packages as in his hands, which means Kwok doing was not the first and they sold organs and other prisoners. Having placed this money with everyone else, he closed the door of his safe and checked that it was definitely closed. That night at the Dessen Social Institution everything was as usual. There were no incidents. All the prisoners were asleep in their rooms. In the prisoners' rooms there were bunk beds. Next to each bed there was a small closet where they could store their things. Although they had practically no things because they all had the same uniform. Before Chan Gong fell asleep today like never before, he had already begun to get used to this place. He understood perfectly well that he needed to hold out exactly until he had his hands. I heard a cry of getting up, then I shouted again get up. Du Zhanglong opened his eyes and looked up every morning he saw the same mattress of the bed on the second floor. Four days have already passed since he got here, so he already managed to learn the schedule of each day. In principle, one day was no different from the next. He was already used to this place. In principle it was not difficult for him to get used to it because he was in the army for a long time and there was also a certain order of the day there. His experience of intense training while serving in the army helped him adapt here. Just like in the army, the most important thing is to follow all the rules. Of course, this stupid situation irritated Du Zhanglong very much, but he had no choice other than to hold out here until his hands healed. Therefore, he decided for himself to think that he was here on a very secret operation. 
Well, when he thought so, he began to get even more angry. Before, he was never afraid of anything, he wasn't worried about anything at all. Even when he was on the most dangerous mission, he wasn't worried. And now he began to worry about one thing, this thought did not leave him. Every moment he was at home, he thought only about her. His concern was that he would not be able to see Sona at lunch either today or tomorrow. It would take some time before he could get out of here. He was worried that she might forget him. The weather was beautiful outside. The sky was blue and white fluffy clouds were floating across it. Today it was warm as always. Sona sat at her workplace and could not do anything. Her gaze was precisely through this window. She watched the clouds move across the sky. Now it was just time for a lunch break. She hoped that the door would open and her regular client would come in. He promised her to return. The door actually opened, but a completely different young man walked in. Sona was a little upset that she couldn't see Du Zangan. Her employee approached the girl and invited Sona to go have lunch, and while Sona was away she would look after her cash register, the girl agreed. Sona had only one thing on her mind, she hadn't seen Mr. Du Zhangong for several days, he hadn't come during his lunch break for several days. She was sure that he should come again, but for several days he has not come to the bank at all. She recalled their last meeting when he said that he would definitely return and deposit a huge amount of money into the account, and said goodbye. She really hoped that nothing had happened to him. He was just being delayed somewhere, or he had such circumstances that he could not temporarily keep his word. Du Zhangong sat at a long table with the rest of the prisoners, fulfilling his daily quota. He could not understand how it happened that he was being held by force. Sun's thoughts were more only about him and her thoughts. She even worried that he would not get hurt and nothing bad would happen to him. Before Zhang Ong, I thought that he injured both hands. He needs to somehow get out of this situation. He won't be able to get out of here until his hands heal and that's why he's forced to be here. Sona didn't know how to explain his action. She even suggested that he might have had an accident and that's why he didn't make himself known. The voice of the platoon commander interrupted Du Zhangong's thoughts. He shouted at him that he was disabled and was working too slowly and threatened that he could send him to a separate building, that is, a punishment cell. The young man had nothing left to do how to ask for forgiveness. A small plump man who believed that he was the president said that he was ready to work. So let the platoon commander not shout at the young man. This is not how a traumatized person should behave. The platoon commander said that if he was going to work here for more, then he should stop talking such nonsense that he was completely crazy. To which the man replied that he was not crazy, he was the president of the country. The platoon commander continued to shout at the man that he was crazy and since he did not want to understand him, he punched him in the face so that he fell out of his chair. After which the platoon commander turned around and left and the man remained sitting on the floor. Du Zhanglong could not do anything to protect this man. He restrained himself for several minutes, but we still overwhelmed him with emotions. This has most likely already arrived. When he couldn't stand being humiliated by people anymore, the young man jumped up from his workplace. He had not yet decided exactly what he would do now, but he knew that he could no longer leave it like this. He clearly understood that he would now have problems. Du Zhanglong called out to the commander, and then shouted to the entire room that the commander was an idiot. The commander stood with his back turned when obscene words were heard in his direction. It seemed that he wanted to listen to who was shouting to him. This had never happened in his group before. Everyone who was in this workroom stopped working and began to watch what was happening. Du Zhanglong did not hide and stood in the middle of the passage. He was waiting for a reaction from the commander. There was absolute silence in the room because everyone knew how this could end for the newcomer. Everyone sat watching what was happening and were afraid to move. The commander turned his head to see who this daredevil was who shouted that. He saw a newcomer standing in the aisle. Du Zhanglong could no longer stop. He was very angry with the commander. So he was ready to teach him a lesson so that he would no longer speak rudely to people. Two more assistants who were close to the commander did not understand what was happening in the workroom in this group. Everyone was very afraid of the commander and his assistant and could never contradict them. Du Zhanglong looked around to correctly assess the situation. After all, two of his arms were broken and he should not have injured them anymore. He thought until these two intervened, he would try to kill this commander. The commander shouted that he was an idiot and ran with his fists to attack the young man. 
The commander fled. I think that we need to punish this upstart as quickly as possible so that everyone else doesn't feel bad about it, and so that they know how to behave with the commander. Du Zhang waited until the commander came closer to him in order to kick him. Today he could not throw punches, so he had to cope without them. So the young man concentrated and kicked so that his platoon commander could no longer resist. Du Zhang understood that this was not the end. The commander did not know how to react after delivering the blow. He could no longer control his body. This blow was almost fatal for him. The next moment the platoon commander was already lying immobilized on the floor. His two assistants were quickly heading towards their commander. They did not understand what had happened to him. The guy who previously helped the young man all the time. You are very scared. Nothing like this has happened in their lives lately. They were under constant pressure from the commander and his assistants. Sergeant Du thought that it would be difficult for him to cope with three at the same time when he was injured and took his hands away. Well, he already realized that the platoon commander and his assistants were not as strong as they wanted to imagine you to be. The other two assistants were a little different from their commander, they were a little different, so a plan arose in his head on how to deal with them. The young man needed to lure them so that they would follow him, and then he could defeat them both. It was not difficult for him. One of the commander's assistants rushed at him, shouting that he was an arrogant brat. If he thought that he would go unpunished, then this is not true. Now they will avenge their commander. Sergeant Du moved to such a distance that he could dodge his blow. This assistant tried several times to strike the young man well. All this was useless. He waved his fists over and over again. Well, every time he did not achieve his goal, all his blows missed the young man. A plan arose in Du Zhanggong's head on how he could quickly deal with two stupid assistants. They were so stupid that they did not understand that doing everything as the young man had planned. As soon as one of the assistants turned his back to the young man, he was tripped and the next moment he was already falling to the ground. When he fell to the ground, he was lower than the young man's hands were. That is, he was at the level of his legs, so Du Zhanglong came up with this plan to finish him off. Sergeant Du delivered several more very strong blows in a row. So this assistant could no longer move and could no longer harm anyone. He, just like his commander, was lying on the floor. The second assistant commander remained who was still ready to get into a fight with the young man. But he was not as strong and not as brave as the second assistant. So he stood and waited for what would happen next. Du Zhanglong did not wait long and struck his opponent in the lower jaw. Blood splashes scattered in different directions. The second assistant instantly fell near his comrade and commander. In the room, all the other prisoners arrived. They were not working but watching what was happening. Du Zhanglong stood in the middle of the passage and in front of him lay the immobilized platoon commander and his two assistants. All the prisoners in his group were very surprised. None of them could afford this. During the entire time they were there, they were afraid to contradict the commander. In the eyes of these prisoners there was complete support for Du Zhanglong. Each of them was ready to follow him. They were all tired of these bullying. The young man thought that he had lost his composure. He had to somehow sort this out. The situation could become more complicated when one of the guards came here and saw two assistants lying on the commander's floor. The guy who helped the young man all the time began shouting in support of his name Du Zhanglong. All the other vital prisoners repeated after him Du Zhanglong. The young man looked in their direction, on the one hand he was very pleased, but on the other hand, this could lead to the fact that the guard heard these screams and could come here even faster. The entire group of prisoners stood and chanted for the young man Du Zhanglong. At the moment he was their only idol that they could now believe. They screamed with all their might. Before Chan Gong, it seemed to them that this was how they showed their respect for him. And the scream became stronger and stronger, and this alarmed the young man a little. Therefore, he asked them to stop and stop shouting any more, but they were already very excited and continued to chant his name. Du Zhanglong thought that this is not very good. If now this scream is heard on the street, then this is where the employees will come in, and then something will need to be decided. And so it happened. The door opened and one of the guards came in response to the noise. He asked what happened in this group and why it was so loud in their room. The prisoners who had just been screaming very loudly began to stop screaming. The guards saw that on the floor in the room where the prisoners were supposed to work there was a motionless body lying on one of them. There was a bandage on it, which meant that it was the commander. The guard could not understand what was happening in this room. 
he began to loudly ask and shout at the prisoners, but none of them gave him an answer. The commander of this platoon was lying on the floor. He was an immovable guard this was determined by the yellow bandage that was worn on the arm of the person lying down and the keys fastened to this bandage. The guard had no choice but to take his telescopic stick and start threatening everyone in this room with it. He told them all to shut up. Since they were shouting the name Du Zhanglong, the guard decided to approach him and asked what all this was. He started this work of his own and began to threaten him with a telescopic stick, which was a weapon for him. The young man began to make strange sounds. He was not quite ready to answer all these questions, so he began to delay time. He thought that, in principle, there was only one guard in front of him, and he could easily neutralize him. He knocked this telescopic stick out of his hands. The security guard did not stop shouting at the young man to answer all the questions he asked him in case he asked him. Before Zhang Ong, I really wanted to strike one blow so that he would be silent for the rest of the time so that he would lie next to those three who were already lying on the floor. This guard had such a nasty voice that the young man wanted him to shut up for a very long time after which he was ready to give him a couple more, maybe three blows so that this noisy guard would never work as a security guard again in his life. The young man thought, if he does this, it could lead to problems, and he was not quite ready to solve all the problems right now. He thought if he could cope with this guy's security guard, then he could run out of this room towards the exit of this institution. The only exit from the territory of the social institution was the high iron gate. Only through them could one escape to freedom. If he approaches the gate, the staff will try their best to stop him, and he has already considered that the number of security staff here is quite large, and if they also find out that I beat up their colleague, they will be even more angry. And in such a situation, it will become almost impossible to defend yourself with his two hands. Of course, he will be able to kill a few more people from the guard, but there are a very large number of them, and he will not be able to fight with all of them at the same time. And if these guards start using their telescopic sticks, they will begin to hit his hands and therefore the plaster. And it may break and then they may hit his hands. This will lead to bad consequences. Therefore, the young man decided that he seriously needed to weigh the pros and cons if he was stupid. Who would win the battle? Well, he might lose the war. Therefore, he made a not entirely clear decision for himself. He decided that it would be better if he did not get into a fight with this guard. Unexpectedly for everyone, he approached the guard closer to his head and said that he was wrong and asked for forgiveness. He decided that he would bow and return back. He did not need to complicate the situation. While he stood with his head down, he saw that a leg appeared and it was most likely one of the sons of the director, the vice president of a social institution. When he raised his head, he saw that there were two sons of the director of this institution in the room. She said that they did not walk one without the other, that he was smaller. He was very loud and harmful, and now come in, he had already started screaming. Before Zhang Meng, it seemed like I had read the whole situation, and it couldn't have been any worse. But with the arrival of two vice presidents it just happened. They passed by the place where three bodies were lying. The vice president said that it was unrealistic that one guy with injured hands could cope with three at once. And he continued speaking, turning to the young man. He thought that he was a fool who couldn't stand up for himself and just complained about food, definitely more than that. The second vice president, the one who was a thug, stood with a stone face and, as always, did not understand what was happening, most likely. He was a very limited person with a broken brain. The vice president asked what the young man's name was. He replied that his name was Du Zhanglong. He had no intention of hiding his name and was not particularly afraid of this vice president. The son of the director of this institution understood what the young man could only think when he did this. It seemed to him that none of the prisoners had the right to contradict not only him, but also the entire guard and commander. He insisted that none of the prisoners have the right to their opinion, and if one of them thinks about it, then this is also a crime. The president shouted what the young man was thinking and this is a huge problem in his opinion. No one except him had the right to think. Before Zhang Ong, I had never heard this before. How many times had he found himself in different situations? He was limited in everything. But this was the first time he was forbidden to think. According to their rules, members of the group, that is, prisoners, must unquestioningly listen to their commander if the vice president comes up with these rules twops absolutely, and the young man must follow them and not think. 
The young man thought that this vice president was somehow inadequate and most likely he was a little crazy. Not only did he keep people in a closed institution, feed them poorly, force them to work, and in addition, he also forced them not to think. The vice president could not calm down. He continued to insult the young man. Don't tell him that he sees in his eyes that he continues to think. Therefore, he decided that Du Zangin should be sent to isolation ward for three days. It seemed to him that this was a very serious punishment. The young man would not be able to cope with it. A guy named Yi Sunjo was very scared for the young man. He even shouted how three days in the isolation ward was most likely for all prisoners. It was a very terrible punishment. The young man thought that the isolation ward was something similar to a cell. Being in a prison cell for three days is bad. At least he won't be able to see from all these idiots. The vice president was sure that when the young man returned with the isolation cell after three days, he would no longer have a single thought left in his head. And so it happened. He was sent to an isolation ward and this place was not what he expected. The vice president was completely sure that in these three days the young man would be able to break down and he would become more obedient. The son of the director of this institution said that he was given three days to think about his behavior in the detention center, which he said with a kind of grin and he received great pleasure from it. Before Zhang Ong listened to everything that was told to him, he decided that things couldn't get worse and he was ready to be in complete isolation away from absolutely everyone. He needed to think and decide what he would do next. If one vice president made some decisions, the second was only to intimidate and carry out all the decisions of his brother. The thug listened to the end of everything his brother said. He had to carry out his decision exactly because he himself did not know how to think and did not want to. He approached the young man. The young man addressed him. He didn't know what this thug was capable of. He decided to see what would happen next. The next moment, the thug, the vice president, with all his might, struck the young man straight in the face, splashed in all directions. With this blow he broke his nose. This thug wanted him to answer him quickly. Before Zhang Ong after he received the blow, he replied that it was him. But in the master's opinion it was too late. He was ready to find fault with him just like that. The young man lowered his head and the big vice president shouted and demanded that he answer very quickly after he was addressed. Du Zhang Ong thought that it was a pity that he couldn't break him off right away that he would have to endure all these humiliations for a while. The huge vice president did not calm down and dealt several more blows to the young man, all the time repeating that he needed to answer quickly and that he must understand this. The little vice president, of course, had already sent him to the isolation ward. He chose the testimony for him, but this seemed not enough to him, so he asked his thug brother to teach him a lesson. He definitely needed the thug to teach a lesson in front of the rest of the prisoners in this social institution. Otherwise the rest would understand that it was possible to act as Du Zhang Ong did. He took the young man to the isolation ward where he had to stay for three days. All the other prisoners stood and looked at what was happening. Each of them was afraid only for their lives. The fat man who called himself the president quietly told the guy that this newcomer was looking for problems for himself to which the guy replied that it was unclear what to do with him. The guard led the young man into the room where they worked. All the prisoners followed him with their gaze. Many of them already knew what a detention center was and therefore I sympathize with him. Although Du Gong's face was broken and wood was flowing down it, he left with a smile. It seemed to him that this was not the worst option that could happen. The guy Isanjo looked at the trace of the young man and thought that's what he's doing. He's smiling. Most likely all his brains were knocked out of him. Of course he'll have a hard time in the isolation ward. Before Changgong, he was escorted by a guard through the courtyard of this social institution. Most likely the detention center was located in some separate building. He didn't know this yet. In his thoughts, the young man constantly replayed how this thug the vice president hit him in the face and broke his nose. This happens very rarely. He couldn't even defend himself at that moment. Anger was raging in him. He decided that this guy likes to wave his fists. Well, then the moment will come when he will explain to him that this is not a very good habit. And he was too until recently. He didn't mind waving his fists. If only now his hands healed and this became possible, he will definitely punish this thug. The guard turned towards the young man and told him to move quickly, the brat, after which he hit him on the head with his stick in one day.
Du Zhanglong received so many blows and was never able to respond to them. Never. The young man said that he was coming and thought to himself that this guard who was waving his stick would soon not seem like enough. The platoon commander began to make some drowning sounds. The palm of the vice president's thug hit him on the cheeks so that he would come to his senses. After one blow there was another and another. So the commander opened his eyes. I didn't understand what happened to him. He yelled what the hell. No one was working. Everyone stood and looked at what was happening and he could not understand what was happening and why he was on the floor. In front of him stood the thug president. The platoon commander whispered in a very quiet, shaking voice, the deputy director. He knew that for everything that happens in this group, he will first of all be responsible. The thug deputy director was, as always, stone-faced. He looked at the platoon commander and told him to get up. He had a conversation with him. Turning his head towards all the other prisoners, the deputy director ordered them to get to work, that their break had ended. They had exactly one minute for this. The platoon commander went out into the street, where the two sons of the director of the social institution where they were were waiting for him and they were having a very serious conversation. The vice president started from afar. He turned to the commander. Someone responded quickly so as not to irritate his own people, the lord. He understood that he would still have some kind of punishment. The vice president wiped his glasses and told the commander that he was looking at him and it seemed to him that he was not coping with his position and responsibilities. The commander did not know how to answer correctly, but with a trembling voice he began to deny everything. He said no, no way. The vice president continued. He said that you are mumbling and not weaving. How could you get punches from an armless disabled person and then fall to the ground, passed out? And I'll continue how such a weakling can be a commander. He took his yellow bandage and began to take it off. The commander didn't want to be left without his position, and he was ready to agree to everything the vice president said. Well, at first he tried to justify himself in the eyes of the vice president and deputy director. This was very important for him because he had just lost trust in the eyes. He began to explain that it's not a matter of his weakness, but that the newcomer is too strong and most likely the vice president and deputy simply don't know how fast he moves his legs even though he can not use his hands. The platoon commander thought, if he says exactly that, he will definitely be deprived of his position, and he will become an ordinary prisoner like everyone else. The vice president looked at the commander and said it only happened because the newcomer, like a coward, attacked from behind and asked the commander again it was true. And then he continued, he would definitely win against this newcomer if he stood one-on-one -on -one with him in battle. The commander had no choice but to agree. The vice president did a favor for the platoon commander and said that you tried to defeat him in a duel. This was the condition of the vice president. The platoon commander turned red. His face became frightened. He asked the vice president in a pleading voice, Is it necessary to do this because he understood that he had no chance? Authority must be earned, said the vice president, and continued that how is he going to command the prisoners when he just fell so pathetically and helplessly in front of them? The commander had nothing to object to. He understood that he had no chance in the duel, but on the other hand, he did not want to be deprived of the position he now held, then he would be the same as everyone else. And he forgot to say something, the vice president remembered and continued as punishment. He put the young man in isolation for three days. The commander asked the gentleman again he will be in isolation for three days. You will fight with the newcomer after he spends three days in the isolation ward, said the vice president. Now it was clear why he did it. The commander thought that if a newcomer spends three days in isolation, then he will be in a half-dead state, and then he has a chance to win this duel. The commander was very pleased with what the vice president did. It was practically not a punishment for him. It was the only way he could remain in this position. So that's what his motive was. The commander thought to himself, he wants me to confirm my status by beating someone already half-dead. After everything that the vice president told the commander, he asked him, now he can beat the newcomers in front of everyone else so that they don't want to repeat after him. The commander answered, of course. The guard brought the young man into the building where the isolation ward was located. They had to go down the spiral staircase to get into this room. When they were at the very bottom, in front of them there was a room with metal bars. It resembled an ordinary prison cell. Du Zhanglong has seen this more than once. The guard put the key in the lock of the cell and began to turn it to open the door of this cell. 
When they opened the door, they walked along a long corridor along the wall there were doors on which inscriptions with the numbers 1, 2, 3 were melting. Most likely these were insulators. He walked to Zangan and thought to himself that he knew that the isolation ward was a solitary cell, but he just couldn't understand why they placed solitary cells in the basement. The guard approached one of the doors and began to open it, which means this was the cell in which the young man would spend the next three days. The security guard opened the door and told the young man to come through and he would be very surprised at what was before his eyes, something he had never seen anywhere else. For some time he was even speechless. What was in front of him could not even be called solitary confinement. He did not expect that they could resort to such abuse here. In front of him there was a room in which he could only be standing. He could not walk, sit, or move because there was no room for that. It was not solitary confinement. It was just a group of how they could build something that is used only for torture in this particular cell. He had to stay for three days. No matter what power they had, they couldn't do that. They completely forgot that there were completely innocent people here. They caught it themselves. The guard shouted that he should stop and come in urgently and again took out his stick and started threatening him. He did this every time he tried to say something. The young man stood up and digested everything that was happening in his head. He was a little shocked by what he just saw. The guard ordered the young man to come in. He will break his arm. Until Zhang Wang, he will not tempt fate. He said that he understood. He went to the side of the camera. The cell was so cramped that he could barely fit into it. With his hands in plaster, it was very difficult to pack into this box. The cell door closed, which meant that the young man would have to stay in this state for exactly three days. It was just a mockery of people. For three days he will be in this dirty, tattered basement with a flickering light from the damp walls. The young man's isolation cell was number four, which means there were also someone in the first three prisoners. Most likely this type of punishment was common in this social institution. Before Zhang Ong, when he was locked in this room, I thought that he served in the army for a long time and quite often went through many tortures when he fell into the hands of a stew while he was performing a task. Such coffins were one of the tortures that the enemy inside invented. You can't sit down or lie down, so you can't take a nap. So it was still impossible to go to the toilet, not to eat, not to drink, forced in action, impossible to do anything at will. This was torture. This punishment was invented in order to break the spirit and body of the enemies. He didn't understand why the hell they used this punishment on ordinary people. These were crazy people who came up with the idea of using such torture on ordinary people. This is exactly what the young man could not understand. What could be more important than the fact that this director and his two sons were definitely crazy? They should have been treated in a hospital for the mentally ill. Before Jamong himself, he needs to hold out here for three whole days, so he shouldn't freak out, but should concentrate on only one goal. Night fell on the street in the camp of the social institution there was complete silence because according to the schedule, all prisoners at that time had no right to move, they had to stay in their enclosed spaces and sleep. When the sun came out from behind the mountains in the morning, which completely surrounded this institution on several sides, then life began here, you could see people. Only a day passed since Du Zhanglong got into the isolation ward. During that day, no one went down to the basement so the guards did not know how the prisoners were feeling in the isolation ward. They did not bring them food. Du Zhanglong tried to concentrate and not panic. He was a very experienced soldier. He understood perfectly well that this type of torture is to break a person's spirit and to weaken his body. The worst thing for him was that he had a very strong feeling of hunger whenever she had a feeling of hunger for a while. Before Zhanglong he was very hungry, so at first he was not very loud. Then he began to ask for food louder. But since the isolation ward was in the basement, no one could hear him. If when sounds were heard from the isolation ward, the guards were in no hurry to go to the door of the room and find out what happened. And now, having heard the scream coming from the isolation ward of a young man, they said that this was a new asshole who was locked up yesterday. After the young man was placed in isolation and the same commander was left in the group, Everyone who supported Du Zhanglong was unlucky with the first one who decided to punish the platoon commander. It was Isunjo. The commander approached him and hit him in the face and said that he heard him shouting Du Zhanglong while he was passed out and that he did not understand at all when he shouted it. The guy tried to justify himself. Of course he understood that now he would get it, 
and he wanted to say something in his own defense. The platoon commander was not going to listen to him. He ordered him to shut up and hit him on the knee with all his might. So the guy couldn't stand on his feet and sat down. The commander shouted, He knows that they all incited him to give them a reason. Then they will immediately kill their commander, and that all the prisoners are a bunch of useless scum. Since the guy was squatting, the platoon commander easily grabbed his head. He was so angry that he needed to take it all out on someone. The plant commander constantly shouted that he would now show everyone what would happen behind such actions as they behaved and this would by no means be unpunished for them. The next moment, the platoon commander, who was holding the guy's head by the hair, hit her in his knee with all his strength. He could show his superiority only when he knew that no one would answer him. After delivering several kicks to the head, the platoon commander threw him away so that he could fall and Sunjo. He was already unconscious. When the guy was already lying on the floor, the platoon commander came up and kicked him several more times while he was lying down, while he said that this would happen to anyone who did not obey him. A small fat man who called himself the president of the country asked the commander why only this guy was being treated this way and it was his mistake. The commander did not want to defend anyone who humiliated him, so he said that no one allowed this man to get involved in the conversation and began kicking him a minute later. The fat man was lying next to the guy on the floor. The commanders, two of his assistants, kicked two prisoners lying on the floor. It was a young man named Yi Sunjo and a fat man who considered himself the president. They could not fight back this freak. In the office of the institution in the director's office there was a real division of money. He took out all the packages that he had collected in the safe and began to put them in piles. His son stood silently and watched. The director counted and then put money packages into a box of sports sneakers. While saying that Caesar's is due to Caesar, he reassured himself, and the rest for those who live in front of him were several bags. In each of these bags he put a box with sports shoes inside of which there was money. The director ordered one of his sons to take three packages and said that the amount in each package is absolutely the same, so let him distribute them one by one and come back. The vice president of this social institution, who was smaller, told his brother to go with him today and help him. The thug, the vice president, did not contradict and agreed. The sons of the director of a social institution in the hall held in their hands all the packages that their father told them to distribute. But on the floor there was another large box completely filled with money. One of the sons asked what it was. Their father replied that they should leave it. This box belongs to the one he needs to meet and give personally. The bully vice president thought why it was such a big box and asked his father about it. He was a little stupid and asked the same stupid questions. The father answered him that this man is far from the one who lives at the expense of the country. He is the one who holds in his hands the lid of the pan in which rice is cooked for the people. A few minutes later a black executive class car was already driving along the road to distribute to everyone who was entitled to a package containing a box of money. They were driving very fast and in the car they were playing loud music. The thug was trying to sing along to a song that sounded familiar to him. He wished Daniel would give your heart at the same time to the video no. These were the words from the song. And he continued to sing along that the man flashed a glimpse of him, who winked. Has already left now, he will give you a smile if you wink at him again. He is ready to fall in love just for the fact that they wink at him. He was driving, he was singing, he was in a very good mood. His brother was sitting behind the wheel and thinking how exactly these guys who carry money help them. He decided that his father, and they were simply paying for the received item in this financial way. They drove up to the building. This is where they were supposed to bring their first package. They had to give this package to the civil servant in the mayor's office for the Social Security Administration since he received such a package. He needed to do something for them, and he helped them receive a government subsidy. Having received the package, it was enough for him to work as diligently as usual. Everything should go according to a well-established scheme. It was a corruption scheme. Sons of the director of the Dasing Social Institution we went further because they still had a few places left that they had to visit. The next stop was the police station. They had to hand over the next package to the police chief. When the vice president gave the package, he said that the police chief was always on his feet for the sake of the people of the city and asked him to accept the shoes and that he act in the same spirit. They could not meet with the next participant in this corruption scheme in the office. So their meeting took place in a park in a very deserted place. This was the chief prosecutor of the city, of course. 
he was very pleased that he received a package with sports shoes. The prosecutor helped hush up all the claims against their social institution. The son of the director of a social institution said that he would bring him apples when they are ripe. The prosecutor replied that of course he likes apples better. Well, pears are not bad. These people never spoke directly because they were afraid for their places. After receiving the package, the prosecutor ate his car and left. The vice president was unhappy with the meeting and said that don't look a gift horse in the mouth and let him be content with what he was given. He handed the bank package with money to his brother and thrashed the vice president and told him to take it. It was the amount of money for the work they had done. The bully vice president was very happy. He guessed that it was the remains of all the money they were delivering because they were used to doing any business for their own benefit. Last time he left a certain amount for himself. No one noticed this. So he decided that this time he would also leave you and his brother a certain amount so that their father would not know. When they got into the car after completing all the tasks and delivering the money, he said that they had worked well and therefore could go eat meat. They arrived at the restaurant where they always ordered food for themselves and today they ordered a very large piece of meat to be cooked and served in this restaurant. After some time, the waiter brought them the finished meat on a plate, and it looked very appetizing. The meat lay on green lettuce leaves. There was also a small amount of rice and an unusually tasty sauce. It smelled very tasty and looked appetizing. The vice president took his hand to wrap a piece of meat in a salad and began to feed his brother right from his hand. It seemed to him that, as his older brother, he could allow this to be done even in a restaurant. He chewed slowly. The vice president looked at him and thought how nice it was to see his little brother eat. It seemed to him that he was still small. Then they sat down at the table and began to eat everything that was brought to them. It was quite a large number of dishes. While eating, the younger brother decided to ask his older brother what the fate of the newcomer and the commander of the third platoon would be. He was wondering if the commander of the third group would really fight with Du Zhanglong when he came out here with the detention center in three days. His brother replied, Does he really think that a person who was in a detention center for three days can win a fight? It was simply impossible. Of course he didn't think so, but this newcomer scattered three people. Although he couldn't move his arms, so suddenly he can fight well even after the isolation cell. The vice president also thought about suddenly it seemed to him that such a capable Du Zhanglong could become useful for their social institution. Until that time there had not been a single prisoner with such capabilities. The thug agreed with the words of his brother. After all, this commander was also very capricious and did not obey for a long time, but they crushed him under them and now he is a completely controlled man. The vice president took a piece of meat with his two chopsticks and said that now the most important thing is to break his spirit in the isolation ward, then he will become completely controllable. I will not be able to use him. The elder brother wanted Du Zhanglong to completely obey him in which case he would have a person among the prisoners who would be feared and he would be able to solve his issues this way. Before Zhang Long, he had already been in the isolation ward for two days. No one from the guards approached him. They didn't bring him food or water. He didn't understand whether he was sleeping or not sleeping because he was in the same position all the time. There was only one thing he was tired of and wanted to sleep, and the second he was very fit and wanted to eat. Well, since he served in the special unit, he knew that he just needed to endure. Therefore, he began to say out loud those foods that he would like to eat right now. It was a river there, ribs after ribs. He would eat meat, and he also wanted kimchi. So he went through all the dishes that he would like to eat when he gets out of here. He found himself thinking he needed to find a reason to survive and get out of here. It had to be a very good reason so he wouldn't lose his composure. He realized that he had such a reason, and it was not food at all. He had to survive and get out of here just to see Sun. He remembered her face and thought that they had never had dinner together. Therefore, he needs to go out and immediately invite her to dinner so that they can be together. He even imagined what it would look like. He would approach her and invite her to have dinner together. Mila would ask him again and agree. And she would also add that he wanted to eat. In his dreams, he decided that it didn't matter to him what was served for this dinner. The main thing was that she was nearby. He convinced you that it didn't matter to him what kind of food there would be. The most important thing was that Sona would have dinner with him, and they would be together. He drove away all other thoughts. There was complete darkness in his eyes. 
He no longer understood how long he had been here because it seemed to him that an eternity had passed since he was locked in this isolation ward, but only three days had passed. The doors of the isolation ward opened and Du Zhanglong fell out onto the ground. Tired of just standing without moving for the last three days, he was hungry. He looked at the light through slightly open eyes. He did not have the strength to say anything. He made some incomprehensible sounds to himself. And having got used to the light, he opened his eyes and saw that one of the vice presidents was standing in front of him. He recognized him by the patent leather boots he was wearing here. Before Zhang Wang was barely alive, he didn't want anything and he looked at the whole world around him with absolutely indifferent eyes. At that moment he was like the rest of the prisoners. The vice president saw the young man and was very happy. He decided that this was great. These were exactly the eyes that he wanted to see after his imprisonment. The vice president shouted for the guards to come in and pull him out of this room because the young man was lying absolutely motionless. He had no strength at all. In two basements where the isolation ward was located, two prisoners appeared. This was the same guy who helped the newcomer all the time, and the second was a small, plump man who called himself president. These two had to get him out of the isolation ward. They took him by the arms from both sides and began to drag him towards the exit of this room. He was in very terrible condition and could not move on his own. When they went out into the street, two vice presidents, a small one and a thug, walked along the courtyard of a social institution in front of them, replaced the bag with a guard who was supposed to guard them, and behind them a guy and a fat man were dragging the barely alive Du Zhanglong. They were all heading towards their room. The guy asked the newcomer if he was okay. He didn't answer him and asked him what was wrong with his face. He replied that he was beaten by the commander because he supported him and received his superiority for trying to stop the commander. His excellency said that he was fine and nothing hurt at all. Du Zhanglong realized that in this establishment he had at least two people whom he could count on for help. Du Zhanglong replayed all the latest events in his head. He didn't understand yet what could happen to him and that this was not the end at all. But he knew that these vice presidents were quite cruel people. Du Zhanglong was very hungry. The only thing he wanted now was to eat. He asked where they were taking him because they passed by the cafeteria. They were definitely not going to feed him. They led him to a part of the stadium where there were quite a lot of prisoners. They stood waiting for some events. Their faces were not very joyful. Therefore the events should not be joyful. In front of this group of prisoners stood the platoon commander. He lost his fists. It seemed that he was preparing to strike someone. Before Jamong they put him right in front of the platoon commander. Then it became clear that now there would be a massacre between them. The leadership was honest on the part. But they were never honest. Du Zhanglong thought that before he had time to leave the detention center, they had already organized a duel between them. Anyway, this duel would be unequal. The platoon commander exhaled before the massacre. He understood that his enemy was very weak and that he had no other way. How to beat a newcomer to retain the position of commander? He remembered the words of the vice president when he told him that authority must be earned and how he was going to command the prisoners when he pitifully fell before them without help. The platoon commander thought that the deputy director himself had presented him with this chance on a silver platter, and he should not have let him down. He really wanted to remain in his position. The platoon commander could only take full advantage of this chance, and he had to do this in front of all the other prisoners. The vice president said that they were about to have a whole gladiator fight. That was his joke. At least that's what he wanted, and he needed to understand the outcome of this fight. His brother as always, stood with a stony face. He had no emotions. He did not understand jokes and did not understand pain. With the current situation of the young man, it was not a battle, but more like a sentence weakened with two broken arms against an absolutely healthy, well-fed platoon commander. But the leadership thought it would be more fun this way. The vice president gave the command to the guards for the battle to begin. The guard lowered his head and respectfully replied that it's good, sir and walked towards the opponents, after which he shouted that at his signal the fight should begin. On opposite sides of him stood on one side the platoon commander, and on the other side a young man who had just left the isolation ward. Before Zhang he only thought about one thing, he wanted to rest. He was so tired over the last three days, he didn't sit or lie down, but he didn't sleep. On the other side stood the commander who had already decided for himself the outcome of this battle. He could not lose because he would have lost his position, 
and then he would have become like everyone else. There was complete silence around. Everyone had already seen once how the duel between them ended, and now they wanted a repeat. They wanted their commander to lose again now. Only two young men among this entire crowd were on the side of the commander. These were his two assistants, who were also beaten last time and were lying on the floor. They still had a grudge from last time. The guard raised his hand up at first, just about to give a signal. And so it happened, he shouted, start from this moment. Each of the two opponents had to fight to the last. The platoon commander with crazed eyes began to head towards his enemy. He decided that he would deliver the first strike today, at least he thought so. The day before, the platoon commander, his two assistants were talking in the yard so that no one could hear. The assistants asked their commander if he would fight with a newcomer when he was released. If the battle was immediate then there was nothing to worry about because he would be in very bad condition. Well, what confused the platoon commander, he told his assistants that you also got it from this newcomer, and they know very well how strong he is. That let them remember how he beat them with absolutely no hands with just his legs, how strong his blow is and how fast he can move and deliver his blows. Of course the young man will be in bad condition. Well, the platoon commander wanted him to win for sure and the newcomer didn't have a single chance to win. He had to fall after the first blow. One of the assistants said that this newcomer's arms were broken. So as soon as the duel begins, the platoon commander needs to aim at the hands after such a blow was inflicted on him. It will be very painful for him. Therefore, he needs to hit the weak spots. The platoon commander thought if this was too mean, but on the other hand, they were here for survival. If he didn't win, then his enemy would win. But what a winning method it was. If he hits his sore hands right away, then the newcomer will no longer be able to strike further. Therefore, the platoon commander moved towards the newcomer in order to deliver the first very strong blow to his hands. He wanted this battle to end immediately. He practically ran up to Du Zhanglong, stood there motionless, didn't even try to defend himself. He thought that let it be like this and this will all end quickly. Let them beat him. He looked at his enemy and thought, let him strike faster and I'll fall and that's all over. Well, the only thing he couldn't foresee was when the platoon commander was going to strike. The young man was ready to take any blow. The only place in his opinion that could not be hit was his hands. So he carefully looked at what the platoon commander wanted to do. When the commander ran up very close, he kicked his hands with all his might, so that the young man fell to the ground. The commander thought that this was most likely the end and he had already won this battle. So he relaxed a little and decided that he would not finish off the man who was lying down. He did not understand one thing. Du Zhanglong was not going to forgive such vile actions, so the young man decided to enter into battle with his commander. He rose from the earth, and he delivered a very strong blow to the commander's chest. No one from the environment expected this. Everyone thought that after the isolation ward, a person who had to be carried in his arms would never be able to deliver such a strong blow. The next moment the platoon commander realized his mistake. He realized that he had lost this battle too. He again received these strong blows and he could not respond. The bully vice president was surprised for the first time. He didn't understand what kind of guy he was, how prepared he was, this newcomer. He thought that most likely someone had trained him. The only one who liked all this was the second vice president and the older brother of this thug. He looked at everything that was happening and it amused him. He laughed constantly. It seemed like he was in a circus. The platoon commander could not understand why this newcomer was so strong, because he had just left the isolation ward. He had not slept or eaten for three days. He was motionless, and his blows were just as strong. The prisoners stood very quietly. They waited for Du Zhanglong to beat the platoon commander. Each of them believed that he would do this for him because the platoon very often offended his subordinates. The two prisoners who wanted it most of all were the young man who helped him in the early days of and Sunjo, and the second one was a small fat man who considered himself the president of the country. Du Zhanglong looked at all their faces and understood what they wanted. They were exactly the same prisoners as him. Only they didn't have that strength. Only he could beat this commander. The platoon commander was still on his feet after receiving blows and tried to say something insulting towards the young man. Of course, he no longer had the strength to continue this duel. He understood perfectly well that he had lost this fight. But he did not want to give up. He decided that he would go to the end. The next moment the young man kicked him. It was for him. 
but when he meanly kicked him on the hands, it splashed in all directions. He slowly fell to the ground because he could not stay on his feet. The blow was so strong that splashes of blood flew in all directions. One blow was followed by another blow. Then it became clear to everyone who was the winner in this fight. All the other prisoners were very surprised because before their eyes the same situation was repeated that was exactly three days ago when their commander then fell to the ground. Now this fight ended in the same way. Not only the prisoners were surprised, there was surprise on the faces of the assistant commander and two vice presidents who watched this fight. All these people definitely did not expect an ending. The young man did not stop and decided to complete this duel and leave victory for himself. He beat his platoon commander perfectly, striking him blow after blow with only his legs. The commander's assistants understood that this loss was not only a loss for the commander, but them too. They wanted to rush to the aid of their commander, but until the battle was over. They had no right, so they just watched as he was beaten. The silence was interrupted by loud screams. Everything was repeated like the last time. All the prisoners who were watching this duel began to shout to Zangan, thus showing their support for the newcomer. The platoon commander was lying on the ground and trying to say something, but his speech was no longer connected. There were some intermittent sounds because he was practically passed out. The assassins of the president, and only one question arose, how could this be? He thought that he had calculated everything. He sent this man to the isolation ward for three days. Today he fed him and when the door opened, he was practically on the verge of death and exactly after a while this young man won the battle-healthy platoon commander. Mr. Vice President decided not to continue the fight for one big reason that the young man could completely kill the commander appointed by him. He said that this was enough and the fight should be stopped. The gentleman thought that the newcomer was a very interesting fellow. Of course the fight should be over, but he had to think about what to do next with this young man. Before Chan Gong asked the vice president if he finished the fight then can the young man go and rest because he is very tired. The next moment after these words, the young man collapsed to the ground. A frightened guard ran up to him asking what happened to him. No one could understand what happened to him. The vice president, the security guard, everyone tried to ask the young man what it meant that he fell, but they could not shout to him. Various thoughts came to your mind in front of them lay the motionless young man who had just beaten the platoon commander. When everyone heard snoring, it became clear that Du Zhanglong would just fall asleep. He was so tired lately, and had not slept for three days right on the ground. He decided to sleep because he no longer had the strength. The vice president watched him sleep right on earth, and it amused him even more. He realized that in front of him was really a very interesting guy, and he had a very good thought about the newcomers. While the young man was sleeping, Several prisoners carried him into the room and laid him on the bed, and today he deserved it. Du Zhanglong opened his eyes. He saw a mattress on the second floor in front of him, tried to remember the latest events that happened to him. He didn't understand why he was in bed. A guy named Yi Sungjo stood next to him, just like on the first day. This time he asked the young man if he most likely woke up here, and he had some news that he wanted to tell. Before Zhanglong asked the guy what happened, he couldn't remember the latest events. Most likely it was because he was completely weakened. The guy replied, Well, what happened? You were just sleeping. He brought it here and he also went to bed, using it as an excuse. It became clear to the young man. He decided that he needed to get up. That he had slept enough. He needed to get up to eat. He was very hungry. All the events that happened to him recently were very strange to admit what kind of person he was and that he served in the army in a special detachment. Well, from his actions one could understand that he was far from an ordinary person. When he stood up, he saw that he was wearing a yellow bandage on his arm, the same bandage that the platoon commanders were wearing, and the keys to the front door were fastened to the big pin. So the deputy director decided, he made the young man the new commander of the third group. This was his plan if the previous commander did not win the duel. It was an office in the office where two brothers worked. They returned here to their office. The older brother decided to make tea for both of them. He always looked after his younger brother, although he was much larger than him physically. The vice president stood near the table where tea was brewed, counted two spoons of sugar into one cup and then two spoons into another. He crushed the tea with them exactly the same way. He took the cups in his hands. He approached his brother and, handing the cup to him, warned him that it was very hot and that he should sing very carefully. 
he behaved like a real older brother. Bruiser Vice President asked your brother why he did this. He wanted to know the answers to the questions he asked after this battle. The brother pretended that he didn't understand and that he wanted a lot more sugar but it was just right for him. Thus, he wanted to take him away from the upcoming conversation. The vice president is that no, he's not talking about sugar. He's basically happy with everything and the tea is normal. He's talking about the fact that his brother may do Zhang Long the commander of the third platoon. His brother answered him that, firstly, this idiot of a previous commander turned out to be much weaker than he thought, and secondly, the newcomer exceeded all his expectations and that he needed to wait a little and he would definitely be of some use. The vice president said that this young man, and as simple as they think of him, fights very well, which means he must have a good school. Before Zhang Long, he graduated from some school. It was not so easy. With two broken arms he was able to cope with a healthy group commander. He had very good technique and delivered accurate blows. His brother did not understand what was his concern. Then he continued that now he is like this with broken arms, and as soon as his bones heal and he is cured, he will be able to put everyone on the shoulder blade. The two brothers continued to argue about the newcomers. One argued that one guard could hold a whole crowd of prisoners and the second said that one prisoner could put them all on a shoulder blade. As an argument, the vice president said that their one employee of the social center stood up to a whole squad so that he could see how they were afraid of the guards and did all their work. But the second brother told him that if only twenty or thirty prisoners attacked the guard, then the employee would definitely not be able to cope with them. It would be a logical coincidence that they could have been released twenty times already, but none of them did it. However, no one even thought that it was possible to attack the guard. It's just that none of these prisoners could afford to do this because they were not capable of doing so. Well, it was most likely because they were afraid and if help had come they wouldn't have shown much they could defeat a couple of guards. But in the end they will remain behind high walls and large doors and they will be severely beaten or sent to a room for punishment. Yes, but the real reason lies not in this, said the vice president. Thanks to all this, the prisoners themselves developed a sense of fear. I am not ready to completely obey my masters. They say when in Southeast Asia they tame an elephant, they tie the baby elephant by the four limbs and beat him with an iron club to create fear of people in him. So even when the elephant grows up and is already capable of trampling a person, he is still afraid of people with people, the same scheme. Therefore, it is necessary with before Chan Gong do as usual. Now everything was clear to him. Of course it was correct. His older brother made Du Zhang Long the commander of the third group so he could control him. The privilege of a commander will make him relax and he will stop being so aggressive. His thoughts will go in a completely different direction. Over time he will come over to their side. After some time, he will begin to consider this place as his own, just like other prisoners, and he will begin to understand his position as a privilege over the others in the group. The young man was sitting on his bed. Two assistants of the previous platoon commander approached him. They asked him for forgiveness. He did not understand why they were doing this. The former commander was taken to the hospital wing after the fight. His subordinates began to bend over backwards to survive. Before Zhang Meng asked them why they were asking him for forgiveness. He said that he could not forgive them. The former commander's assistants did not understand why he was doing this. Du Zhang Meng continued to be more precise. He has nothing to forgive them for. He hasn't been here that long and he doesn't have any complaints against them. The two assistants calmed down a little because at some point they thought that this was the end and they would no longer be able to survive in this group. Du Zhang explained to them that they needed to ask for forgiveness not from him, but from those people who were behind them, which means they needed to ask for forgiveness from all groups of prisoners. The two assistants turned and really saw that behind them stood a large number of prisoners from this group. They were all waiting for them to ask for forgiveness. The young man told them to sort out their problems themselves. He doesn't want to get involved in this. He has only one desire, and he went to sleep. He turned on his other side and immediately fell asleep. The commander's former assistants continued to beg him to forgive them. And they said, Commander, please, but he no longer heard them. Du Zhangong was lying on the bed, thinking that it was great happiness to just lie down and lie in bed for the last three days. He didn't have such an opportunity so he was now catching up on lost time. He lay there and thought, why did the vice president make him a commander? It means he had some kind of plan that he didn't fully understand. 
The vice president wanted him to become an example of how not to behave when he was dragged into a duel immediately after he left the detention center. He wanted to raise the reputation of the past commander in the eyes of prisoners. Well, then his plans changed. It was only because this duel was before Zhang Long, which means he came up with something new and needed to understand what he wanted. The only thing the young man understood was that he wants to get rid of the old commander, since he lost to him twice. All this was clear. Well, why did he give him this position? It was a question. It means he has some kind of cunning plan that he came up with. Maybe the vice president decided that he would go crazy because of power like the previous commander, and would start listening and obeying only him. But this is ridiculous nonsense. He didn't know who Du Zhanglong was. Apparently his environment is so close-minded that he has never met anyone smarter than himself. He doesn't even think that other people are not as selfish as him. Thoughts filled the young man's head, but he decided to stop at the fact that for now he would need to join these smart people. Today in the city there was a grand opening of the hotel and all the establishments that were in it. This event was one of the most important in recent times in the city. A large number of flowers stood near the entrance to the hotel. Everyone considered it an honor to congratulate the new owners of these establishments. Three men were holding scissors in their hands. They were waiting for the signal by which they had to cut the red ribbon. What did the opening mean? And so now the tape will be cut. The presenter shouted to the standing microphone and began to count one or two for a few more seconds and the new establishment will already be open. Three shouted the presenters in exactly three places the ribbon was cut. It was carefully held in the hands of the owners of this establishment. Many journalists were invited to cover this solemn event of the city. Each of them wanted to take their own exclusive photo or some video material to be the first to publish. The two men who had just cut the ribbon shook hands. One of them said congratulations and that there was no point in waiting. The young man in a handsome brown suit did not answer. He just thought to himself that this employee did not know what happened between him and Park Guanho, and he didn't have to wait that long. Another young man approached them and turned to the gentleman that he already needed to move forward on the next case. He had a very busy schedule, and the whole day was scheduled. The official said that in this case he would free up time a little later and then talk about everything unsaid. He said goodbye and the young man in a brown suit bowed low to him and wished him a good trip. He stood there for several minutes with his head in his hands, seeing off this important official. He could have stood there for a while longer, but his companions and comrades said that he had already left. The young man in the brown suit was a little dissatisfied that the official said that he would free up time for him, so he ordered his assistant and companion to prepare the box of apples again, he understood. And then he said that now they need to go to a corporate party with all their employees. They needed to decide where they will celebrate today not long at home. He decided that they would go to that same cafe and order fried dumplings. Today they would order everything they have on the menu there. The table was bursting with abundance. They really ordered everything that was on the menu of this restaurant. They had a very big holiday today, so they could afford it. They really ordered everything that was here in the restaurant. The officials brought absolutely everything that they had prepared to their table. In addition, they brought out a large amount of alcoholic drinks. Today they had an opportunity not only to eat deliciously but also to drink well. Today everyone wanted to have a drink with him. Everyone came up and said let's have a drink and he didn't refuse anyone and drank with all his employees. He told his companion that he had done a good job, then he was told that he did too, and they continued to drink glass after glass for their future business. The companion asked the young man in a brown suit why he has such a sad face. After all, Today he opened another business of his own, so he will receive enough profit from this business, then it is not clear why he is sad. He replied that money is very good and of course he does everything to earn as much as possible, but lately he has been very bored and nothing has stopped surprising him. When he started working in this city, he really liked it so that everything would work according to certain rules. The one who wins the battle here climbs the very top. That's exactly what he did throughout all this time bowed his head before the strong and stepped over the weak. And now he is already engaged in business. He will need to bow his head not only to the strong, but also to tolerate many weak ones. This is the rule of business. He didn't really like these business rules. The party was coming to an end. He said goodbye to everyone and got into his car to be taken home. He was driving a luxury car. His personal driver was driving this driver's car. 
he could afford it from the moment he started doing business. He looked at the city flying past him and understood that there is life outside the window of this car, and it can be much different. And you are in the life he is now leading. He asked his driver to stop, but it was still far from his house and so the driver did not immediately fulfill his request. He said everything was fine, the house was visible too. He just wanted to walk a little. The driver said that he was drunk and that he shouldn't get out of the car. He would now give him a ride right to the house. He said that he wanted to walk in the fresh air. Most likely, he would sober up faster that way. The road really wasn't very long. I passed by several shops that were near his house and when he approached his house. Then someone's voice called him by name. Someone shouted Taman. He didn't understand who he hadn't met yet today. All the people he knew were at the opening of his business. When he turned, he saw that Park Guanho was standing in front of him with his guards and with that same thug of whom he was proud. It seems he had a business opening today and asked for forgiveness for not coming. Taemun asked why his ranks had thinned out so much. Apparently not everyone had yet been discharged from the hospital after the massacre that occurred in the restaurant. Park Guanho was very angry. He just came to talk about this. It seemed to him that only he could decide his affairs. A young man in a brown suit said that he would tell everything if he defeated him and began to tease him and asked again if they understood the rules. Park Guangho was an impudent person and he had no right to do this to him, so he was very offended by him. A crowd of distraught security guards rushed at the young man. Their boss shouted for them to hold him. He wanted to punish his offender not only for what happened in the restaurant, but also for the fact that he took away his business. He t everything became clearer in the young man's head. He thought it was because he was walking in fresh air, but in fact it was because of a stressful situation. He rushed into the buoy towards the guards who were rushing towards him. They were all either with batons or with some other weapon. Park Guanho shouted for the guards to grab him. Well, they couldn't easily take the young man, so they were ready to use the sticks they had in their hands. One of the most aggressive bandits swung with all his might to strike the young man to knock him down. When he ran closer, the bandit struck with all his might. The young man flew to the side. He really did not expect that their massacre would be with weapons. But they didn't know. This young man served in a special unit, and he had good training. Of course he wasn't the best, but still he was quite prepared, so he stood up and began to fight back his opponents. Everyone called him arrogant. He really was like that. He wasn't going to stand on ceremony with anyone and did only what he considered necessary. When one of the bandits came closer to him, he hit him on the head several times, so his head began to stagger, and he did it very skillfully. The bandit stood with a broken nose, his face stained with blood. There were quite a lot of them, but they could not catch him in any way. One half of the bandit was already lying on the ground because he got what he deserved, and the second was still trying to resist and deliver some blows. But it was all so insignificant, and the young man in the suit coped with it all quite well. When the young man looked, he saw that half of the bandits were already gone. This was not bad news for him, he understood. This means that this massacre will end soon. The young man in the suit didn't understand where the one who waved the stick the most went and tried to knock him down. He stood behind and tried, like a rat, to hit your head with your stick from behind. But the young man quickly reacted to his blow and delivered his blow much faster. So he fell to the ground. The young man warned him. He told him that you should not start if you are not confident in your abilities or do not have the skill. The next moment, the thug who was one of Park Guanho's guards grabbed the young man by the throat so that he turned red and could not breathe. Park Guanho told his guard to continue and he wants to see how all the organs fall out of this impudent guy. The thug lifted him above his head, holding him by the throat and began to demand that he speak or shut up and that he never speak again. The young man was blushing. He had no air at all and he began to wheeze very quietly. Making some incomprehensible sounds, the thug said that this could be his last word. But the young man was not ready to give up and he thought, if he cannot hit this thug with his hand and hold him somehow, then he can kick him and hit him so that he no longer wants to come near him. All the other bandits watched how the thugs dealt with the young man. They thought it was very cool. They were much weaker and could not afford this. The next moment, when the young man kicked the thug between the legs with all his might, he doubled over in pain, screamed wildly and released his hands from the young man's throat. Everyone else who was watching this also grimaced their faces. Recently, 
This thug was beaten for the second time so that he could not do anything. A young man stood next to him and explained to the thug that he could not say anything if he was holding him by the throat. He was so angry that he hit this thug several times and the bandits standing next to him scattered in different directions. The rest of the bandits did not know what to do. If this thug could not cope with this young man, then how could they cope with him? They could only run away in different directions. The young man in the suit thought that he was warming up after eating and drinking well. It was such an adventure he had. He came closer to Park Guangho and the remaining bandits and said that he had already warmed up and now let's try to really fight and pointed with his fingers so that they begin to approach him. Park Guangho said that it was time to end this massacre and invited him to talk. He thought that this way he could solve his issues. The young man agreed that if he wanted to talk then let him talk. He had nothing against it. Anyway, the position of the strongest remained with him. Park Guangho came here to take revenge on the young man and here he took away his business and opened his own, which meant that now only the young man in a brown suit would make money from it. Park Guanho assured the young man there was no need to bring up the past. He came here for something completely different. He wanted to talk and ask him something important. He started his question not very clearly, like he wanted to know if someone had attacked Bob in a restaurant, and he continued so that the young man would not try to lie that it was not his man. There was no need to hide anything anymore. The business was now his. The young man rubbed the back of his head said that it was really the one who attacked in the restaurant. It was his man and then asked why he was looking for him. He wants to take revenge on him. In any case, he was not going to tell him anything. This is only because they had a condition that he would tell everything that they would ask him only when they defeated him. Park Guanho asked to say only one thing where was this guy getting dressed. He took a break all over the city but he was nowhere to be found. He wanted to meet him again. The young man answered as he left that he did not know and saw him last on the day he attacked them. And I thought to myself, he really doesn't know where he went and where he went. His two arms were crippled, they were in plaster. Park Guanho also wondered where he could hide in this city. There has never been a time when he couldn't find the person he needed. The young man looked at himself and realized that he was sweating a lot. His shirt and very beautiful suit were wrinkled and wet under his armpits. But he had so much fun because today he had an adventure that he could afford lately. He even began to smile. Park Wangho gathered all her guards in her office. Led by a thug, they sat and said nothing because today they received another lesson on how not to behave. All his guards were unable to carry out his order. The thug turned to the gentleman and asked for his forgiveness, to which he replied that he did not expect much from them. They had just left the hospital, and it was not a fact that they would defeat him on normal days. The door opened and someone called Park Guanho. Everyone sitting turned their heads towards the door. They wondered what else could happen today. There was some toothless man standing at the door in a military uniform constantly shouting what happened. He was very nervous and irritated. Apparently something really happened that put him in such a state. He didn't think at all that this could happen while he was undergoing military training in his city. He began to ask for forgiveness from the gentleman. He replied that he shouldn't ask for forgiveness. It's not his fault. He began to say in two ways that it was all Joe Taman's tricks to go deal with him. The gentleman replied that there was no need to deal with anyone. He had a completely different matter. He asked if the military knew which hospital the young man in the brown jacket went to. He not only knew the hospital where Joe Taman's people go, this warrior had to go find out because the guy who beat them broke his arms and he's probably being treated in this clinic. He sent the lighthouse to check. The toothless military man didn't understand why this guy was sent to his master by Cho Taemun Dai. He took the business from them. Isn't it easier to take revenge on him right away? This guy hurt the master's pride and this was much more important than the physical injury inflicted on him. He then felt very humiliated and this feeling did not leave him. This was the most important thing that could be hurt, and therefore this crazy warrior he was taking revenge for his master on that guy. The next day, a toothless warrior went to this clinic. He wanted to find out as much as possible about this guy. He needed to know his name and where he lives. He made an appointment with the doctor. When he entered the office, the doctor asked what was hurting him. He treated him like an ordinary patient. The doctor asked again where it hurt, to which the toothless man already dressed in civilian clothes, replied that his soul hurt. Whoever offended his master very much. Next moment he grabbed the doctor's head and pressed it to the table. 
He needed to get as much information as possible. Scattered on the table in different directions were a pen and pencil and someone's medical history in which the doctor had just written down after seeing the patient. The doctor replied that this young man's name was Du Jean Long, and he really had an appointment with him. He had two broken arms, and the doctor put him in a cast. This was already something. Now this toothless man knew the name of his master's offender. He demanded that the doctor tell him his phone number or address. Well, the doctor could not give such information because clients from Mr. Cho Taemun do not share such information. Of course, this was not entirely good, but the toothless man decided that he already knew the name, and that was enough to find it further. He reported this news by calling his master on the phone. Of course, he was not entirely happy because it was very small. One name did not mean that he could be found quickly. Sancho was the name of this toothless warrior. He needed to go somewhere else, and this was the restaurant that Cho Taemin's people go to. Park Guanho's people found out where Du Jengen and Zhou Taemin were last together. It was one of Cho Taemin's most visited places, so Toothless went there when he entered this establishment. He asked the waiter to bring him one with Ju and Udon. When the waiter brought the already prepared dish to the table of the visitor, he asked him without teeth if a guy with two broken arms had come to their place. Without thinking twice, he answered that he had. Toothless offered him a bill for remembering everything connected with this guy. All the waiters were not particularly clean. I was not ready to tell everything that interested these people for a small fee. Therefore, without thinking twice, the waiter began to talk about how this guy got drunk and then went home drunk. It seemed like he had to catch a bus. It seems he wasn't local. But at this time the buses don't run anymore, so he didn't know anything else. While the waiter was telling everything about that guy to the toothless gentleman, the man from the next table called him by name. They shouted Sancho. Most likely they knew him well, but judging by their appearance, they didn't want to see him here. One of the men who were sitting at the next table asked again who forgot in this restaurant. These were Cho Taman's people, so he was not welcome here. Toothless let the waiter go, said that he could go. They would talk later. Now it was necessary to somehow solve the problem with his opponents. He had clearly entered their territory. He had no choice but to say that he came here to find out whether it is true that the local hoopoo is the most delicious in the city. The men, after listening to all this nonsense, explained to him that he should know that this is their office, which means this is their territory, and he has no right enter their territory without their permission. He continued to make excuses that he was not in their office eating a hoopoo then the man told him why he hatched on him. He continued to say that he should know that while he was away, their office had already been ruined when the man said these words. There was some kind of pride in his voice. He wanted to humiliate this toothless. Without a tooth, he didn't want to listen to the end of what this man was telling him. He sent the contents of his plate in his face. A second later, toothless was already standing with a bottle in his hand, ready to defend himself because he had three opponents. He had just started this showdown by throwing a plate of food in the face of one of them. Why did he raise the bottle over this man's head? He understood that if he didn't attack first now, they would trample him in an instant. Toothless was not one of the timid, so he was ready to start a fight at any moment. The bottle hit the man on the head, the fragments scattered in different directions. This meant that the massacre was about to begin, so simply no one would let him out of here. Two other men who approached him they stood watching everything that was happening. Of course it all hurt them because it was happening on their territory. But on the other hand, they didn't know how strong he was. Toothless stood and grinned. He felt like a winner to the other two. He said that if they wanted, he could treat them too, treat them at his own expense in the same way. A plate of food in the face and a bottle of soju on the head. Someone's foot trampled the glass from a bottle that was broken. Another young man just approached these three. Most likely it was someone from Cho Taman's group. These two stood and looked at the toothless warrior showing with all their appearance that he was an unexpected guest in this restaurant and that he urgently needed to leave this restaurant. The man who was being warmed with a bottle woke up, grabbed his sore head and began to moan loudly. He was completely defenseless and needed medical help. The toothless warrior did not agree that they wanted him so quickly. Escort him from this establishment. He had not yet fully learned all the information from the waiter. This was his only chance to find out everything about this man. Therefore, the warrior decided to deal not only with the one who was passed out, but with the other two. He quickly got his bearings and delivered several very strong blows, 
scattering these two in different directions of the restaurant. Everything that happened here was video by Cho Taemun. He couldn't understand how in a restaurant where his people were, a stranger could come and beat them up. He himself was ready to throw this stranger out of his establishment. It took him a few minutes to assess the situation in the establishment. He didn't know why this man came to this restaurant, but he understood that this man was Park Guanho, and he didn't come here with good intentions at all. Therefore, he decided to act proactively, and while the Toothless was busy with completely different people, he decided to strike him so that he could switch off and be neutralized. But this Toothless man was quite experienced. He had been in the army for a long time and had good training, so he quickly reacted and prevented the blow of the young man in a brown suit. He hit him on the chin with all his might, so the young man staggered on his feet. I flew to the side and fell. Two others picked him up and began to take him outside so that he could come to his senses. Toothless, he remained sitting at the table and continued eating, because he came here precisely to eat and find out some information. Teeth called the waiter over and said that he was now listening carefully. What he started talking about earlier and was interrupted. The waiter obediently agreed to answer all his questions because he had already received his money. The waiter said that the buses stopped running then and this guy decided to slowly walk. But due to the fact that he couldn't get on the bus and also managed to get very drunk, he got lost along the night streets somewhere to lie down to sleep. Most likely this is how it was. Maybe the next day when he woke up he got on the bus and left. Then it turns out he left this city a long time ago. Toothless thought that he was already tired of this work and he wants peace of mind why does he need to look for someone every time. After thinking a little, the waiter said that most likely he didn't leave this city the next morning. He was most likely still here, toothless. He didn't understand why you were so confident there, waiter. In recent days, the city's homeless assistance center has been catching not only homeless people on the streets, but also drunkards who wander the streets at night. So most likely he picked up a car for you from the homeless assistance center. There were rumors that even an ordinary person can be caught and brought there if he walks the streets at night, toothless thought. And this was one of the versions of where this guy he is looking for could be. Toothless thought that he should go to this social center and see for himself whether he was there or not. He had no other choice. The canteen of the social institution. As always, breakfast. Each prisoner was given a choice of food, of course. Everything they gave out was very small in size and practically inedible. Du Zhangong also received his delivery of food and sat at the table trying to eat this unbearably tasteless food. The only thing he understood was that he needed to eat at least something so as not to be so hungry. He was the commander of the third group and he had very great authority. So everyone looked very closely and repeated everything he did after him. If he ate, then barely everyone else. The guy who helped him from the very beginning asked Du Zhangong what was the matter and why he was worried about something. The young man replied that he was really worried that his injured hands would not heal properly if he continued to eat only this food. The little fat man who considered himself the president, having heard this conversation, said that he was ready to bring the young man medicine that would help him achieve speedy healing of his hands. Be du Zhangong couldn't believe his ears. It's true that there is a medicine here in this establishment that could help his hands and thank the man sitting next to him who considered himself the president. The guy whispered in the ear of the young man so that he would refuse him because everyone understands that this old man is constantly talking some kind of nonsense. Most likely, he has now come up with something about the medicine. The dining room door opened and someone loudly said hello. The young man turned his head towards the doors. He wanted to see who came to them for breakfast today. Two vice presidents came into the dining room. As always, the older brother was the first behind his back. The younger brother was always the thug. They very often went into the dining room and looked at the prisoners. Today we came here to look at Du Zhanglong. The vice president wanted to see if his plan worked and the fact that he appointed this young man as group commander. Did he change his views or remain the same? Passing by the table where Du Zhanglong was sitting, the vice president looked at his side and said by chance this is not our new commander of the third platoon. He did it on purpose. Du Zhanglong stood up and greeted the two vice presidents today he tried to be with them as politely as possible. This was his plan the vice president asked what he today most likely came to the cafeteria for the first time. And he added how the food tasted to him. He remembered what happened at their first meeting when the young man was dissatisfied with the food they feed the prisoners. Du Zhanglong, before answering, decided to think carefully. 
because then it all didn't end very well and he received a crack from the former platoon commander. He stood and looked at the vice president. Of course she wanted to tell him the truth that the food was unbearable, but the only thing holding him back was that he needed to get out of here somehow, and for this it was necessary for his hands to heal. He persuaded himself that please don't say stupid things out loud like he did, then he needs to be patient a little and all this will end soon. He took a deep breath and in one breath, as he exhaled, said that thanks to them, he had the opportunity to eat such very tasty food. Today the vice president was very happy. This young man said exactly what he wanted to hear, so he praised him and said that this is how he should respond in the future. All the other prisoners stood and waited for them to be allowed to sit down. They wouldn't be able to finish their not very tasty food. They had no other choice. They lived according to the rules that this vice president came up with. The guy who helped do Zhang Long said that he was great, that he said everything correctly and did not create a new conflict. They needed to hold out for a while. The president was also pleased and, leaving the dining room, told his brother that people tend to change depending on circumstances. Everyone adapts to them, whether they want it or not. The bruiser vice president looked at his brother and thought, is he really right? And this newcomer gave up so easily. He thought it was very strange. The fat man who considered himself the president continued to pester Du Zhanglong. He asked him if he really wanted to find the medicine he needed. Of course the guy answered. But it's worth it first. Eat food, your superiority. Because before taking medicine you always need to eat well. The bully vice president seemed very stupid. But now the behavior of the young man made him think. For some reason he did not believe that he could change. Although his elder brother was pleased with everything, he continued to say that even such a person as Du Zhanglong would become a puppet in his hands. He would be completely sure of this. It was starting to get dark outside and there were practically no prisoners walking in the courtyard of the social institution. They had all already done their work and therefore were in their barracks. His Excellency Du Zhanglong and the guy went into the depths of the yard, the man walked up to the wall and began to pick something in the ground. He was digging up the ground. Obviously, he wanted to find something there. The guy couldn't stand it and asked His Excellency about what he said, that he could give him the medicine he needed. He was just digging the ground. The guy was wondering if he even had it. Du Zhanglong replied that he would finish it only because he still had nothing to do in the remaining time after lunch. So he decided to amuse himself in this way. When in the army... When they had free time from training, the members of his squad suffered from all sorts of nonsense and did not spend their free time. He believed that such seemingly stupid moments helped them remember that they, too, were ordinary people and they had the same emotions as all other people. They should also laugh and rejoice. This is especially necessary to do in order to survive in such terrible places. Social Center for Homeless Assistance If now you live only according to the rules and do not receive any other emotions, then you can easily go crazy. His Majesty shouted what did he find. Du Zhanglong and the guy were a little surprised. Was he hiding some kind of medicine there from everyone else? The fat man said that this was the very medicine he was talking about, and extended both hands to Du Zhanglong. What was lying on his hands shocked the young people. Du Zhanglong looked at his palms and couldn't imagine how this could be a medicine, and why he offered it to him. His eminence continued to say that these were just born rat cubs. They were very small and several of them fit in his palms. The fat little man told the young man that this could really help, that the mother who gave birth to them is of course a rather dirty creature. But it doesn't really matter because newborn babies, unlike her, their clean flesh bones are now soft, so they can be easily survived. The young man didn't understand. He was now offered to eat these newborn rats whole. Most likely it was not very tasty. But on the other hand, they were still living beings and how could they be eaten? The man continued to check so that the young man thought he now needs calcium and protein so that his hands begin to recover faster. Therefore, he has no other choice with food from the canteen. He will not get it. The guy grabbed his head and began to say to His Excellency that he had gone too far and that they were leaving. His Excellency learned this while in Vietnam or maybe in the correctional camp in Samchon. Of course he could have learned this while wandering the streets. Lost his mind. No one could say that. The guy suggested several times to the young man to finish this circus and leave here. But for some reason he remained and was very thoughtful. After several minutes of silence he said that it was true. The guy was happy. 
He thought that he also thought that His Excellency had crossed the line, and he already agreed. But it turned out that he agreed that he really needs the nutrients that these newborns have. He needs them to restore his hands. The guy was shocked. The young man took one of these newborn rats in his hand. He still didn't fully understand, but he was ready to do anything for his hands to recover and even for what His Excellency was now offering him. The young man began to put these newborn rats into his mouth one by one. He quickly chewed them and then swallowed everything. What was happening now resembled some kind of thriller. At such moments, the young man turned off his consciousness. He only wanted to survive because he had a goal for his life. He repeatedly presented a situation between life and death. Now he had one of such situations. One, the guy stood covering his mouth with two palms. He couldn't look at it because this sight caused a gag reflex in his eyes. The young man had just eaten a living creature. To support life in such a terrible place, you should never forget that each of them is an ordinary person and he has the right to life. But in order to get out of that terrible place like this you need to become even worse than you really are. For the security guard it was the most ordinary job. They came here every morning and left in the evening. They worked in shifts, each other every day. For this they received a fairly large salary. Now there was a shift change and one of the guards was about to go home. His comrades asked if he was leaving work because they were on duty today and stayed overnight. One of those who remained shouted towards the leaving guard that he had nowhere to rush. He didn't need to run to the store for groceries because he didn't have a wife, and no one was waiting for him at home. Then why was he in such a hurry? He could have stayed with them. Even though he didn't have a wife, he most likely wanted to go home quickly, quickly got dressed and told everyone before he slammed the door and left. Even though he didn't have a wife, no one was waiting for him at home. But there was something that he lived to see more strongly than his wife's face and something that made him quickly run away from work. He never rode home straight away because he ran into a place where he played cards every day. It seemed to him that this was a very good activity, the only way he could calm down and get distracted. Every time in this establishment, he lost all his money, of course. Sometimes they allowed him to win a small amount, but then he lost back. He was not the strongest player. Well, playing cards got him very involved. After the cards were dealt, he counted he had nine points. Maybe today he will finally get lucky when he came here. Most likely it happened that way. When he saw these cards, he thought that he would finally hit some jackpot today and already mentally began to celebrate his victory. But it turned out as always. In the end he lost everything. So he thought that next time he should definitely be lucky. He even decided to take out a gaming loan so that he would have the opportunity to play again. The gaming credit is issued to players in gaming houses. It is illegal because it is given by private individuals. Every time he lost, he said that it was okay and that next time he would definitely win back. And today, when he took out a gaming loan, he decided that he would definitely win back. He sat and watched carefully when each of the players opened his cards. The fat man with long hair opened his cards first. He had five points. It was very good because he had a lot more points and it was a chance for him to win. The bald man who was sitting at this gaming table had seven points, and he said it out loud when he opened his cards. This was very good because the guard believed that today luck was on his side and he was already counting his winnings. Therefore, I boldly put my two cards on the table. I announced that he had nine points. He did it with the air of a winner, so he wanted to prove to everyone that he was lucky. Well, there was a fourth player left who said how funny it would be. But he thought that luck had passed the guard around again and began to lay out his cards. This player continued to say that he was lucky today because he had a jackpot. The game was over and the winner had to take his winnings. The security guard was scared that he had just lost not his money, but the money he had borrowed on credit. And now he would have to deal with these people. Of course, he stood and shouted that no, it couldn't be that way, that it was all a setup but no one wanted to listen to him because they knew that he never wins. Someone's hand lay on his shoulder. Most likely these were the people who had just given him a gaming loan before the game. They came to deal with him. And so it happened that there was a huge fat man standing behind him who said that the man had just lost the money he borrowed from the gambling house. The security guard did not know what to answer and simply made some strange sounds. This huge fat man said that in that case, could the man come with him so that they could talk about ways to pay off his debt. Some time later, this security guard was sitting in some basement, 
tied to a chair without clothes, all beaten. Clearly they tortured him. Most likely they wanted to get their money from him. But he didn't have any. The guard's whole face was knocked off. Well, with all this, he sat and thought only about one thing. Why did everything happen like this? Why did he lose? It seemed to him that today he should win. The door in this room creaked, which means those who just tortured him must return here. He sat and trembled with fear. He did not know where to get the money to pay them off for this loan. Standing at the door was a toothless man who worked for Park Guanho. He said that you shouldn't blame yourself for losing because starting to gamble was the main mistake of the security guard. The guard didn't understand who this man was, so he asked him. But obviously he wasn't going to beat him or torture him. Someone like him would have killed him right away. Toothless replied that he didn't need to know who he was. He lit a cigarette. He asked who really works here at the homeless assistance center in the city. The guard asked how they found out about this. Toothless replied that he would ask questions here. He just needed to make sure that if there was one person in this social institution whom he was looking for. The security guard said that he doesn't quite understand what they want from him because the organization's information is very confidential and sharing information with third parties is prohibited. Toothless replied that he knows this. That's why he came such a long way here to find out about it through him. The security guard didn't know how to feel about this now. He wasn't in the best situation. He had a big debt to the organization of this establishment. Toothless said that he had repaid the gaming loan he took out, and now he must return the full amount of the debt. The turn upset the guard even more. He now did not understand at all to whom he owed what. Well, if you listen carefully, said the Toothless One, then he will be able to relieve him of the debt hanging on him, and he will no longer have to pay the money. This was the first good news today for the guard. When he heard this he decided that all the conditions of this man. Toothless came closer and asked again at the city's homeless assistance center a man named Du Zhanglong. He could easily be distinguished in the crowd thanks to his two broken arms. The guard understood perfectly well who we were talking about. This was the very newbie who, within a few days of his arrival at the social institution, was able to start several fights. The security guard, without thinking twice, said that yes there is such a thing, he really is in a social institution. The security guard wanted to get rid of his gambling debt as quickly as possible, so he was ready to provide any information. Toothless, on the contrary, was glad. He finally found the offender of his master, so without thinking twice, he asked the guard if he could bring him to him. There are some things that need to be resolved with him personally. And to himself, Toothless thought that he needed to meet with Du Zhanglong alone in order to just kill him. He should do this only because he offended his master. The security guard began to explain that he would not be able to help him with this. Even though he is an employee of the center, they are strictly forbidden to take people out of there. Doing this in secret will also not work because there is increased surveillance there. In toothless thought, he stood there for a few minutes. Then he decided that if they couldn't take him out of the center, then he could do it a little differently. Then he decided that he needed to get inside the homeless assistance center. The guard did not quite understand what the man standing opposite him wanted to explain to him, that he was only saying that because he knew absolutely nothing about this homeless assistance center. This place was much worse than a prison, and it is unbearable to be there, and once you go there it will be impossible to get back out. Toothless asked the guard if he could help him or not. The guard tried to explain to him that it would be quite difficult to do this due to the high level of security. After thinking for a few minutes, the guard said that there is one working way. This is the only way. How can you get into the territory of this social institution? He explained that at night he often patrols the area. Driving around the bottomless city help center in his car. If suddenly he sees homeless people and drunks on the street, he immediately picks them up and takes them to the bottomless city help center. The guard continued if Toothless goes outside at the time he appoints and pretends to be drunk who can get inside the city's homeless assistance center without any problems. It was a pretty good plan. That's exactly what they did. The only question that the guard was now interested in was whether his debt would be cancelled if he helped, because he also exposed himself to a certain risk and would be left without work. As agreed during patrol, they picked up an allegedly drunk toothless man on the street and brought him to a social institution, while everything went according to plan. The guard brought out special clothes worn by all prisoners in this social institution and told the toothless one to change into them. In fact, 
He had already fulfilled everything he promised to this man. After he changed clothes, the guard led him to that building. Where the third group was located, there should have been Du Zhanglong, whom the Toothless was looking for. When they walked that he would personally write a document to the guard about repaying the debt, and that he had no claims against him. When they approached the premises where the third platoon was located, the guard opened the doors and shouted loudly for the third platoon to accept the newcomer. Toothless was ready to write this receipt only after he met with Du Zhanglong. The prisoners stood looking at the entrance doors and Sanjo said well, here's another guy who looks so strong. Indeed, a strong man stood in the doorway. In appearance, he did not at all resemble an alcoholic and a drunkard. From his stance it was clear that he was a former military man. Entering the barracks, the toothless man thought that he had almost achieved his goal. The silence that lasted several minutes was interrupted by the words of a young man who was already the commander of the third platoon. He introduced himself and said that he hoped that he could get along with him. Madly heard this name Du Zhanglong. It means he got where he wanted. The person he had been looking for for the last few days to kill was standing in front of him. Broken arms were another proof and confirmation that this was exactly the person he was looking for. He was very close to achieving his goal. Without teeth, he came closer to the young man, lowered his head, said that his name was Choi San Cole and asked that the commander address him informally. The young man did not understand, maybe, after all, they had just met and he could not afford such treatment. Toothless said of course he understands everything and they don't force him to immediately switch to informal speech with him, but he's so used to it. And he continued that he should at least show respect to the person who has the honorary bandage. He should bow to him with all his heart. All these words made the young man laugh very much. He had never spoken to anyone like that before. This new guy was obviously very cunning. But the young man asked Lee Sunjo to take the new guy to a free bed and show him where they had it. The guy agreed and quickly began to carry out the task assigned to him. The guy told the new guy to follow him. He was very curious and wanted to learn as much as possible about the new guy. So he started asking him questions. The guy noticed that the new guy was adapting quite quickly to being here. And this only meant one thing, that he would be able to quickly adapt to such a life. Toothless said it wasn't that he had adapted. He knew roughly what kind of life awaited him within the walls of such an establishment. So the guy continued to say that in this case it would not be difficult for him to be within the walls of this social institution, and if he had any questions, he could contact him. The toothless man's face changed. He became more aggressive. He turned his head towards the guy and asked him that he was wearing a bandage. It was a completely incomprehensible question. The guy didn't quite understand why they asked him about it so aggressively. He answered that no, he doesn't wear a bandage. Then the toothless one told him if not, and you're not wearing a bandage then why the hell do you keep poking me? The guy got very scared and asked the newcomer for forgiveness. And Sancho let him down with a bunk bed. He showed that this would be his place now. He could make himself more comfortable. The toothless one replied that it was better this way. Teeth lay down on the bed that was supposed to be his for a while. His thoughts were all about Du Zhanglong. On the one hand he had already found him and it was good, but on the other hand he still didn't have a plan on how to deal with him. Another thing the toothless saw was that on the bandage that was on the young man's hand there were keys with a pin. He didn't understand what kind of keys they were, and why exactly he was wearing them. The young man sat and thought about everything. What happened? That some newcomer had just appeared in their barracks, who was very cunning and did not look like an alcoholic at all. While he was thinking, he heard someone sniffling from behind. It was Isanjo. Du Zhanglong turned in his direction and asked what kind of tears flowed from him. Did he burst into tears? The guy felt a little ashamed and he said that not at all. He just yawned and because of this the tears flowed from him. He wants to sleep a lot. It was all some kind of nonsense. How could they catch this man and bring him here? Maybe he set it all up on purpose and somehow got the armband of a platoon commander. How did he manage to do it all? These thoughts haunted the toothless one. He reassured him that it didn't bother him much his task now is to play the role of an obedient little dog. And as soon as the opportunity presents itself, he will immediately finish him off. And his assistant has made such a plan for himself. Toothless. Toothless was lying on the bed and sleeping. He easily adapted to these conditions. He had already come up with a plan according to which he would act. Someone shouted getting up. He opened his eyes immediately. He didn't understand what was happening. 
At some point he passed out and completely forgot where he was. He didn't get up early lately, but he had no choice and he came here of his own free will in order to complete the task of avenging his master. For him it was a matter of honor. He always caught the thought that he was definitely in this social institution. For a second it seemed to him that he was in the army again. Here there were exactly the same rules as there. A guy named Yi Sungjo became Du Zhanggong's assistant. So every morning he shouted get up and then he shouted that the third platoon had a morning roll call. Everyone stand in two lines. So did the assistants of the previous platoon commander. Everyone had to stand in a line so that they could see and they could count how many there were in this group in the morning. This was one of the tasks that the platoon commander had to perform. Toothless stood at the very end so he thought that this was not very good and he would not be able to get to his opponent so quickly if he was always at the end far from him. Of course, it's very difficult to get closer to him, thought the toothless ones. Well, he convinced himself that he would live in this social institution for a couple of days and choose the right moment when he could accurately carry out his plan. He clenched his fangs tightly because as soon as this moment comes immediately, he will not miss it and Du Zhang'ong will be destroyed. Life in this social institution was not as cloudless as it seemed to the toothless man at first glance. There were other circumstances that began to depress him after counting. Every morning all the prisoners went to the dining room for breakfast. Today was no exception. When Toothless came to the dining room and took his delivery of food, he was in shock. What was on this delivery could not be called food at all. He did not understand how they could give this to people. This is even worse than the army, he thought. Everything that was on sale, besides the fact that it was not very beautiful in appearance and not appetizing, it was actually tasteless. When the toothless one tried it, he realized that he definitely couldn't eat it, but he needed to hold out here until he took revenge. Therefore, he had to pretend that he was eating it. He sat and achieved this food and thought to himself that it was all because of this bastard. Du Zhangong for himself he decided that it was the young man who was to blame for everything. Toothless looked to the side where Du Zhanglong was sitting eating with his assistant. He couldn't come closer to him, and there were a lot of people here. So he was just looking for a suitable place to take revenge on him. Before Zhanglong, he didn't like this food. Every spoon he brought to his mouth was some kind of test. But he pretended that he was eating because he also had reasons to stay here for a while. Toothless watched as the young man choked on this food and realized that he, too, had not yet gotten used to it and could not eat it either. After each breakfast, the working day began. Today, according to the schedule, all prisoners had to carry stones from the rock and put them together in one. It was hard work. The group was divided into some who put stones into the bag, second who loaded the stones onto their backs, and third who carried them. Everyone was busy in this cycle of work. Since Toothless was not exactly one of the skinny ones, they gave him a sledgehammer and set him up to break stones before putting them in a bag. He didn't understand how a social institution forced him to do such hard physical labor. One of the prisoners explained to him that they usually do this work in turns because it itself is heavy. So he will not work with a sledgehammer all the time, and he will also have to carry bags. Also, this prisoner explained to him that he ended up in this institution exactly during the shift when their group was engaged in this hard work. He took the sledgehammer in his hands and realized that now he would have to swing it all day in order to show that he was like everyone else and was ready to work on a common basis. Toothless asked the prisoner what he did before he got to the social center. He became interested in what kind of people were here next to him. The prisoner replied that he was the president until the moment he got here. It was the same little plump man to whom everyone addressed his eminence. Toothless didn't understand what this meant. The man was chopping stones and he explained that he was the president of this country. He spoke in such a way that he was completely sure that it was true. Toothless laughed. He didn't understand what he was doing with this crazy crowd. Maybe everyone else here is just as crazy as he is. And again he began to blame Du Zhanglong because it was because of him that he was here. Not only was the food here terrible, but they also forced him to work and it was physical labor. He looked towards Du Zhanglong and thought that he had put a bandage on himself and was standing there throwing his hat around, as if his arms were broken. Well, everything was completely wrong. The young man worked exactly the same as everyone else. The only thing was that he didn't do anything with his hands. Before Zhanglong, like all the other prisoners, he did this hard work. Of course, 
He could not work with a sledgehammer, but he could carry bags of stones. He took three bags behind his back and very quickly lifted them up to where they piled these stones quickly. None of the prisoners worked. Toothless, when he saw how Du Zhanglong works, he was very surprised because he was very fast and he had a large number of stones on his back. This was already serious. Who called himself president addressed the newcomer why doesn't he work in this social institution? It was not customary for someone to shift their work to other similar prisoners. The newcomer hit the die shaft on a brick and told his partner that he, too, had started working. His plans, of course, did not include such activities. The newcomer began to swing a sledgehammer to break stones. He, of course, had enough physical strength and was well prepared, so it worked out. He did well. He worked quickly. He gave me one gift after another, and the stones fell apart under his sledgehammer. He wanted only one thing. This day would end quickly. When he made the next blow, the stone under his sledgehammer crumbled so that one piece very much resembled a dagger. It only needed to be finished a little. Toothless decided that this could be his weapon together. Night had already fallen and all the prisoners had to be in their barracks where they lived approximately like this, and every day passed for them in this social institution. Toothless of such a working day understood what menial work is. He has never seen that here they force you to do very hard work and do not pay money for it. Today the third group ended with stones. A guard came to escort them to the barracks. Being here every day was similar to the previous one and vice versa. His eminence was very pleased because this hard day was over. It was just great because he was no longer a young man and every time I do such hard work, he was very tired. Everyone began to return to the barracks. The guard approached the newcomer and took him aside. They did not show that they knew each other. After hard work in the quarry, the prisoners came to their barracks and put it in order. They shook off the dirt from their clothes and then swept the room, as they did every day. The guy asked His Excellency where did the newcomer go because he worked with him, to which the man replied that he didn't know and the guard took him somewhere. Most likely he is leaning somewhere outside. The guy thought it was generally impossible to do this, but he was a newbie and did not know all the rules of this institution. In fact, Toothless did not bend over the territory. He had a goal when he cut stones. He found a piece similar to a dagger, so he now decided to sharpen it even more. To do this, he hid in a very secluded place where no one was supposed to find him and began to sharpen the stone. He wanted it all to end as soon as possible because he couldn't stand another day in this garbage dump. When he had already sharpened the stone, it almost looked like a sharp dagger. He decided for himself that he needed to finish this before Chan Gong tonight. This was the barracks of the third group. Outside its doors there was complete silence, which meant only one thing. All the prisoners were quietly sleeping. After such hard work, Every prisoner wanted to rest. Therefore, he did not have the strength. They lay down in their places and fell asleep until the morning. The only one who did not sleep last night but lay quietly. He was a newbie. He had a plan in his head that he wanted to carry out tonight. When it was already deep at night, from under his jacket he took out that same sharpened stone that resembled a dagger. There were only a few minutes left to accomplish what he had in mind. In the direction of the commander of the third platoon, it was precisely this bandage that he was guided by because everyone had the same suits and it was possible to confuse. Before Zhang Long slept in his place, of course he didn't know who this newcomer was and most likely didn't even know after such a hard day he slept well. When he was sleeping, the young man had wonderful dreams. Today, most likely, like yesterday, he could have dreamed about food, he didn't have enough. Today he dreamed of a huge piece of meat being fried on a barbecue. It was so big and looked so appetizing that even in his dreams he could smell it, the smell of delicious food. He imagined in a dream that he was sitting with his beautiful Sona and they were having dinner. He told her that when one side looks fried, then you can turn this piece of meat to the other side. He looked at her and told her that in this way both sides would be well fried. The girl listened to him very carefully. She also liked it all, this dinner and the way he told her. As soon as the meat is fried enough so that it can be cut, then it must be removed and cut into pieces convenient for eating. He not only told her all this, but also showed her. After everything, he said that only now you can eat meat. Now it's really very tasty and well cooked. The girl sat opposite him and did as he said. She really liked listening to him. It seemed that they understood each other even without words. She put a lettuce leaf on her palm, 
a few pieces of meat, the sauce. Everything was exactly as he said. All that was left was to twist it all. That's what she did and gave him a try. He didn't even expect that she would be so attentive and treat him so well. He was in love with her. Du Zhanglong could not afford such luxury and therefore told the girl to eat first. Despite the fact that he did not have enough upbringing, he knew how to behave with girls. She said that this piece could not fit into her mouth because she made it especially for him. Of course she wanted to cheat a little in order to woo him. The young man decided that then he would not refuse and took a bite. It was incredibly delicious, and it was also delicious because Sona made it. He wanted to take another bite, but he couldn't even do it in his sleep. He felt some incomprehensible situation. Someone was trying to interrupt his dream. He sharply opened his eyes as a former military man. He always knew when someone was approaching him. This had already been practiced for years. Now it was the same situation. Your eyes were completely open and in the darkness he saw that someone was trying to swing his hand and lay motionless in order to understand that he was not dreaming. And when he looked closer in the darkness, he saw that there was really a newcomer standing over him, and in his hands he was holding something resembling a dagger. Only he could not understand why this man was trying to kill him in his sleep. It was deep night on the street. In some places in the city the lights were on. Everything was closed everywhere and there was not a single person walking along the streets of the city. Sona sharply opened her eyes. I had a wonderful dream. She was still lying there for several minutes and didn't understand whether it was real or a dream. She got up and turned on the light no. It was definitely a dream in her room everything was as usual. Well, this dream was so realistic that she wanted it to be real. When morning came, her usual day began. She walked to the bus stop and waited for her bus to go to work. When she was riding on the bus, she looked around, all this she saw every day, so today she thought only about one thing about the dream she had. It was very realistic. It, she couldn't understand why she saw Du Zhanglong in this form in her dream. She even began to worry a little about him because he never showed up, although he promised. She got off the bus. I kept thinking only about the young man. Does she really hate him that much? Or maybe on the contrary, she is very worried about him? She couldn't answer these questions for herself. Today she took a slightly different route from the bus to her work. She wanted to pass by the very construction site where Du Zhanglong worked. She hoped to see him. When she approached this very construction site, she saw that he was not there. This upset her a little. She did not understand how to feel about it all. When he stopped showing up at the bank for a week, the girl went to his work and tried to find out what happened to him. The security guard asked who she was looking for. He was very angry and did not let anyone into the construction site, so it was impossible to see anyone. Then she decided to ask him if Du Zhanglong would happen to work here as a security guard. Answered this guy quit a week ago, something happened to him. And he asked again, he had some problems with the bank, they warned him that he didn't need to quit, but that he needed to work harder, then only he might get money. The girl replied that everything was wrong and asked for forgiveness for the trouble. She decided if he decided to quit. Most likely he decided to leave this city and went to his work. But she couldn't forget, she kept thinking, if he wanted to leave, then why did he come to her work that day? And he also said that the next day he would come to her and deposit a large amount of money. He couldn't deceive her. Sona still decided that something had happened to him, and it was very serious. But she didn't know what to do about it, and where to go to look for him. She had only questions in her head and she didn't know how to answer them and didn't know who to ask to help her. She looked at herself in the mirror and thought why she was so slow. Son Sona. The only conclusion she came to was that she didn't hate him, but was just very worried about him. Sona couldn't do this anymore. She couldn't think all the time about the young man and worry about where he was, so she decided to find out where he went. Du Zhangmong was lying on his bed with his eyes open. As a newcomer raised something like a dagger in front of his face, he couldn't hesitate. He had to decide something and very quickly. The dagger was very close to his face. The young man removed his head and the newcomer missed. Until Zhang Long understood perfectly well that he would not stop there. Only he did not understand why he was doing this. And Toothless swung again and wanted to strike. This time the young man decided that he would not give him such an opportunity and would act proactively. He did just that. The next blow was for the young man. Du Zhanglong kicked him in the lower jaw of the newcomers. This threw him aside. 
The young man was still lying on the bed, but he understood that this newcomer would not stop, so he also kicked him several times in order to throw him as far as possible to the side. Toothless shouted that he would kill Du Zhanglong. That's exactly what he wanted to do. He attacked the young man again. No one could stop him. He wanted to kill Du Zhanglong. When he got closer to the bed, the bed was empty. No one was lying on it. Then the newcomer realized that his task was becoming more complicated and that he would now have to make it more difficult, but he was determined. Because of this noise, other prisoners began to wake up, one another asking what had happened there, someone answering that there had been a fight. Everyone was interested in the question of who fought with whom. This time someone answered who slept next to what was new with the platoon commander. One of the prisoners saw that the new guy was holding a knife in his hands. Well, judging by the way he was holding it, it was definitely something sharp. Before Zhang asked the new guy why did he attack him, especially at night when everyone is sleeping, only cowards can do this. The newcomer threw something that resembled a knife from one hand to the other. He wanted to scare the young man in this way. After a few minutes, the toothless man took a combat stance and the platoon commander replied that he came here to kill him. There is no other task before him now. The young man was wondering if they knew each other, but this was the first time he had seen him, so he asked how he could wish him death if they didn't even know each other. Toothless replied that he, too, saw him for the first time only here. However, he saw his master, and his master also saw him, so they were acquainted in absentia. Toothless continued to say that the young man ruined their business while he was away and humiliated his master, so he came here to kill him. The young man immediately understood who he was talking about. It was Park Guangho whom he beat in the restaurant and his guards. Now the young man understood why he behaved this way, but he was not very upset because he was paid good money then. Du Zhanglong told the new guy that it seems his master told me everything, he couldn't understand what he was talking about. Du Zhanglong said that his master probably didn't tell him that he single-handedly killed all his guards and what he could do alone against him. After these words, the newcomer decided to strike the young man so that he would shut up, but he did not understand who he was dealing with. He was very confident in himself. He again attacked the young man with a knife, this time like the last one. Du Zhanglong quickly dodged and the blow missed. How easily a beginner is fooled by his provocations. The young man knew when a person is overexcited, his actions become sweeping and then he begins to wave his arms very widely, and it becomes easy to avoid these blows. And there is time to think about what to do next, which is exactly what the young man did when he fought with this newcomer. There is also time to jump to the other side if you don't want to fully fight Du Zhanglong is very fast and therefore moved very quickly, and it was unbearable to strike him. Toothless hit one after another but always missed the target. He could not concentrate on the movement of the young man. Several blows to Du Zhanglong, and what resembled a knife in the hands of the newcomer was no longer lying around somewhere not far from the place of the fight. Du Zhanglong stood in front of an angry toothless who had already lost this fight but he did not want to accept it. His goal was not achieved. Du Zhanglong had no intention of attacking anyone, he was just watching what would happen next, how his opponent would act next. Toothless thought that this guy couldn't use both hands so it would be easier for him to deal with him. But that was not entirely true. I decided that the young man had no chance because he had two broken arms and would not be able to fully fight and defend himself. Yes, of course he had his hands in plaster, but he decided to teach something to this toothless man who came to kill him at night. The young man said that no matter how toothless a tiger is, he can deal with a puppy with his claws. He doesn't need paws for this. The newcomer did not want to stop. He was thirsty for blood, he could easily be provoked, the young man had just done this, and therefore, after a few seconds, he was ready to pounce on the young man. Screaming, the idiot newcomer strikes with his fist, he thought that he would approach him, and then would not be able to defend himself from his blows and strike back. The young man already said earlier that if a person is very overexcited, then his movements become very wide and therefore it becomes very easy for a professional to fight with him and the more emotions the movements became wider, so such an enemy became easy prey and could be quickly neutralized. When the newcomer was already very close to the young man and waved with his hands, then one but very accurate blow hit his knee straight into the opponent's lower jaw. After the first blow, his opponent was immobilized, 
after which the young man delivered precise blows to the enemy several more times so that he could not resist. Du Zhonglong dealt one blow after another to his opponent. He knew that he didn't need to stop until he gave up, especially since he wanted to kill him. Toothless could barely stand on his feet, but he had not yet given up on such a turn of events. He certainly did not expect, he thought that by coming here he would be able to destroy his master's offender in a short time. The young man kicked one after another so that his opponent did not have time to react and protect himself from the blow, much less could strike a counter blow. One more blow and the toothless one definitely couldn't stand on his feet. It was a very strong blow, and he fell. Toothless lay on the floor and didn't understand how this could happen. There wasn't a single person who could knock him out. How can he be so fast and strong at the same time? He can be like this when I take his hands off. He's incapacitated only now he's toothless. Why did his guys get hurt then in the restaurant and lay in the hospital for so long? The young man forced the new guy to say, It's clear that he won't touch him anymore. Otherwise he'll make him physically especially fall on him. The newcomer barely got up from the ground. His hands were weak and his legs were also weak. He couldn't even continue this massacre. He didn't have the strength and the advantage was on the side of the young man. Toothless lowered his head and said that he would no longer touch the young man. He was humiliated and insulted. He came here to kill him. But it turned out the other way around. Du Zhanglong turned to the rest of the prisoners and asked for forgiveness for the commotion. He told everyone to go to sleep from different parts of the room. It sounded good okay. The others said good night. Du Zhanglong asked the newcomer that this is some kind of nightmare. He was brought here because of some kind of revenge of his master. Of course this is a very great loyalty. Toothless answered to be honest. He didn't know where he was going and that's why the place where he is now is some kind of nightmare. Before Zhanglong, it was also difficult to imagine a few days ago the existence of such a place, and now he is here and they don't know how to get out of here. Toothless said that now he has no reason to stay in this place so he will go and sleep and leave here tomorrow. The young man did not understand the newcomer's words. He said that he would come out. It was interesting to see how he would do it. It's simply impossible. It seems the newcomer still hasn't understood that there is no way out of this place, and he will have to stay here like the young man. The next day everything was as usual. The prisoners woke up and everyone began to clean up their sleeping place. It seemed like nothing happened during the night. After cleaning the rooms where they sleep today, the prisoners had to clean the area near their premises. And Sunjo was always near Du Zhanglong. He did not want to leave him, and of course he himself needed help. The guy looked around and saw that he was a newbie standing and not working near the exit from their barracks. No one here could afford this. If their platoon commander works, then everyone else should work too. The guy went up to the newcomer and asked him, Can't he see that all the prisoners in the group are cleaning the territory? Toothless didn't care at all. He couldn't understand where he ended up. The guy couldn't stand it and shouted to start cleaning here. Absolutely everyone is equal and no one has privileges. Toothless didn't understand how this young man could talk to him. He couldn't afford it. He believed that he was above them all. The guy got scared and hid behind the platoon commander. Du Zhanglong, he understood that this was the only way he would be safe and this toothless man would not be able to touch him. Toothless continued to hope that he would soon leave here. So he was not going to work here anymore. It was beyond his dignity. He believed that all the drunks and homeless people were here. Hearing that he was going to leave, both Sunjo and Du Zhanglong were very surprised. They were interested in only one question. How exactly was he going to do this because no one had ever succeeded in doing this? At this time, a security guard approached them and shouted that they were idle while cleaning and if they didn't start working now, they would be punished. Toothless answered if you are interested in the question of how he will do it, then it is very simple. He will just leave here. The young people could not understand why he was behaving so impudently. Toothless went up to the guard and asked him what he wanted from him and why he was shouting at him. The guard was confused. He didn't know what to answer to Toothless. The newcomer once again told the guard that he had finished all his work here and it was time for him to leave. All this happened in front of other prisoners, so the guard did not know how to react correctly. Du Zangin and Yi Sunjo had questions. Will the guard just take him and let him go? And if so, does that mean they have some kind of agreement? The guard looked and saw that another guard was in the same territory so he could not help but react to such statements from the prisoner. 
The second guard is the one who approached the place where the showdown took place and answered the newcomer that they don't understand what he's talking about, and most likely he's gone crazy. They say such things. Toothless continued to insist that he had nothing more to do here and that they supposedly had an agreement to let him out. This began to stress him out very much, and he even started shouting at the guard that he was not homeless. He had nothing to do here. The guard grabbed him by the chest and began to explain to him that he did not dare talk to him like that. There were other prisoners present, and that he explained to him even before he got here that this is not a simple center for the homeless, that you can't leave here, to which the toothless one said that he didn't care. He wasn't going to be in this shit anymore. The guard didn't understand what he could do. He had his duties here and he had to fulfill them, otherwise he could lose his job. Toothless asked the guard that he seemed to have forgotten about his position. If he did not listen to him, he would not be able to pay his debt. Du Zhanglong and all the other prisoners became very interested in why the guard was talking to this newcomer for so long. They didn't understand what they were doing there. They went out on a date, or something. The guard could not stand it, and began to threaten Toothless with his stick, shout at him, and wave his telescopic stick in front of his face. Everything that happened from the outside looked completely incomprehensible to the newcomer who threatened the guard who stood for a long time listening to him attentively, and at the end the guard who began to wave a stick. Toothless said that it would be good if he didn't boil over and ask the guard what his thoughts were on this matter, because he was completely financially dependent on him. The guard said if he left it here, then the guard's debt would disappear with him because no one else knew about the debt except him. When the guard finished his speech— the toothless one had already decided for himself that this idiot didn't understand who he was contacting. Of course he couldn't restrain himself and struck the guard in the jaw. He flew to the side. Toothless continued to strike blow after blow to the guard because he could not restrain his emotions. He did not understand how a person could not keep his word. He very rarely found himself in such situations. Toothless took his telescopic stick from the guard so that he would stop waving it in his face. On the other side of the gate, he could destroy this guard in a few seconds, and now he was not going to forgive him. The guard was sitting on the ground and holding his place. And where he received the blow, he shouted that the newcomer was crazy and attacked the guard. Toothless didn't hold back, and as soon as the guard started screaming, he delivered a few more blows, but this time with his telescopic stick so that he would understand who he was dealing with. Toothless dealt blow after blow to the guard, he didn't understand how he dared to say such a thing to him, because just yesterday he was drinking completely different songs. Other guards saw this fight. They quickly ran to stop this incident. None of them knew who they would be dealing with now. It seemed to them that they were very much afraid. Toothless saw that another guard was approaching and now he had not one opponent. But already too, he couldn't stop because he didn't want to. Toothless always punished those people who brought him trouble. When the guard ran up very close, he turned around and hit him on the neck with a telescopic stick so that he fell to the side and did not interfere. It was a massacre between the security guard and the newcomer because one did not want to stay here and the second did not want to remain without work and therefore without money. Toothless was in terrible rage. He beat the guard who owed him money only for him to understand that he needed to finish the job and how he put him here in the same way he had to let him out of here. Before Zhang Long and Yi Sungjo watched what was happening, they decided that this newcomer was not a mistake at all and very quickly was able to hold up over the guard then the guy turned to the young man saying that he was an incredible fighter because tonight he was able to defeat this newcomer the young man was embarrassed. The young man thought that after seeing the situation with the guards, he could easily get out of here, even in his condition with broken arms, it became clear to him that they did not pose a particular threat to him. The newcomer stood and beat the guard with a telescopic stick so that he could not move while lying on the ground, while the newcomer said that he was already very tired after the fight last night. To such a state that the guard began to show mercy, he understood that a few more blows and he would have many bruises and fractures because the newcomer beat him with a metal telescopic stick. Someone very quickly approached the place where the events unfolded between the prisoner and the guard. This someone had to stop everything that was happening here in case other prisoners could rebel against the guards and then they could calmly leave the territory. Toothless decided that if the guard did not take him out of this territory, then he would be finished and already wanted to beat him to the end. When Toothless wanted to strike the next blow at the guard and had already swung, 
Then someone's hand intercepted his hand and held him very tightly. Without a tooth, I didn't understand who it could be. He wasn't here for that long, so he didn't know everyone who was in this territory. The thug vice president held his hand. His face was, as always, completely stony and there was not a single emotion on it. He asked the newcomer what he was doing. Toothless didn't understand what kind of guy he was and he was strong enough. He held his hand so he couldn't break free. Toothless didn't know that you were an establishment there. You couldn't behave this way. No one was allowed. So in the next moment, he felt a very strong blow. Toothless thought that someone hit him with a sledgehammer. In fact, he was hit with a fist. The next moment, the toothless man was already lying on the ground. Blood splashes were scattered in all directions. He was absolutely helpless and was no longer so aggressive. No, Du Jamong thought that maybe he could defeat the other guards with broken arms. Well, definitely not this type. He was too strong. It was the younger brother of the thug, the vice president. I think his name was Park Yem. In his hands he was holding the same bat and that a minute ago the toothless one beat the guard. Now everything has changed. The baton was already smashing. The vice president was beating the newcomer just like the one a few minutes ago. Blood was flying in all directions. All the prisoners saw how the newcomer immediately killed two people before their eyes and they could understand that the guards could be dealt with so easily. Therefore, it was necessary to show them something more convincing. So it was necessary to punish the one who staged this whole performance, so that everyone would have the impression that any action can be punished. The prisoners had to be shown what happens when resistance begins to the employees of a social institution. They must listen to them unquestioningly, and do everything they are told, while the thug continued to beat the newcomer with a baton. The thug, the vice president, dealt blow after blow so that the prisoners knew that it was better not to catch his eye and they developed fear and complete submission. Some prisoners asked the vice president to stop and wait because a few more minutes and he could beat this newcomer to death in front of all the prisoners. It was Du Zhangong. It was he who asked for forgiveness and asked the vice president to stop. He said that this newcomer was from his squad and it seems he was a little crazy. That's why he did this and attacked the guard. If he had not intervened and stayed to look at all this, then the vice president would have definitely killed him. This toothless man would not have had a chance to survive. The young man began to ask that they sit him this time and, as the head of the detachment, he would give him the opportunity to work in correctional labor. The words of the young man forced the vice president to be honest. He did not expect that it was he who would stand up for this newcomer just yesterday. Before Zhang Long was very daring and ready to fight with everyone here, he humiliates himself in front of him by asking for another person. The young man also didn't understand what kind of guy this vice president was. He fell for his words so easily and stopped beating him. The vice president thought, Is this Du Zhang Wang really protecting this newcomer? I consider myself to be in charge. He probably wants to punish him as a platoon commander. He really began to act as his older brother said, the vice president thought. This young man decided that power was in his hands and now this position is his world. The vice president brought the bloody stick to the young man's face and told him to punish him properly. Otherwise, if this happens again next time, he will receive the punishment. Du Zhanglong said that he understood. Now all he had to do was make a decision. The vice president left the place where the incident took place at the stadium. Two guards who were beaten by the toothless one and the toothless one were left lying on the ground. Vice president approached the very same guard over whom this whole fight started. He asked what happened. The guard replied that that fellow newcomer suddenly began to demand from the commander of the third detachment that he let him go. The guard continued to talk about how the newcomer was talking to his platoon commander informally, which was completely unacceptable for prisoners in a social institution. The guard made excuses to the vice president. He asked the master to forgive him for this commotion and that he needed to monitor all the prisoners more carefully. The vice president listened to everything that the guard told him. His face was stony as always, and it was impossible to understand what he was thinking and what decision he would make. Du Zhanglong picked up a toothless man from the ground who could barely move. The young man asked him why he was so sure, and he needed this guard to let him go from here. Toothless explained that he had an agreement with that guard and he secretly let him in here. He had to completely follow all his orders because he owed a lot of money. The behavior of the newcomer now became clear to the young man. 
Du Zhanglong explained to the Toothless One that he needed to be more careful because of what he had done. The authorities might begin to suspect that there was something between that guard and the Toothless One still didn't understand. He said that he didn't care. This guard shouldn't be seen. In any case, the security guard will begin to justify himself to the vice president and other superiors, and will shift all the blame onto toothless everyone. Those who work in security are far from decent people. And so it happened. The guard began to slander the newcomer in order to shield himself. He understood perfectly well that if this person stayed here, his debt would be repaid and no one would know about him. It was the same day as always. After breakfast all the prisoners went to work where they collected small parts for sprayers. Du Zhanglong seated the toothless man next to him. He asked him that he really only entered here because the guard had a duty to him. Wouldn't it be better to call Du Zhanglong from here? Toothless replied that that guard said that it was absolutely impossible. The only way he could get to him was to get here. The young man told the toothless man that he was very assertive and very stupid here. That he came here with his own feet. The toothless man replied that he did not know what place he would end up in when he walked. Toothless asked the young man what he was going to do here. He didn't understand what he was talking about then Toothless explained is he really going to stay here? The young man said that he would only get out of here when his hands had healed. The toothless man asked when that would be. The young man replied that the doctor who put the plaster on him told him to walk in it for a month this is the period during which his costia should heal. And turning to Isunjo asked since he got here. Half a month has already passed. The guy confirmed that he has been here for exactly half a month. Then the young man concluded that he still had half a month left, and after that he would get out of here. Toothless asked him how he could do this. Du Zhanglong replied that he didn't know yet, but by any means. Toothless realized that the young man also doesn't have any plan and they both don't know how to get out of here. Then Du Zhanglong asked Toothless what doesn't anyone outside know that he's here. He replied that he told everything to his master Park Guanho, and he knows where he is now and therefore can come for him. Park Guanho was very nervous because there was no news from the Toothless One. He didn't understand where he could go. And it never happened that he didn't report when something happened. The fat thug, Park Guangho's assistant, suggested that he might have suffered from Du Shengen, to which the gentleman replied that in any case, he needed to contact them. Whether it was him or not, it didn't matter at all. Park Guanho ordered the thug to gather the guys because he needed to go somewhere. He obediently agreed. He was only interested in one question. Where will they go now for a showdown? Park Guangho remembered that his toothless comrade would go to catch this Duchang Gong Center for the social welfare of the homeless of this city after he went there there was no news from him. So he decided that they should go there and find their comrade. Park Guanho got into his car and his guys drove after him. They had to find where this social center is. And most importantly, they had to pick up their toothless comrade. Park Guangho's driver was a fat thug. He was always nearby. This was necessary so that no one could come close to Mr. They drove through the whole city because they didn't find out that this social center was located somewhere on the outskirts in the forest. They still didn't understand where they were going. They drove up to the high metal gate at the top with the inscription Descent Social Center. That's where they were, and how many days ago their comrade went, and after that there was no news of him. Park Guangho's guys who came with him were allowed to go out with a minibus. Each of them had, if not a stick, then a bat. Looking at this area, one of the nicknames said what kind of hole they found. To build such a center, the faucet approached the iron gate from the inside of this establishment. He asked the armed guys what they were doing here. Usually no one came from outsiders. The guard was a little scared because the number of people was confusing. They were all armed or with batons and were clearly not in a good-natured mood. These guys stood and hit the gate with their batons and shouted at him to shut up and quickly open the gate. The guard was scared. Two more guards ran up to Europe, screaming. They asked what was happening. Who were these people and why was he sitting on the ground? One of the guards approached the gate. What kind of bastards are the arbitrariness here? These words greatly offended Park Guanho. No one has ever called him that, much less a man who had no power. Park Guangho asked the guard what he called him, the little bastard, and I pushed my guys aside and began to make my way to the iron gate. He was very angry. No one had ever called him or insulted him like that recently. He asked this guard several times. Did he really think he was so disgusting? 
This guard realized that he said something wrong and the people on the other side were not entirely simple. He began to make excuses, said that he did not mean it, and asked to name the reason for their visit. Park Guanho said that his younger brother is in this center, and he came to pick him up from here. The guards asked him if his younger brother is here, to which he replied yes. This is where his younger brother is and he demands that they bring him very quickly here. Other guards began to arrive at the gate where Park Guangho was located with his armed guys. The situation might not have developed quite as they wanted. The security guard who owed money to Toothless also saw this kaipish near the gate. He thought that it was there and saw the guys with Toothless gang. Then he realized that they had come for him. The vice president came out to hear this cry. He asked the guard what was happening there near the gate. What was the reason for these screams? The guard, stuttering a little, began to answer the vice president that there were some guys there. They were armed and they were coming for someone. He didn't know exactly who the vice president was after. The vice president thought that he should go to these guys in order to clarify the situation. The guard realized that his affairs were bad and now it could be revealed that he illegally brought one of the bandits here and that he owes him money. The security guard realized that if the deputy director found out what he had done, he would be finished, and he decided to run away. He didn't have a clear plan, but he knew for sure that he needed the institution to be as far away as possible now. Vice President approached the iron gate and asked the armed guys on the other side of the gate what was going on here. As always, he was very polite and said everything with a smile. Park Guanho said that it is very good that he is the most important person here. I am addressing the vice president. First, let him open the gate, and then he will talk to him. The vice president replied that but this is impossible. Persons not related to the center are prohibited from entering the territory. Park Wangho shouted why doesn't he have a relationship with the accent because his younger brother is in this territory, which means he has the opportunity to enter the territory. The vice president understood that he was not really talking to an ordinary person, but to a bandit so he asked again whether his younger brother was really in the territory of the center. The gentleman replied that he had become like a family member to him. The vice president thought that he did not need a folding center in front of the gates and needed to quickly make some decision, because if they scream so loudly, the prisoners will hear this scream and everyone can come here, then the guards will not be able to deal with them all. Park Guanho decided to sit down in front of the gate because he had recently been in the hospital. He was still weak so he couldn't stand on his feet for long. The vice president did not understand what these people were doing. They literally began to besiege the gates of his center. This could not continue for so long. Something had to be thought of. Park Guanho told his guys to open the gate if they don't want to stand in front of it forever. His bandits went to carry out the master's order. Park Guanho told the vice president that they would not leave here until they took their man from this center. This was their condition. The vice president told them to wait then, he would go inside and check if they had the person they were looking for. Park Guanho shouted back to the vice president that they should start standing for half an hour and take away his precious time and asked him to do it as quickly as possible. The vice president didn't understand how this bandit could afford to talk to him like that. He didn't really want to help him. But on the other hand, he didn't want a conflict around his center. The guard had a plan that he decided to put into action. He went to the room where all the prisoners were now working. In order to take the toothless one from there, he did not know what exactly he would do with him, but he understood that only he knows the whole truth, so he must destroy him. Entering the room, the guard approached the toothless man and told him to follow him. All the guard's actions seemed very suspicious to him, so the toothless man asked where he was going to take him. The guard whispered in his ear that he wanted to get out of here and then they would follow him. Toothless for some reason believed the guard this time and decided to follow him. Du Zhanglong is a platoon commander of the third group. Asked the guard what happened, to which he replied that it did not concern him and let him mind his own business. Of course, the guard did not know that the young man knew the whole truth and therefore Du Zhanglong decided to control where the guard with the toothless one would go. Toothless followed the guard. He was interested in only one question. Only recently he said that he would leave him here forever, and then such changes. The scene that the toothless man made in front of everyone added a lot of trouble to him, and it seemed to him that the toothless being here was completely unprofitable for him, so he decided to let him go. Without a tooth, he asked several times where they were going, 
after the next time the guard replied that if he went over there there would be a hole through which he could get out quietly. The guard already had a plan in his head on how to get rid of his enemy here. It was a very quiet place, and it's unlikely that anyone will come here in the near future. Just in case, the guard asked the toothless man if he had heard any screams recently. He replied that no, he was at work. The guard told him to go to the fence where there was a hole and he would keep watch so that no one would see the center. Toothless really believed this guard and went in the direction where he showed him. He thought that he could really let him go because he was afraid for his place. When the toothless one turned his back and walked away, at that moment the guard realized that he needed to act very quickly. He would never have such a moment again. He picked up a brick of earth in order to strike the toothless man walking towards the exit from behind in the head. This was exactly the plan that he came up with. The guard followed the toothless man. He was several steps away from completing the plan. He wanted the toothless man to never be able to tell anyone anything. He came close to his back and waved his hand. The practical plan was carried out, or so it seemed to him. The next moment someone knocked the brick out of his hands. Something didn't go according to plan, which means someone else became a witness and knows the whole truth about the guard. It was due John Long after Toothless' story he didn't trust this guard so he went to see where they would go, and he was right. Toothless turned his head and didn't understand what just happened. He was a few steps away from freedom. Well, something went wrong again. In front of him stood a young man who explained that this guy wanted to kill him for his freedom and benefit, and he warned him about it. Toothless was angry as never before. He no longer wanted to trust this guard because he was just ready to kill him. Toothless came up and picked up the brick with which he wanted to kill him. The guard told him that the dog was better than him, and he began to deliver blow after blow to the guard's head. He was ready to beat him to death because he was not used to forgiving such things. Du Zhanlong asked the Toothless to stop and don't do this. Kill this guard. He could even complicate his situation of living in this center because he has already been through a lot here. Toothless did not want to forgive his offender. It was beyond his strength so he definitely decided that he would kill him now in the same way as to kill him. Toothless was not the most honest person, but he could never allow his opponent to be hit from behind. He preferred to act openly, so he did not understand how this idiot wanted to kill him. Toothless raised his hand to hit the guard on the head. Du Jamong could not allow this and therefore knocked the brick out of his hands. If he killed him now, there would be a big fuss and most likely they would be sent back to the isolation ward. He knew what it was. I didn't want to go there anymore. Toothless was very aggressive and shouted that he would kill the guard and finally end this. The young man calmed him down and said what he was doing. They still needed to get out of here. He tried to explain that he would have problems while he was here and they would do to him exactly the same as they did to him. Before Chang Gong asked the guard what he was up to and why he decided to kill him, it was all very strange. The guard began to answer something incomprehensible. The young man addressed him as, you, the guard didn't really like it, and he began to be indignant, while no one else had worked here. But the prisoner did not address him with, you. Du Jamong told the guard that he was a lousy dog. He just a few minutes ago almost killed a man in front of him, and now he stands and beats his chest, demanding respect. The word dog angered the guard even more. He took out his baton which was ready to hit the young man. He started shouting how dare he talk to him like that. Du Jamong didn't listen to all this nonsense that this guard was saying. He kicked him in the stomach several times. So he spun around and fell to the ground. Most likely he can only understand force. The blow was so strong, in principle, like all the blows that the young man suffered, that the guard grabbed his stomach and sat down. He could no longer move and of course could no longer wave his stick and be indignant about the fact that they were talking to him incorrectly. But after the guard didn't scream, the young man explained to him that he had just saved him from death a few minutes ago, and he started screaming. And he continued if it weren't for him, he would already be lying dead now. But he can still live and insisted that he answer why he did exactly that. Toothless, of course, was very angry that Du Zhanlong did not give him the opportunity to kill this guard. But he also wanted to know why he did it now. Therefore, the young man demanded that he answer this question. The guard said that Toothless Boss and other bandits were standing outside and causing a scandal. They said that they knew that he was here and demanded to let him go. Toothless was very pleased that his master had come to pick him up and he understood that he could go out. The guard said that no, 
It's all useless because even the fact that you are here cannot be verified. He's not on the list, and he's not listed in any way. He Toothless was indignant that his master would come in and check and he would see that he was here and the guard would take him away. He was told that the doors of this establishment would never be allowed here. They would never open for him. Then without teeth he said that he could smash the doors and enter. The guard answered him that the employees of the center they won't just stand and watch as their doors are broken down. Toothless didn't understand what these guards could do. The guard replied that they would try to stop you at all costs. Toothless asked, Well, how did the young man tell them to shut up because they don't behave like they were in kindergarten? But he thought to himself why did he even got involved in the affairs of a guy who wanted to kill him? One headache. Before Zhang Ong, he thought for a long time about everything that was happening lately. Only events piled up that he didn't understand when it would all end. Maybe he remembered the times when he served in the army. He was called commander there as well as here and was also respected. Most likely, what was triggered in his mind was that he did not want to lose his colleagues again, as was the case in the army. He still could not forgive himself for the fact that he survived alone. Du Zhangong raised his two hands up and told the two to shut up and stop arguing. This was very important in the message. He said if they don't shut up now, they will both die. Toothless didn't understand why he said that they would die because his friends from the gang were standing outside the gates and they were ready to free him from here. The young man turned to the security guard and said that he had let a man in here who had his own goal because of money. If his superiors found out about this, he would definitely be in trouble, lose his trust and would no longer be able to work here. The young man continued judging by what he saw here, they won't just fire him. Does the guard think that it will be very dangerous to let out of here a person who cannot be trusted, despite the fact that he has seen all the secrets that in their opinion should not be shared? And you, too, are an accomplice, said the young man. I'm turning to toothless because of you. Now a scandal is happening outside. You think the authorities won't be angry with you. They will want to get rid of anyone who poses a danger. Isn't it better to actually get rid of a person than to just say that he wasn't here? Toothless asked Du Zhanglong if he had any ideas. The young man replied that of course he had an idea. He needed to keep everything a secret and pretend that you didn't know each other. The toothless man and the guard were outraged. Well then the young man told them. This was your plan initially. Continue in the same spirit. Toothless didn't understand how he could trust someone who almost killed him a few minutes ago, to which the guard replied that he was also ready to kill him. Du Jamong said that they should then trust him and do only as he tells them. Only in this case they have a chance to survive. Teeth was not ready to completely trust the young man because he came here to punish him. But Du Jamong was on this so that they would trust him. Therefore, the young man said that he would kill any of them and begin to sort things out first because they would interfere with his plan. Each of them knew what the young man was capable of. Only he had a strong blow, so they did not continue the further argument and said that they were ready to carry out all his instructions, after which they shook hands. It was like a deal had been concluded, at least it was a temporary truce. Each of them still had his own opinion. The young man was pleased that they were able to agree at least temporarily, and this issue could be ended. Du Zhanglong told the toothless man that his master had most likely already left because the noise near the gate had stopped, which meant there was no one there anymore. The vice president, of course, didn't go to find out if in their center there was a person whom Park Guangho was looking for. He didn't care. He went to call the policeman whom he paid every month to solve the issue with the bandits. A little later, he went to the gate and said that he had checked. Park Guangho interrupted him and said that if he had checked, then let them open the gate and they would take their man. The vice president of the institution said that such a person is not on the list, and they came here in vain and are trying to get into the territory of the center. Park Guangho don't believe me. Go to this gentleman's mother's word. He said that he was from the sofa above him and tell a lie. Park Guangho was not going to leave it at all. He didn't believe a single word of the son of the director of this center standing in front of him. The vice president of the social center asked the gentleman and his guys to leave the gate of the territory, to which Park Guangho replied that he was creating problems for himself, that he could call the police here and enter by destroying their gate. Vice President of the Center will he really call the police? He even felt a little funny when the bandits called the police to achieve their goals. A few seconds later they heard the sounds of a siren. Cars were approaching. These were police cars. There were several of them. 
Most likely it was the police, strengthening it to disperse people. The cars drove up very close to the guys who wanted to storm the gate. It was unclear why these police cars were invited to come here. Park Guanho that he hadn't called yet, and the police had already arrived here it was somehow very strange. He didn't understand what was happening. One car pulled up and behind it a minibus. The doors of the minibus opened and quite a lot of young people began to get out. They weren't patrolmen at all. Most likely they were investigators. Park Guanho is surprised by such attention to himself from the investigators. He directly asked them for what issue they came here. The chief of police approached Park Guanho and said that he wanted to talk to him alone. The gentleman did not resist and decided that maybe the chief of the police station could clarify the situation. Park Guangho convinced the police chief that there was definitely an employee of his inside. But these guys wouldn't let him in and said that he wasn't there. After listening to everything that Park Guangho had just told him, the police chief said that he understood everything. But they also can't do anything with this center. They just need to believe and surrender. Park Guangho couldn't believe that the police department was also in close ties with the authorities of this center. The police chief explained that, of course, the local authorities know the leadership. And in fact, this is the center, and its leaders know people much higher in status. And it wasn't the chief of police who sent them here, but a man with much greater influence. So he invites Park Guangho to take his word for everything they tell him and get out of here. Park Guangho thought it means they have someone else higher up. Who could it be the mayor of the city, or maybe one of the deputies? The police chief said that it was best for Park Guangho to take his guys and return, otherwise he might use force against them. And even if it's true that his employee is here in the center, the scandal will not bring him any benefit there. Outside the gates, his life will be even worse than before. The more he angers the vice president from the center, the more his person who is inside this institution will suffer. Therefore, it is better for him to forget about his person. Park Guanho, after listening to everything the police chief said, agreed with him. He didn't want any trouble for himself. So he decided that nothing depended on him here and he was leaving. Park Guanho turned around and told his guys to get into their cars and leave for all those who came with him. It was very incomprehensible. Their master never gave up so easily, much less betrayed his own. The fat thug turned to his master that he didn't understand what happened and why he changed his mind so quickly Park Guanho said that he would explain to me later when they leave here. Park Guangho approached the iron gate and asked for forgiveness from the vice president of the social center. He said that the person he was looking for was really not here. It seems he was mistaken. The vice president of the center said that he knew so and asked him a question. What is the last name of the person he was looking for? Park Guanho thought why he needed his last name. So everyone is telling lies, most likely his comrade is located right here everyone is lying. Park Guangho thought that he shouldn't say his real last name so that things wouldn't get worse for his friend in this social center. He hesitated for several minutes, and then squeezed out that his last name was Park Park Sanchal. He specifically said that so that they could not find him. The vice president said that he understood and wished to find his comrade as soon as possible. As always, he looked through the prism of his glasses, hiding his real face behind them. Everyone got into their cars, first the police left, and then the bandits, and their master Park Guanho left. He still had a lot of questions that he wanted answered. Despite the fact that he agreed to leave, he was not ready to leave this matter just like that. He was driving in the car and constantly went through all the words where the policeman told him, and then remembered the face of this vice president. What kind of things can they do in this social center? Park Guangho thought that they do not open the doors for visitors and the police come at their first request in order to remove strangers from their social center. He was driving in the car, reassuring himself that nothing would happen to his friend in this social center, and no one would know that he came specifically for him. The vice president was not such a fool and he immediately guessed that these people came for a new person. He asked his guards, in which squad the new guard was located, he replied that a few days ago a new person entered the third squad. He ordered his guards to follow him to the third squad in order to check whether it was Sankyo or not. He had to know everything that was happening in his social center. The vice president of this center went to the quarry today. His younger brother was supposed to be there to observe everything that was happening there. The prisoners worked as always. Some used a sledgehammer to break them with stones. Others put these stones into huge bags. 
and the third carried them up the stairs somewhere high where they put all the stones. The youngest son of the director of the center of a social institution really liked to watch all this. He liked it when they hit a stone with a sledgehammer. He loved his life and everything heavy and everything big. One of the guards called out to him. He could only afford to do this if his father or his brother wanted to see him. He asked the security guard what happened. Then he was told that the deputy director of this center was looking for him because he urgently needed to talk to him. The vice president thought that his brother was looking for him on some very important matter, so he simply wouldn't have sent a guard after him. When the thug, the vice president, came to his brother and found out what was the matter, that he had to immediately call him, his brother answered him that he could open the gate and start fighting with them. This would lead to big trouble, so he didn't call him. Of course, he was right, so the thug vice president decided to agree with him. Moreover, Everything had already been decided and no one needed any help anymore. The most important thing for why the elder brother called his thug brother was to find out if they really had on their territory the person these bandits were looking for. Therefore, they went to where the third group of prisoners was working today. Two vice presidents entered the room. Then Du Zhangong understood what they were talking about. Maybe now we are talking. Most likely they will find out who is involved in the latest events. The security guard at the entrance asked what happened, Mr., to the vice president. He pretended that he also didn't know what happened today near the gate of a social institution. The vice president ordered to call the man who was brought in recently. The guard was a little scared. He thought that now the whole truth might be revealed and then no one would definitely leave him here at work. The guard brought the toothless man to the vice president's. They asked him. He toothless Sanko confirmed that yes, that's really his name. Dushengen thought it was too bad how did they know his name. Most likely it was Park Guanho who told them what his name was. The guard silently listened to everything that was happening, that the end had come for him. If now the directors find out the truth, then everything will be lost and most likely they will kill him, as Du Zhangong said. The vice president asked again. The toothless one really is Pak Sankal. It was under that name that the bandits today were looking for their friend in this center who supposedly came here. Toothless said that no, his name is different. He told me Park Sunkol and Choi Sunkol. He basically told the truth. But the truth could have saved his life. The vice president was very surprised. He was sure that it was him that the bandits who came to the gates of their center were looking for. Was he really mistaken? Du Zhangong thought it was very good that the last name did not match the person the vice president was looking for. The guard was happy and a little surprised that the last name didn't match. It was true that it also saved his life. The vice president thought that it seemed like Sankal but not Park and Choi. This meant that these were completely different people. After which he asked what he was doing outside. Toothless hesitated a little and then began to mutter something incomprehensibly like, well... I didn't know whether to tell him the truth or make it up. At the moment, he didn't understand what was better and what could save his life. The young man thought that the toothless man should never tell the truth and asked him not to do this. Otherwise, there might be trouble. Toothless said that here is a social center for the homeless. A homeless person and that's why he ended up here. He was picked up on the street by the employees of this center when he was wandering. These explanations of the toothless man did not at all coincide with those told by the bandit who came for his man to the gates of this center. The vice president calmed down a little because he no longer had to deal with these bandits and asked the police to protect him. The young man exhaled with relief. After all, this toothless man was not such an idiot as he thought. He told a lie and saved his life. The bruiser vice president turned to the toothless one because he remembered that quite recently he had caused a scandal and even tried to fight with the security guard of this social center. The thug asked again, it wasn't he who recently made a scandal so that he could be released and turned to the platoon commander that it seemed as if they had an agreement for him to teach a lesson to a prisoner from his group. The thug remembered that he behaved completely differently then and was very impudent. The second vice president wanted to hear answers to all questions from his brother. The thug asked the guard. He managed to talk with this prisoner about his morning behavior and how things were now. The guard was a little confused because he didn't know what to tell him. Toothless interrupted and began to say that he was asking for forgiveness. He really wanted to get out of here. So he chose the person who looked the weakest and threw a tantrum. The vice president was very surprised. He attacked the guard, choosing him only because of his appearance. 
There was something strange about this because all the guards were almost the same. Toothless told them to look at the guard. He really didn't look like a weakling, that's why he chose him. These words really hurt the guard. The vice president began to think, maybe he really doesn't look very good if some homeless person considers him a weakling. Here in a social institution it's impossible for the guards to make such an impression. The vice president is thinking, are they either deceiving or is this really the case? If this is so then something needs to be done about it. The thug vice president told the toothless one that he had no right to express himself that way towards employees of a social institution. The toothless one lowered his head and asked for forgiveness. The two sons of the director of the social institution came out, and you where the prisoners worked. The guard escorted them to the door. The president ordered them to continue working. The guard confirmed that everything would be done. The younger brother asked the older brother, Are they really going to leave it all like this? To which the older brother replied that it also seems to him that everything is unclean. But do they have anything to check? Perhaps this bandit just came here by mistake? Just Most likely he really came here by mistake, said the elder brother. They have nothing to worry about anymore and no longer need to pay attention to it. In any case, if they start to get annoying, you can always just remove them. Even if in fact it turns out that the suspicions were false, the fact that they were annoying remains a fact, said the elder brother. Three guards, a toothless one, and a platoon commander, Du Zhanglong, gathered in a secluded place. They were pleased that they remained alive. Each of them did not betray the other. The young man told the toothless man that he was great and that he was better than he expected. The toothless man agreed. Well, he replied that he doesn't understand how they can get out of here now. Toothless couldn't be here. He didn't know how to get out of here, and he no longer had a plan. Now his friends on whom he was counting will most likely not come here anymore. The guard said that there is another way when prisoners are released from here. Toothless asked what kind of method he really couldn't stay here for a long time. He wasn't used to this kind of treatment. The guard explained that there is such a thing as the best re-educated person. If he is taken there then he can be released from this social institution. Toothless asked the young man if this was really true because the guard had already deceived him several times and he could not trust him. The young man replied that yes, indeed, this had already happened while he was here. In fact, at the meeting, one prisoner was chosen who was supposed to be released. Toothless said that then it would be enough for him to have the guard help him become this best re-educator or whatever they call him, the guard agreed. The young man thought about everything that was happening from really how can one get out of here because he also did not intend to stay here for a very long time. Song had a day off today, but she went to find the young man Du Zhanglong. She was sure that something happened to him because they just did. He quit his job and did not come to her at the bank, although he promised. She didn't understand how it happened that she herself couldn't calm down and constantly thought about him. She had very plausible dreams about him. She goes to work, thinks about him all the time, thinks only about him. She even went to look at Du Zhanggong's personal documents, thereby breaking the rules of bank secrecy. To find out his address, she had no other opportunity to find out his address. She opened a personal file and made an extract on her day off. She decided to go to where he was registered. Maybe someone knows where he is now or maybe he lives there and she's worrying in vain. When she arrived she saw where the young man lived. She realized that it was very difficult for him to live in such a place. The woman asked what questions the girl had. The girl didn't understand, then the old woman explained again that there are questions. Let them ask them to her. She, the owner, stood in the courtyard where rooms are available for rent. The girl was delighted and decided to ask the old woman if she knew a young man named Du Zhanglong lived here. The old woman asked, she was his girlfriend, and at the same time her face changed, she became very serious, it seemed that she knew something. Well, if so, then you can find out the whole truth from her. The girl begged her to tell her everything that the old woman knew about this young man. It was very important to her. The old woman thought for several minutes whether she should even talk to this girl, because she was not a client. If Sona said that she was not his girlfriend, then she would not have a chance to ask this old woman about him. She would not tell anything. Sona decided that she would say that she was Du Zhanggong's girl. The old woman said that he didn't waste his time in vain. He worked very hard every day and still found himself such a beauty like her. 
The old woman asked why she was trying to explain that the young man said that he would leave on business, and there had been no news from him for a long time, almost half a month. The old woman was surprised how it could be that he didn't even call her. She didn't understand how he could not get involved with such a beauty like her. When they entered the room, they saw that all his things were in place, so it was unlikely that he had run away, and over the last month, he had completely paid off the old woman. Sona asked, but he didn't tell the old woman where he was going. The old woman thought a little because someone really happened when he left. She needed to strain her memory a little and remember. She began to remember everything in turn that day when the young man was leaving the city and asked him, Isn't he going to work? He replied that he quit and left a business card with his phone number. If he was gone for a long time, she should call this phone number and find out what happened to him. The old woman asked him what he would do next. The young man replied that he had found another very well-paid job and now he was heading there. He explained that he had to leave for a while for work and should return tomorrow. The old woman told him to come back quickly, because if he was gone, who would protect her from the local drunkards? That's all that happened on the last day when the old woman saw the young man. She accurately conveyed everything she knew. The old woman remembered that he left her his business card in case she would call if something happened. She took this business card out of her pocket and handed it to the girl. The old woman said that she didn't call him because she thought she would show up. When the time comes, let him try. Call the girl at this phone number. Sona thanked the woman. In parting, the old woman asked the girl if she was going to marry a young man. This question put Sona in an awkward position. She did not know how to answer correctly. Du Zhanglong is a very good guy, the old woman said and continued so that the girl does not look at the fact that while he lives in such a place, they work at a construction site. Everything will be fine for him. Every Sona realized that most likely something had happened to him, that he wasn't calling anyone. Of course she wanted it not to be true because she was very worried about him. The girl said goodbye to the old woman and said that she also thinks so, so she will most likely call him back herself and find out where he went. Sona looked at this business card angrily. She didn't know if she did the right thing by taking it. Not too much. She was breaking into his personal space. After all, they weren't closely acquainted. She didn't know what to do right and decided to think for a while because she was afraid that he might not understand her experiences. But then I decided to dial the number that was written on the business card and ask him personally where he is now so that she could understand whether she should worry further. Another morning at the social institution for the homeless day sing began as usual. After all the events of yesterday, it seemed that life here should go differently. The prisoners of the third group, as well as before, they woke up and began to clean their sleeping places. One of them was cleaning up the dirt on the floor, toothless. He had already begun to get used to the fact that he was here and was not very indignant at the regime of this institution. A guy named Yi Sunjo was always near Du Zhanglong. He went to work with him. It seemed that they had already become friends and they had no secrets. In this social institution there were several detachments, and each of them had its own platoon commander. The situation that was in the third detachment after Du Zhanglong was appointed commander was not very pleasant to everyone else. In other groups, the commander of the first group did not understand why Du Zhanglong suddenly decided to leave on his own. He didn't like him at all and the commander of the second group didn't like him either. Before Zhanglong behaved completely differently from how a commander should have behaved, he was too friendly with all the other prisoners. That's exactly what all the other commanders thought. The commanders of all the squads gathered to discuss the behavior of Du Zhanglong because they never worked together with the rest of the prisoners after they became commanders and only enjoyed privileges. You were in a social institution there were five groups, which means there were again commanders. Four of them allowed themselves not to work and considered themselves superior to all the other prisoners. The only one who treated everyone in his group normally was the commander of the third platoon, Du Zhanglong. The commander of the 4th platoon was very experienced and had been here for a long time. He said that he did not like it at all that Du Zhanglong had taken the place of the previous commander. The commander of the 5th detachment supported his friend, the commander of the 4th detachment, and said that indeed, after that incident, the rest of the prisoners began to look at them strangely and he got the impression that they were waiting for the moment to also remove their commander, as was the case in the 3rd group. The commander of the 2nd platoon suggested that in this case, 
he sees no other way out than this commander of the third platoon, and kill him so that everyone else will be afraid to do as he did. The commander of the fifth detachment said that he was ready to kill him at any moment, if it were only his will, but he does not have the right to let go of his hands, so he cannot do this. The commander of the first detachment entered the conversation. He stood the whole time and listened carefully to what the other commanders were talking about. He said that this was all good, but this would only add problems to them. The matter cannot be solved in this way. Others asked what he proposes to solve this problem. The commander of the first detachment said that they need to show this upstart Du Zhanglong that they will not leave alone anyone who removes any commander, so they will instill fear and no one will think of doing such a thing. The commander of the fourth detachment listened carefully to everything that was said. This man concluded that then it was necessary to deal with the commander of the third detachment. All other commanders agreed with him. The commander of the fifth detachment said that he heard that he was a die-hard and not so easy to deal with, to which the commander of the first detachment replied that even the strongest could not resist the group. All the other commanders agreed that there were actually four of them, and Du Zhanglong was alone so they decided that they could teach him a lesson. And the commander of the first group also suggested that each of them bring two to three assistants loyal to them, and then there would be enough of them to teach this upstart a lesson. The commanders decided that they would do just that. They would gather people, but now they had to decide the question of how they should proceed. They couldn't just break into the third detachment. They understood that if they acted thoughtlessly, they could get punished. One of the commanders said that maybe they need to call him here, and then he will come alone, and they will be able to deal with him. Another interrupted him that he most likely is not such a fool, and he will not come running at their first request. Then the commander of the first platoon said that yes, indeed, he just won't come. Therefore, they will need to prepare bait for him to come to them. This day passed absolutely calmly without incident, and night had already fallen, according to the schedule. All prisoners of this institution were supposed to be in their groups and sleep. Du Zhanglong also lay down on his bed. He thought that another day had passed in this terrible institution. He had only a little time left until his hands healed. He was tormented by only one question. How long would he remain here and whether he would be able to get out of here? He really wanted to see Sun. He looked at his hands. He was wondering if they were healing. He couldn't understand, because he hadn't moved them or straightened them for a long time. He really wanted to recover and become exactly the same until the moment when they put plaster on his hands. Every evening when he went to bed before going to bed he remembered Sun. He really wanted to see her, and only these hands were holding him back and that's why he was in this institution with them he couldn't get out of here. And every evening before going to bed, he was very hungry. He wanted to eat something worthwhile and tasty. The food in this social institution for the homeless was simply disgusting. Of course he ate it but when he closed his eyes he dreamed of a completely different food that he missed. What we were given by prisoners in this social institution was fish that had turned sour and maybe rotten greens that had been torn out from nowhere. It was impossible to eat like this. Well, all this was not pointless, so the young man turned over and tried to sleep. Anyway, tomorrow morning he would have to eat this concoction. When Du Zhanglong had already closed his eyes someone turned to him with the words commander of the third detachment. You're already sleeping like that. No one from the group addressed him, which means it was someone from another group. He opened his eyes and stood up. He didn't understand who or why to talk to. He asked what was wrong, why they woke him up. He didn't understand what was happening. The man who stood next to him introduced himself that he was the commander of the second detachment, and he urgently needed to talk to him, and called him to the exit. Du Zhangmong asked why he came to him at such a time and so there is not enough time to sleep. He could talk to him if he wanted then during the day. The commander of the second detachment said that without further ado, just come out, that he urgently needed to talk. The young man did not know how to react to this commander's proposal. Before Chan Gong, he really didn't want to get up and go somewhere. He was tired the whole day because he worked with the rest of the prisoners, but the commander of the second detachment insisted that he go out. When they went outside, the commander of the second detachment said that now all the commanders would gather, so he should come to this meeting. The young man thought if this was a meeting of commanders, then he really didn't want to play kings with these people or had completely different views. The commander of the second platoon continued to persuade the young man to go to a meeting of all commanders. His task was to bring Du Zhanglong into a trap. 
Therefore, does the young man want to have a good meal at night? A few minutes ago, the young man was lying and dreaming of good food, so this question puzzled him. He thought it would be really nice to eat something tasty, something filling. Maybe he really needed a late night snack then he could go talk to the rest of the commanders. These words from the commander of the 2nd platoon about a snack immediately woke up the young man. He was ready to follow him and even tolerate all the other platoon commanders and their conversations. Du Zhonglong said that he agreed and followed the commander of the 2nd platoon. He did not yet know what the next moment would happen and that it would most likely be a trap for him. But doubts appeared in his head, a night snack, how could this be? Could this commander be serious since he knew where he was? Therefore, he decided to be very careful. They approached another barracks. The commander of the second entry said that they had come and invited the young man to come inside. Inside there was a long table. Three more platoon commanders were sitting behind it. There was food on the table. Du Zhanglong decided that it would really be a night snack with other platoon commanders. But something seemed very suspicious. Before Zhanglong, their hypocrisy was obvious, and this only meant one thing, that they needed something from him. The platoon commander who brought Du Zhanglong here invited him to sit down with everyone at the table. Everything looked quite plausible. Well, something still confused him. The young man began to look very carefully at everything and everyone who was around. Of course he really wanted to eat. It was his desire. He was surprised that these commanders had other food and a stove where they could cook it all seemed very strange to him. On the single burner stove there was a saucepan nearby. Several packages of ramen vermicelli were lying and in the glass there were metal sticks for the first time in all this time that he had been here. He saw the chopsticks and was even more surprised that they had ramen. So the commander of the second group said that they were really ready to share with him for this. Let him sit down. They want not only to eat with him, but also to talk. When the young man looked at the table, he was confused by some things that were definitely not allowed to be used within the walls of this institution. He didn't know how to feel about it. He picked up a metal stick and asked the other commanders if the name could be used in the center. He remembered well what they told him on the first day when he got to the canteen. The commander of the second group who brought him here said that chopsticks and noodles are allowed here. The young man was very surprised because he explained that they are commanders. They are ordinary people and all this is allowed. Du Zhamon thought to himself, they are funny. He thinks that this is not their privilege. Of course the young man treated his position completely differently. When he looked at all the commanders present here and how they behaved, of course he wanted to turn around and leave here and not continue the conversation further. But his subconscious said that he wanted to eat normal food and there were packages of romaine noodles lying so close here. So he decided to stay. Now there was only one thought in his head that he wanted to eat this vermicelli. He had not eaten good and tasty food for so long that everything else remained in the background. One of the commanders said that everyone had gathered and let's start cooking the vermicelli. He said that he would go and bring water to cook the vermicelli. He went to the sink, opened the tap and began to draw water. Everything seemed absolutely plausible. He needed to wait a few minutes and then the young man would be able to eat well. This commander brought water and put it on the stove. The young man looked at this commander and the pan he brought. He did not understand. Why did he take such a large amount of water to cook ramen? He didn't need so much water, but he continued to watch. The commander of the 5th detachment, after he put a pot of water on the stove, he said that now he needed to turn on the fire. Du Zhanglong could not allow this and told someone to stop. All the other commanders did not understand what it was. Why? This young man commands and tells them to stop and not boil the water. Du Zhanglong took a pot of water and went to the wash basin and said that he would cook everything himself. Everyone else didn't understand what the problem was. Well, they were just silent. The commander of the second platoon who brought him here said, but if that's what he wants, then let him stew. They have nothing against. When the young man ran to the washstand, he poured out half of the water that was in the pan. Most likely these idiots have never cooked ramen. The young man thought that it would be better to cook it himself than to entrust such a task to this idiot. They would spoil the noodles and then he would not be able to eat. The platoon commander sat at the table and discussed one of them said that Du Zhanglong decided to cook after all, instead of them, and the commander of the 4th detachment said that he didn't think that he was like that, but everyone understood that Du Zhanglong was very hungry and when the commander called him here at first he didn't want to go nowhere only after he said about food the young man agreed. 
one of the commanders said that the time has already come, and we need to call the guys here now to deal with him as they planned according to their plan. The commander of the first platoon said that today they will give him a chance to just eat well so that he does not suspect anything. They can teach him a lesson at any time. They sat and watched as the young man tried. He really, really wanted to eat deliciously, and therefore he was ready to cook not only for himself but also for these people. The young man may have looked lost but in fact he was fully armed. It was clear from his face when he just came here. One of the commanders said that if you feed him noodles, then next time he will come here relaxed, and then they will carry out their plan. Catch him and call the guys. All the commanders agreed with this decision, but he was obliged in any case to receive his punishment for removing the previous commander. He would have easily collected the required amount of water if it had been a saucepan from his house. But now he has completely alien dishes and it was not easy to do this. He understood perfectly well that if you don't know how much water to use, it's better to pour as little as possible. The young man came up and opened the tap and took in exactly as much water as he considered necessary. Because at any moment you could add water to the pan during the cooking process. Well, if you poured water at the beginning, it meant the end of ramen. Du Zhanglong put the pan on the stove and turned the knob of the stove so that the fire lit. The commanders of other groups, in conversation with each other, did not understand why this guy was so serious about cooking ordinary ramen. It seemed to them that it could be done very simply and without much bother. According to Du Zhanglong, the seasonings had to be added first, and this had to be done before the water in the pan boiled. This is a trick he heard somewhere and I remember that the water boils faster if you add seasonings to it. But that's not why he does it. And he does this only because if you pour the seasoning into boiling water, then all the seasoning will stick to the lid along with the steam, and there will be no remaining in the water where the ramen is cooked. Already when the water boils, Du Zhanglong always put in the noodles. He didn't break them for one big reason. He liked it better this way. Although many did it differently, it was a matter of taste. Right now he threw these noodles like that for one reason. He wanted that when he grabbed the noodles with chopsticks at once there would be a lot of them. He really wanted to eat a normal meal. Another one of the rules that Du Zhanglong adhered to was that you had to say the vermicelli without touching it or stirring it. It would cook faster that way. And then when it was slightly cooked, only after that it was necessary to quickly turn off the heat and cover with a lid. I was also one of the rules for how a young man prepared ramen. This had to be done only so that even after turning off the fire, the stove still remains quite hot for some time and, having reached the desired state, it was necessary to remove the pan from the stove. The romaine that was cooked in this way should still sit a little longer in the pan and of course everyone had to wait a little so that the dish was really tasty enough and everyone liked it. Du Zhanglong said that the dish will be ready now and all the other group commanders will need to eat very quickly to taste it. Four commanders of other groups stood looking at him, not understanding what he was doing, why he was in command here. They thought that their meeting would go according to a completely different plan. So on the one hand they did not understand, but on the other hand they agreed because they also wanted to eat. The commander of the groups in the hall got iron chopsticks, and each of them started eating that this parasite they wanted to teach a lesson to well-cooked ramen. Du Zhanglong was pleased with the way he cooked noodles today and thanks to these people he had the opportunity to eat well, finally the feeling of hunger that he had recently passed. He tried to eat as quickly as possible. So he picked up a fairly large amount of noodles with chopsticks and blew on it to quickly put it in his mouth. The young man even closed his eyes with pleasure because for a very long time he could not afford to eat so well and tasty. He did not know when the next time he would be able to do this again, and therefore tried to eat as much as possible. Du Zhanglong always thought that ramen was a very tasty dish, and he liked to cook it himself in everyday life. He always enjoyed the fact that he ate this noodles. One of the groups said that Du Zhangan is really good and he cooks quite well, so he doesn't understand how to communicate with him further. He was supported by the commander of the fourth group. He said that what he had prepared was true. This young man was very tasty and he was ready to eat it regularly. All the group commanders who sat at the same table with the young man admitted only one thing. The noodles he cooked were really very tasty. Before Zhang Ong, he understood perfectly well that what he was eating now was very tasty and there was only one thought in his head that this was very tasty ramen, and he didn't want to think about anything else now. A few minutes passed and the pan in which the young man had just cooked the noodles was empty. These people had not eaten delicious food for a long time. 
and so they ate this noodles very quickly. The group of four commanders who were sitting at the table came to only one opinion, that the commander of the third detachment cooks ramen perfectly. They were not as aggressive as before meeting him. The young man said that it would be even tastier if he had green onions and eggs then he could cook this noodles even tastier than today. One of the group commanders said that they could find onions and eggs and then he would cook vermicelli for them again the way he knows how because they want to try it too. The same commander told Du Jamong to come to them because it was necessary between commanders and extended his hand to shake. Du Jamong didn't really want to be friends with these types because he perfectly understood everything they were saying not sincerely and didn't extend his hand to him because his hand was in a cast. If the fact that he wanted to eat noodles again was spinning in his head, so after thinking, he still extended his hand to him, and shook it, and said that he was ready to be friends with them. When the commander of the first and second detachment were already walking through their barracks, one of them asked where they were going to get onions and eggs, to which the commander of the first detachment replied that he was not going to look for anything. The commander of the second detachment then asked again, because then with the table from the first detachment he himself said that he would find onions and eggs, to which he answered him these were empty words, the only way he can come to them a second time, I pin my hope that it will be delicious again eat. But next time, instead of a delicious meal of onions and eggs, their guys will be waiting for him and only then they will be able to teach him a lesson so that he understands who he is dealing with. Having reached Zhang having reached his barracks, Lek lay on the bed and now he could sleep. Today he will not sleep hungry, and this thought calmed him. The vermicelli was so tasty that thinking about it brought him pleasure. Today he really did a good job when he cooked it, and strangely enough, despite all the difficulties, it turned out very tasty for him. Of course, he also had another question. Would he be able to eat ramen in the near future? He didn't know the answer to this question, but he hoped for the best. He wanted to eat so deliciously again. Eat. Someone's voice constantly repeated his name Du Zhanglong. He did not understand where this voice was heard from, but it was a female voice and most likely his name was Sona. The last time he was in this social institution, he had dreams about himself and the girl Sona. Today was no exception. It was she who called him in a dream. In this dream he also tried to find her, but he didn't succeed, so he called her too. Maybe she was somewhere out there in the fog and that's why he didn't see her. The young man reporting heard her screaming his name, and she constantly said that she was ready to come to him. Most likely in this dream he did not see her, and she could not see him. There was a very strong fog that interfered with them. Du Zhanglong didn't quite clearly hear everything the girl wanted to tell him, and so he tried to ask again. The distance between them and this dense fog separated them. The girl stood somewhere in the distance waved her hand and shouted as much as she could that she would come to him very soon. Sona was traveling on a bus and at some point she fell asleep from fatigue. Except for her, there were no people on this bus and therefore no one shouted and she was able to sleep for a few minutes. She had exactly the same dream as the young man. She even said out loud that she would come soon. The bus was traveling very quickly and therefore very soon she should have been in Dace and where she could find out about the whereabouts of the young man and why he disappeared. It was a regular bus and it ran exactly on schedule, so he had to arrive at the appointed time in the city. After some time, the bus actually arrived at the bus station where all the buses arrived. It was a bus station exactly the same as in many other cities, no different. People were bustling about in the same way. Some came, others left. When the girl got off the bus she thought that she had come to this day sing. She was here for the first time and therefore didn't know anything. In her hands was the same business card with a phone number and address where Du Zhanglong was supposed to go, but she didn't know where to go, she had never been here. Having reached the very office whose address was indicated on the business card, she saw that in this building there are quite a lot of companies and other offices on one of these signs she read exactly the name of the company that was indicated on the business card. Sona was very happy that she somehow found exactly the office where she wanted to go. In a few minutes she could clarify where Du Zhanglong was and whether he needed help. The girl knocked on the office door. Someone from behind the door asked who it was. She was a little confused because she didn't know what to tell her and how to explain to these people why she came to them. Two young men were walking along the corridor. The first of them was dressed in an expensive brown suit. It was this man who first greeted the girl and then asked her to bring her to his office. 
hearing that the girl was interested in his friend Du Jianghong, and she came here precisely because of him. This young man was not at a loss, invited her inside the office and decided to tell her everything he knows about Du Jianghong. This office owner asked the girl for permission to call her his bride. Du Jianghong, he really wanted to, he decided to treat the girl with a cup of coffee because she had come a long way. Arriving here by bus and then tell everything he knew. Sona was a little shy and said that she wouldn't want to be called that because the wedding is still far away and in general everything is very unclear. The owner of the office interrupted her and said that anyway they were going to get married in the future, so she would still be his friend's bride for him, and that's how he would address her. The girl at first wanted to tell the whole truth that they were not exactly in such a relationship, but then she decided that if she said this, she would not know anything about Du Jianlong and thought that so be it. The owner of the office asked the girl why she came here to look for Du Jianlong, to which Sona replied that Du Jianlong left his business card for the old woman from whom he rents a room and said if something happened to him to call this phone number. The owner of the office still didn't understand the reason for her visit, so he asked the girl that Du Jianlong had sent her. Sona replied that no, no one sent her, and that the young man did not return to Sekl after he left for the job that the owner of this office offered him. The young man in a brown suit did not understand how it could be that Du Jianlong did not return, because when they parted he said that after work he would go straight home. The girl continued to insist that Du Jianlong had not returned home after he left for work, and the owner of the room where he lived had not seen him since then either. This news hit the owner of the office hard. He didn't understand how this could happen. Yes, the young man could have disappeared after their meeting. The girl asked question after question and therefore she became interested in why Du Jianlong came here. The owner of the office told her that he was helping him with his business and that the young man was a very skilled assistant in this regard. The girl asked the owner of the office when he was here. Nothing can happen to him. He answered her that it was then that he injured his two hands. It was when he was helping them. Sona was very worried. She didn't understand how Du Jianlong could have damaged his hands, and she was also interested in the question of how badly they were damaged. The owner of the office doesn't know how best to explain to the girl so that she doesn't worry so much. If you tell the truth, she will be very nervous. But if you lie, the truth will come out someday anyway. So he decided that he wouldn't quite tell her the truth. He said that he had hurt his hands a little, just a little. Sona couldn't wrap her head around everything she just heard. It turns out that Du Jianlong is also wounded, then it's completely unclear where he went and where to look for him next. The owner of the office said that he would help the girl who was looking for him, so she should not worry too much and return home. And when he finds the young man, he will inform her. And she also added that he knows this city like the back of his hand, so this is the case. He takes his hands. The girl agreed with him. This was indeed the solution to this issue. She did not know this city and her weekend was already ending and she had to return home and go to work. The owner at the office told his assistant to take the girl directly to Seoul where she lived conveniently Sona and she wanted to refuse the help of the office owner so she said that she was ready to take the bus. On what the owner of the office said that she would be taken wherever she said Du Jianlong was his friend and he helped him a lot, so he cannot so easily let go of a person close to him. Sona thought to herself that if Du Jianlong found out about her, they would most likely think that she was crazy because she was pretending to be his fiancée. The owner of the office told his assistant to take the girl and he also asked him if he remembers where the young man lives. The assistant agreed and said that he remembers everything and will take the girl. The owner of the office told the assistant to go to Du Jiangong's house to check if he really gave the owner his business card and if the owner really gave this business card to this girl and also to check if he really hasn't been home since he went to Dae Seng. The head of the office told his assistant his assistant to agree to his guest. He invited the girl to pass. He had to complete all the tasks that his owner assigned him. The assistant kindly put the girl in the back seat of the car and said that he would take her all the way home and they were already leaving. The owner of the office remained standing on the street, his eyes following the car as it drove away after the arrival of this girl. Questions arose in his head and he wanted to find answers to them as quickly as possible. One of the most important questions is where did Du Jianlong go? Is he just hiding or did something really happen to him? It's not just that this girl could be looking for a young man. Morning came and it was the next day that Du Jianlong was supposed to spend in a social institution, 
today, like yesterday, the day was the most ordinary. According to the schedule, Du Zhang Long and his assistant, who was the same guy who looked after him from the very beginning, were cleaning the area. All the young man's thoughts were only about yesterday evening. He remembered this wonderful ramen and wanted to try to cook it again as soon as possible. The guy saw that Du Zhang Long was thinking about what was there and so asked him what happened and what he was thinking about. Du Zhanglong couldn't tell him the whole truth and therefore said that the weather is very good today. That's why he is so thoughtful and flying in the clouds. After cleaning, they had to go to the dining room to eat. Only one thought, otherwise the food that they would now be given made the young man furious. Already in the dining room, Du Zhanglong, in a bad mood and spooning through the food that was in front of him, he didn't want to eat it at all, didn't even want to try it, the guy asked again if everything was okay with him. The young man did not answer anything, but thought to himself that after night ramen, forcing himself to eat became even more painful than before. After eating, the young man and his squad left the dining room and headed to their barracks. They acted strictly according to the schedule that they had. Someone's voice from the side shouted, Hey, commander, most likely it was someone who addressed him. Before Zhang Long, the young man turned his head to see who it was. He saw the commander of the first and second group standing near the building. One of them asked the young man how he liked the lunch that he had just been given in the dining room. The commander of the first group said that he wanted to see Du Zhanglong a little later and waved his hand from the side. It turned out to be a conversation between almost friends. Well, the young man understood perfectly well that these people could not be so welcoming and friendly to him. Something made him doubt their sincerity. The guy asked Du Zhanglong when he managed to make friends with the rest of the group commanders. The young man replied that the other day he thought that you need to be on good terms with the other group commanders. Despite the fact that he answered this guy, he still understood perfectly well that these people are not as friendly as they really want to seem. The young man took the words of the commander of the first group that, See you later, as meaning that they would soon eat ramen again and all the next day he thought only about this. He got the impression that he was the guy who kissed the girl for the first time. Night had fallen and this meant that today had come to an end. Another day the young man spent in this establishment had come to an end and this meant that there were fewer days left until his hands healed. Du Zhangong lay on his bed and caught himself thinking that all day he had been thinking only about ramen noodles. He so wanted to eat it again. The guy who helped him all the time came up to the young man's bed. This guy called out to the young man. Obviously he had something to say to him. The guy continued to talk about the fact that the commander of the second detachment was looking for Du Zhanglong. The words made the young man very happy. He immediately jumped out of his bed and ran to the exit. At the same time, he thanked the guy for such news. Du Zhanglong was in a hurry because he really wanted to eat as deliciously as yesterday again. The guy thought that the commander was very strange. Since yesterday, he had been thinking so all day long. And now when another commander called him, he lost his temper and ran away without saying a word. On the street, the commander of the second detachment was waiting for the young man at the meeting. He said that they had found the onions and eggs that they had agreed on last time, so he asked him to go with them and prepare noodles as he promised yesterday. A very fabulous picture appeared before the eyes of the young man where there was vermicelli, eggs and onion rings were beaten into it. He decided that this time it should be much tastier than the last one. When the young man came to the same room where they were preparing food yesterday, he saw that three squad leaders were sitting at the table. On the table there was the same pan as yesterday, but there were no packs of ramen. All this was very stressful. Before Zhanglong, he came here with only one thought, that he would eat well, and today he completely understood what was happening now. Therefore, he decided to ask everyone present here where is ramen. One of the commanders answered him that they will bring it now, you need to wait a little. These words calmed the young man a little. He decided that they really should bring food now and then he could calmly cook noodles the way he wanted. Indeed, someone else entered this room. Where there were already four squad leaders in Du Zhanglong, something began to strain the young man in this situation. He turned his head to the door and saw a fairly large number of prisoners from other groups there. They stood at the entrance and there was no ramen in their hands. They clearly did not come here to eat soup. The young man asked what it was. He wanted some explanation from those people who invited him here for dinner. The commander of the first group said that it was his ramen that came and laughed very loudly. He still did not understand who he was dealing with 
and therefore was confident in himself. These prisoners who were standing at the door began to shake their fists. They began to hurt him in every way, laying out words such as is he really dissatisfied with something? Du Zhang Long couldn't understand why these people wanted to do this to him, because he was so looking forward to this moment when he would eat delicious food all day long. He asked the other group commanders what he had done that they were going to do this to him. The young man understood perfectly well that there were four group commanders and their assistance against him. One of the commanders told him that he had made a huge mistake. The young man did not understand what this commander was talking about. What mistake could he have made because he did not communicate with them at all? Then the commander of the first group told him that he dared to rebel against his commander and take his power into his own hands. This was his mistake. The young man said to the commander who stood opposite him, he doesn't understand the meaning of these words. The riot has taken away the power. If someone hears from the outside, they might think that they are hosting the Game of Thrones here. The commander of the fifth group told him to shut up and that he was violating all the conditions and peace of their social center. The young man did not understand what foundations he could violate if they were locked here like chickens in a hen house. One of the commanders ordered his prisoner assistant to stop standing and grab the young man and deal with him properly. Du Zhamong said if that's what their group commanders want, today they won't have the same ramen that he will have to eat for dinner. Before Zhamong was ready for such events, he perfectly understood where he was and that at every next moment something unexpected could happen to her. So he resigned himself and told these guys that today he would eat them without cooking, straight from the giblets, as their squad leaders wanted. Their each of these prisoners considered themselves very strong and were ready to fight with a young man who had two hands in a cast. None of them considered him an opponent, so they hoped that they would quickly master him with the words of an unfinished idiot. These prisoners rushed at him with their fists. The prisoner who was closest to the young man and tried to strike him was immediately hit without even touching Du Zhanglong. The young man could not hit with his hands and so he kicked like this was my first one who flew away and fell to the floor before Zhang Long dealt him a few more blows so as to definitely neutralize him. This was his first ramen. There was still a sufficient number of him standing behind him from the same assistants who came here to punish the young man. Following the first one, the second one flew, who also tried to somehow engage in battle with the young man. But he also failed. Like the first one, he received several blows and lay on the floor. Then the young man could no longer tell which one of them was and which number he simply considered everyone who tried to approach him at any distance as his opponents, and dealt them quite strong blows so that they could not resist. The next one who came closer to the young man, he struck with his knee in the temporal part. This blow should turn him off for a long time and make him no longer want to deal with the young man. The third decided to approach from behind to strike and remain unnoticed so that the young man would not have time to react and strike back at him. This third one did not know the most important thing, that the young man sees everything and has some incredible speed of striking, so his plan turned out to be not very good. Regardless of where the blow would come from, the young man was ready to attack anyone who approached him, and in this case he also attacked the third one who was trying to be unnoticed. So this third one was in the same place as the previous two. In the doorway there was still one of those who had recently been ready to attack the young man. He stood with his hands clenched into fists, but he was restrained by what happened to his comrades who were lying on the floor. He was not ready to attack. Before Chang Gong asked this prisoner why he is standing there at the door and not coming up, if he came here along with all those who attacked him, then he should also behave just as aggressively. This prisoner stood and was afraid. The commander of his group began to shout at him to immediately begin to attack the young man, otherwise he would be punished. Du Zhangong looked at this prisoner. He was wondering what he would decide for himself because three of his comrades were already lying on earth. Would he want to join them or would he listen to his commander? This prisoner made a choice that he would listen to his commander and decided to attack Du Zhangong. Clenching his fists and teeth, he attacked the young man. When he approached Du Zhangong, he received a strong blow from a young man directly on the kneecap of his left leg. This prisoner immediately fell to the floor and grabbed his knee. The pain was so strong that he even screamed. Of course he won't be able to attack anymore. It's unlikely that he'll be able to walk for a while. It was the last one who was ready to fight with the young man. He sat and held his sore knee, looked at him and asked for mercy. Du Zhanglong doubted for a few seconds and thought about what to do with this last one. 
but then he realized that it was impossible to leave unpunished all those who were ready to cause him any harm. Therefore, he decided to strike one more blow, and this was the last one that was lying on the floor. So quickly he dealt with those who were supposed to teach him a lesson, the rest of the squad leaders stood and looked at him with their mouths open. Dujamong asked Nick if it was true that they didn't have ramen. All four group commanders didn't know how to tell him correctly. After all, they didn't expect such a turn of events. They were completely sure that they would punish this young man. One of the commanders said that they really don't have it, and ramen this is a special dish for this place, and they don't eat it that often either. The words of this commander made the young man very angry, and he told them if they don't have ramen, and they deceived him, then they are all definitely screwed and he is not going to regret deceiving any of them. And he also believed with food that such actions were unacceptable towards him, and he should teach everyone a lesson. All four commanders and other squads who were in this room all as one began to shout for the young man to wait and listen to them so that he would give them a chance. The young man shouted that his name was not Commander, but his name was Du Zhanglong, and that these people would remember this once and for all. No requests could stop the young man today. Not only was he deceived, but they also wanted to punish him for something he didn't do. Therefore, in the next second, everything that was on this table, stove, pan, sticks, flew away. And after the pan and chopsticks, the four who had just tried to deceive him flew. Exactly a few seconds later they were lying next to their prisoner assistants on the floor. The young man was pleased with himself that he was able to punish his offenders. But he was not happy with the fact that he could not eat deliciously today. Under Du Zhanggong's feet were the same chopsticks that they had eaten yesterday or ramen. He decided that if he didn't have to eat today, he had to take something out of this whole situation. And these were the same chopsticks that he decided to pick up from the floor. They were metal and could be useful to him, because here it was forbidden to eat with metal chopsticks. He put them in his pocket and thought to himself that he would take them with him at least in case they were useful to him. The squad leaders began to come to their senses and get up from the floor. They were afraid that the young man would start attacking them back, so they were in no particular hurry. When the young man left the room where all this was happening, he turned and finally told them that if Raman appeared then let them call him, and when he left completely he added that they wouldn't eat without him. Du Zhanglong went to his barracks, of course. Today he couldn't eat as tasty as yesterday, but today was also a good evening. The plan of the four detachment commanders failed instead of punishing, as they said, this upstart, themselves and their assistants were punished. The commander of the first detachment said that he cannot leave it like this, and he is ready to take revenge on him. Let this Du Zhanglong now live and be afraid in his place. The commander of the first detachment turned to the commander of the fifth detachment. He wanted to find a person who could definitely defeat this upstart with two broken arms. He asked if there was any crazy person in the detachment. The commander of the first detachment did not understand his question and asked why he needed such a person. The commander of the first detachment continued to talk about the need to call this man man and urgently need to talk to him. This is a matter of their honor. The commander of the fifth detachment asked if he really wanted to contact this crazy person but the commander of the first detachment was categorical and he definitely wanted to solve these problems. The person they needed was actually in the isolation ward right now. The commander of the fifth detachment said that this man-man is in isolation for one reason. He walked around and beat all the people around him. He was put in isolation for just one day. So tomorrow he will be out. From behind the doors of the detention center, a scream was heard. Someone did not agree that he was there. He shouted that he would never repeat this again. He already realized everything, but no one heard him, and he also shouted that he would kill all these scumbags who locked him here. The very next day, the guard opened the doors of this isolation ward and told the man-man to come out. After being there for one day, the man no longer wanted to scream and be indignant. When the guard took him out from behind the isolation ward, he asked if he had enough time to reflect on his behavior and if he was ready to go there again. The young man, whom the detachment commanders called crazy, replied that he had enough time and he understood everything, and from now on he will be very careful and will not get caught. The name of this young man was Chong Chansu. This was the same man-man who fought with everyone. It was his squad commanders who wanted to force him to take revenge for their Du Shengen. Young Chansu studied Taekwondo until high school. 
but he was unable to enter university due to the fact that his family was very poor, so he immediately decided to serve in the army. After he retired from the army, he worked in a factory. He still dreamed of becoming a student. He was very interested in student life and therefore he often went to the university which was located near his home. It was precisely because he was not a student but always made mistakes that near the university various rumors and legends began to gather around him. Students of one of the organizations who always saw him began to think that he was a spy. They, of course, wanted to immediately catch him and interrogated him, but he was beyond their power since he was an athlete. Therefore, he continued to go to the same institutions where all the other students gathered and looked at them from the outside. He really wanted to live a life the way they live. On one of these days, during a drunken fight with some other students, he was able to calm down and neutralize all the students who tried to attack him. When he fought, those students who considered him a spy saw him, how he dealt with several of his attackers, their suspicions became even greater. These students thought and decided to use a different method, they decided to make friends with him. So they approached the young man and started a conversation with him. One of these students asked whether he was studying with them or not and suggested that if the young man was bored, he should join them at their table. Of course not there were girls and it might not be that interesting, but it would be better than sitting alone. Usually he would still be suspicious, but the very fact that these students were the first to invite him to their table did not seem so suspicious. He liked that these students mistook him for their fellow student and were too happy about him, so he joined them without suspicion. They did this specifically to get him drunk, and who exactly is this young man? These students were not stupid and wanted to make sure that he was not a spy. They got him drunk to such a state that he passed out right at the table in this cafe. All they had to do was move him to one of the huge places. When Yung Chang Su woke up and tried to open his eyes, he realized that he was in some very dark room and there was no one around him. He didn't understand why it was so dark. He had a dark bandage over his eyes and he was completely tied to the chair on which he was sitting. To his question, he did not hear an answer. In response, he was asked a counter question. Why is he lying? The man did not quite understand what was being said and decided to ask again. The students who were sitting opposite him said that they looked for him in the student database, and there was no such student under the name Chong Chansu, and he did not study at their university. The young man did not understand. But this is not a crime, and he still did not understand why he was tied to a chair and the dark bandage covered his eyes. These students were completely sure that he was a spy and asked him about it. The young man did not understand where they got this idea from. One of the students said that he saw how Yung Chang Su fought and asked him where he learned it. It seemed to him that he could only learn to fight in the army or if he was someone's bodyguard. Yung Chang Su replied that he really served in the army, but he did not spy he used to do Taekwondo. That's why he knows how to fight. The young man claimed that he was not a spy. But the students or that it was up to them to decide and armed with sticks, they decided that this was how they could punish the spy. Then these students began to beat with sticks the young man who was tied up, sitting on a chair, motionless and blindfolded so that he could not see them. They thought it was very right. They were punishing the spy. This kind of bullying and violence against Chong Chang Su continued for another couple of hours. Blood dripped from his early floor, but he could not resist in any way. The young man, already completely exhausted, constantly repeated that he was really not a spy and that these students were deeply mistaken in beating him. They didn't understand why he was so stubborn and didn't want to admit that he was a spy. There were completely wounds dripping blood from them. But Yung Chang Su told them that they were mistaken. One of the students said that he didn't like his face. It was some kind of scary man and began to strike him so that he could not even respond. The second of the students said if there was a conversation about the face, then you probably need to hit him on the head a couple of times so that he wakes up and starts saying something again. One of these students said that the young man was preparing for the fact that he was going to hit him on the head. Chung Chan Su resisted and asked him to wait. Well, this student was aggressive and it was already impossible to stop him. He liked to hit the defenseless and motionless Chong Chansu on the head. Yung Chansu begged him and asked for mercy for him and all his other friends, but none of them were going to stop. They continued to kill the young man. After a while, one of the students said that he was very sorry. This guy was in very bad condition, and he said that this would not work. You need to untie him, and at least take him outside to the air. 
As soon as the young man opened his eyes and regained consciousness, he immediately received a blow to the head. They demanded only one thing, that he admit that he was a spy. These students turned out to be quite bloodthirsty. They dealt blow after blow. Chong Chance periodically lost consciousness from pain and loss of blood. Well, after these fools untied his hands and untied his legs from the chair, Chan Chang Su was now free and he could stand up for himself through the pain. So he immediately kicked one of the students who was constantly hitting him on the head with a stick. These students could not understand how just this young man was unconscious within a few minutes. He was throwing blows in defense of himself. His offenders should have gotten what they deserved. Everything happened very quickly. The young man scattered his offenders in different directions so that they lay on the ground motionless. There was only this bespectacled man left who also hit him on the head with a stick. He thought that after striking Zhang Chance several times he would again lose consciousness and lie on the floor writhing in pain. But seeing how this young man dealt with his comrades, he decided that it was time to leave this room. He did not want to be beaten like his fellow students. But Chan Changsu didn't let him run far. He kicked him in the head. The young man didn't really understand where he was hitting and therefore struck randomly at his opponents. When the students realized that the force was not on their side, they began to ask for mercy. They asked the young man to wait and talk to them. John Chansu was categorical because these people did not want to listen to him when he asked them. A few minutes ago, Chan Changsu asked them to talk. He explained that he was not a spy and did not understand why they were beating him. Now the situation has changed and now these students are asking him. All these beatings and bullying, as well as the last blow to the head, if you think about it, ordinary students would not do this. These idiots knocked the common sense out of Yung Changsu, and that's why he decided that they are the spies of North Korea too. Therefore, the young man said that he would kill them all himself. They would not have a chance, just like they did not give him a chance. Therefore, Chan Changsu took the same stick with which they hit him on the head and began to hit all the students who participated in beating him on the head too. And in the end he killed all those students by smashing their heads. Having killed these people, Chong Changsu finally lost his mind. He was convinced that they were definitely rats and North Korea and that's why he killed them. In the end, Chung Changsu went completely crazy and began to wander around the city in this form until he was picked up at night by a car from the social center which is how he got there. A car from a social center picked him up on one of the streets at night and brought him to a social institution where he became a prisoner like everyone else. Usually he is calm when nothing irritates his mind. He goes to work just like everyone else. If no one bothers him or touches him, then he doesn't touch them. So this time, two of the prisoners were sitting talking to each other about how the street was very hot now and how nice it would be to eat cold noodles. One of these prisoners said that he would now be ready to scoop up a portion of cold ham hen noodles. The whole conversation was heard by Zhang Chansu. He could not understand why exactly ham hen noodles. If there are noodles, then it should only be penyan noodles. Most likely, these prisoners don't understand anything about food. He caught himself thinking that they were talking about Kaminskia and not Penyanskia. This seemed very suspicious to him. Something happened in his head and he immediately reacted to it. Yung Changsu asked them who they are. These two prisoners didn't understand why he was asking them about this. Yung Changsu didn't understand why these two were remembering northern cities. Are they in North Korea? Are you here to find out something? The young man immediately decided that they were spies and told them about it. He did not intend to bother with them for a long time. Are these two prisoners shouting back at him? What kind of nonsense is he talking about? That's why they called him crazy because he could, like now, call someone a spy. Yung Changsu began to figure it out for me for a long time and entered into a fight with these two prisoners. He did not give a single chance for their protection. He simply kicked them because he was good at the martial art of Taekwondo. When Yung Changsu carried out another massacre, this time none of the guards could calm him down. They were afraid of him too. This is exactly the life Chung Chansu had. He beat everyone who mentioned North Korea or spies on the day when the young man left the detention center. He was calm and worked like everyone else. The detachment commander approached him and asked if everything was all right. The young man politely replied that he was all right. The detachment commander said that while he was in the isolation ward, he learned important information and was ready to share this information with him. The detachment commander said that they have one spy from the north and he is in another detachment and that this young man was only recently placed here. 
Chong Chong Su asked if this is really true and let them tell him his name if possible. His commander said that such a person is the commander of the third detachment, and his name is Du Zhang He is the very spy that the young man has been looking for for so long. Chung Chang Su said that if this is Du Shengen, the commander of the third detachment, then he will definitely kill this rat sent from North Korea. It was an ordinary working day and there were quite a lot of people in the office rooms, each doing their own work. Today the gentleman was not in a brown suit, but in a gray suit. It was his new suit, as always. He was sitting at his workplace and smoking. His assistant was sitting opposite him. The assistant reported to him that he went to the very guest house where Du Jianlong lived. What that girl said turned out to be true. The owner of this guest house confirmed her words. The owner of the office lit another cigarette, listened very carefully to his assistant, told him thank you for the work done. Well, everything he said was very strange. According to them, Du Shengen turns out that he really disappeared in Day Sang. Well then, what happened to him? Was he attacked then who? These people was it Park Guangho who took revenge. No, Park Guangho is looking for him himself. He recently drove up to find out where Du Shengen is, so it wasn't him. But then where could he have gone? Maybe someone found out that Du Zhanglong received a lot of money from him and decided to attack him and take all the money. But that was also stupid because he immediately transferred the money to Du Zhanggong's account, so he didn't carry cash. Give me a bank book. He doesn't carry a bank book with him, so there was no point in catching him. Then it's generally unclear what happened to Du Zhanglong and where he could have gone. It doesn't happen that people disappear without a trace. Someone must have seen him. The young man thought that he would have to look for Du Zhanglong himself. After all, he disappeared help him in a strange city and he had two broken arms. The young man got himself thinking that if Park Guanho is also looking for him, he can simply ask him what he knows. That man went to his opponent. When he came into his office, Park Guanho asked the young man if he really wanted to talk to him. He thought it was very strange. Thought Park Guanho that the young man is just impudent after everything he did to him and his business. He came to him to talk. Park Guanho was strange that this young man came and decided to ask him about the guy who ruined everything for him. Of course the young man was very uncomfortable, but he had no other choice. He had to find out where his army comrade was. Park Guanho looked at his opponent who was sitting opposite him, and he really wanted to just lay him on all four sides. But on the other hand, Park Guanho thought that if this guy stepped into his business, he would be able to free Sankal, and he himself didn't succeed. Park Guanho said that he knows where this Du Shengen is. The young man was very happy now he knows where to look for him. Park Guanho said that he didn't see him with his own eyes. He was locked in a very strange place. The man didn't understand what he was talking about and what it could mean. Park Guanho continued to tell him if he heard his father shaking the provision of Dae Sing who travels around the city and collects homeless people and gives them housing. The young man asked his interlocutor which Dae Sang center he was referring to and why exactly Du Shengen should be located there. It was a closed type social institution that was located outside the city. All the homeless people were taken there, and sometimes people who simply spent the night on the street for some reason were taken there. In this social institution, people who went there were called prisoners. They had no right to leave there and had to go to work every day. Sometimes it was very hard work. Today was the day when the third squad was working at the quarry because Du Zhanglong could not do anything with his hands. So he always carried bags of stones. Unlike other prisoners, he carried not one but three bags. When the young man dumped these bags instead of where they put them, he needed to go for the next batch and this lasted the whole day while they worked at the quarry. Before Changong, it was time to rest and took a break. It was very hard work and required fairly good physical training. Not every one of these prisoners could work here. The young man simply decided to stand and look around. There was a huge wall in front of him. This wall was part of the fencing of a social institution. Before Xiangong stood looking at this wall, it was formed as a result of the construction of a social institution, and he did not see any additional security or mere precautions on the tops of this wall. Although the wall itself was a kind of precautionary measure, it was very steep and there was practically no way to climb up it. A plan arose in his head, well, he had to try, if he escaped from here and climbed over this wall, then no one would stop him, but for this he needed special training and it was necessary for his two hands to heal. When Du Zhanglong stood and looked at this wall, 
taking a short break for himself, he heard voices from other prisoners. They asked him what he was doing there. Why was work stopped? They wondered why he was staring at this wall. The prisoners from his squad immediately guessed why their commander was standing and looking in that direction. One of these prisoners asked the other whether there was anyone who had dreamed of escaping through this wall while working in the quarry. This prisoner most likely decided that their commander was thinking about this. The second one answered him that this wall was unbearable to overcome even with two healthy arms, but he also without hands. The prisoners continued to hit the huge stones with a sledgehammer, breaking them into small pieces. That was their job for today. One of these prisoners said that every time he gets this job, it is very difficult for him to chop these stones. The second one replied that recently it has become much easier. The first prisoner did not understand why he said that. The second one said that when the commander was changed, no one beats him, not the commander himself or other workers, and therefore it is much easier to work, the first prisoner agreed with him. And he also added the second that it seems to him that their overseer has become much calmer and no longer uses physical force when they work. This warden stopped picking on the prisoners. If this had happened earlier, he would definitely have picked on them if he saw that they decided to take a break and catch their breath. Sankal today was the first time at the quarry. He was put through a process where he had to break large stones into small ones. He was very indignant because he did not understand why he had to do this. The guard looked and thought that it would be very wonderful to finish off this Choi Songchio right here in the quarry and say that it was an accident. But he remembered the promise he made to do Zhang Long and could not do otherwise because the young man knew the whole truth about him. This guard once again could not move in front of this guy because he could punish him, despite the fact that he was a prisoner just like everyone else. The warden was very angry with both Songkal and Du Shengen. He was completely dependent on them. One of them owed money, and the other knew everything about him. Someone approached this guard from behind and clearly asked for an apology. This man wanted to find out something. But this was not a prisoner from this detachment. The prisoner who approached the guard. It was Zhang Chansu, he asked if the third detachment was working here. The guard answered him that yes, indeed, the third detachment was working here today. This young man was interested in only one question. He needed the commander of the third detachment. Du Zhanglong, he came here to deal with him. The guard asked who the young man needed and asked him what squad he was from. Chung Chansu saw the guard that he was from the fifth squad. Then the guard asked why he needed the commander of the third detachment. Du Zhanglong, the young man said that he could answer this question only in the guard's ear. Ch Chung Chung Su quietly told the guard in his ear that this squad leader, Du Zhanglong, is a spy from the north, so he wants to kill him. The guard didn't understand what kind of nonsense this young man was talking about. He didn't believe him. None of the prisoners accused another of spying. There were only alcoholics or homeless people, but not a spy at all. The guard remembered that this young man was the same crazy one who was in the 5th detachment, and he was recently taken to the isolation ward because he fought with everyone. This man and from the 5th squad usually he is normal, but sometimes he showed signs of insanity, and then he attacked others with the words that those spies from the north. The guard thought that he did not know what he was doing. This young man but the fact that he fought very well and was quite strong, making everyone around him nervous. So the guard thought maybe give this one from the 5th Division a chance, and show him which of these people is the leader of the Du Zhang Gong squad. The guard thought for another minute, and decided that he needed to arrange a meeting between this man Nan and Du Zhang Long. This would be the solution to his question. The guard thought that in this way he could get rid of this commander. Du Zhang Long, the voice of another guard was immediately heard calling Yung Chang Su. It was a guard from the 5th Detachment. He came closer and told the young man why he was shying away from threatening with the huge baton that was in his hands. The guard shook this baton in front of his face and said that the young man had only recently left the detention center. Most likely he liked it there, and he wants to go there again. Something was definitely wrong in this young man's head. When he brought the baton, he was very scared. Most likely, he remembered the moment when he was beaten on the head with a stick. Yung Changsu fell to his knees on the ground and began to ask for forgiveness from the guard, saying that he was not a spy. No, he was not a spy. The guards, in a conversation among themselves, decided that this young man had gone completely crazy. The only thing they didn't understand was what the spy had to do with it. 
The guards from the 5th Detachment said to their colleague the guard of the 3rd Detachment that he was standing there, and his ears were hanging open. It was necessary to immediately report that this man-man was wandering around outside his zone. Our guard of the 3rd Detachment made excuses and said that he was interested in hearing what this idiot would tell the guard of the 5th Detachment replied that he was not saying anything except that he was starting his organ about spies. He had nothing more to say. The guard of the 5th Squad kicked Yung Chansu in the shoulder and said that he would stop reading mantras so that he would get up and go to his place. The guard of the 5th Detachment took his prisoner and they left because each detachment had a certain territory in which prisoners could be located. The guard of the third squad was not entirely happy with what just happened. Of course it would have been better if his plan that he had just come up with had been carried out, and this man-man had beaten Du Zhanglong. Had du Zhanglong approached the guard and asked what happened why it was so noisy here. He was always aware of the events that took place in his squad and on his territory. The security guard sharply told him to go and continue working. Nothing happened here and it doesn't concern him at all. The young man agreed with him. When he left, he said that if something happened, he would be dealt with right away. They told him he was ready to sort out a conflict situation that could arise in his squad. The guard did not explain anything and said that it would be good if he told the squad leader Du Zhanglong and went about his business. The guard thought that this squad leader, Du Zhanglong, was a big impudent person and he needed to be taught a lesson so that he would not interfere in security affairs. The guard decided that if this man-man from the 5th squad came to their territory again, they would have to force him to break the hands of this upstart. If he succeeds, the guard thought, then another plan arose in his head. This concerned Sankal. He also interfered with him a lot. Then it will be necessary to tell this crazy man. The guard thought that Sunchal was also a spy and let him deal with him. The guard really didn't want to give the money that Sunchal owed. After meeting with Park Guanho, the young man came out. He knew exactly where his friend was who helped him with his business. Du Shengen. He needed to get to this day Sang social center. Park Guang Ho turned to Zhou Tae Mun. Most likely he hasn't told everything he knew yet. He left the most important thing for last. Park Guang Ho told Zhou Tae Mun that if he just wants to break in there, he shouldn't waste his time. It won't work out. The young man asked him why he thinks so. Park Guang Ho replied that he has already tried to do it. Park Guang Ho began to explain to Zhou Tae Mun what the Dae Sang police should know, so they came and didn't let him come in. It's all very suspicious. Zhou Tae Mun was surprised that Park Guang Ho decided to involve law enforcement agencies in this. Park Guang Ho added that these police warned him and said that this social institution is protected by very influential people. Therefore, the task for Zhou Tae Mun was to find some other way to extract Du Zhang Long from this social institution. Zhuo Mun barely two assistants got into the car and went to the office where they worked. After this meeting, of course, it became a little clear where to look. Before Zhang Long. Well, there were still quite a lot of questions, and they needed to be resolved. Kyu Mun ordered his assistants to find out everything about this social center, and to do it as quickly as possible. And also for the assistants to know why Park Guangho so cordially provided all this information. Most likely he had some kind of plan. Sankal had been there for several days in a social institution. Every time he was in the cafeteria, he looked at the food they were being served and it disgusted him. He had to live quietly and not arouse suspicion because Du Zhanglong said so. Who saved him? Then the guard wanted to kill him. Well, there was one more question that constantly tormented Sankal. He didn't understand how he could get out of here now. His comrades couldn't pull him out of this social institution. Therefore, Sankal behaved like an ordinary prisoner, despite the fact that the guard he was guarding owed him a fairly large amount of money. Of course this all irritated him very much. He was annoyed by the guard who walked around and constantly looked at him. Sankal understood perfectly well that this guard could set him up at any moment. This is exactly what the guard was going to do. He looked around the cafeteria with his eyes to find that same man and from the fifth squad. He wanted to set this man and not only against Du Jang Gong but also against Sankal. The dining room was the only place where all the prisoners gathered at the same time, and therefore the crazy commander of the third detachment from the fifth detachment ate together at the same time. A man man, even when he was calm and did not bully anyone, he was always thoughtful. He did not share his thoughts with anyone. Du Jamong ate in the same dining room. He persuaded himself to swallow every spoonful. 
Of course he understood that it tasted very disgusting food, but he needed to eat so that his hands would heal faster. The crazy man looked at Du Zhanglong and thought to himself how he could eat such food with such an appetite, so he concluded that he was definitely from the north, and he was a spy. A guard approached the man man, and his name was Zhang Chansu. This was a guard of the third squad. He most likely had something in mind and wanted this young man to bring his plan to life. The guard started from afar that the young man didn't care. He walked up to them and just like that, Chung Chansu listened carefully to everything that this guard was telling him. A guard asked a crazy prisoner from the 5th Division if it was true that Du Zhanglong was a northerner, and most likely a spy. He said that he was not scolding, he had come, but he also suspected that there was a spy in his squad. These words by the guard alerted Chung Chang Su. Therefore, Chung Chang Su asked the guard who else he suspected of being a spy and which of his prisoners were from North Korea. The guard thought to himself that this crazy man really believed him. Now he can't even lift a finger. This young Changsu will do everything for him. The guard told this crazy young man to quickly finish his food and get out. He was ready to tell him who needed to be caught. A little later, events began to develop according to the plan that was the security guard. This crazy young man from the fifth group was supposed to destroy his opponents, which the guard pointed out to him. One of them was Songkal. When he went out on the street after this lunch, he thought that he would die. Because they were given such food that it was unbearable to eat. Songkal couldn't get used to the conditions in which he now lived, and most importantly, he got here of his own free will, and only this thought made him feel even worse. And his path was blocked by a young man, the same crazy one from the 5th Detachment, Chan Changsu, who asked if his name was really Songkal. Toothless did not immediately understand what was going on, and therefore asked this young man what he needed among these prisoners he could not have known. John Changsu answered nothing and began to attack the Toothless without explanation. He quickly moved towards him in order to strike. This crazy young man shouted that Sankal is a spy and he is from the north, so he is obliged to destroy him. Toothless stood with his mouth open. I don't understand what this crazy guy is talking about. Young Changsu did not hesitate and tried to strike. Toothless reacted in time because he also served in the army and knew how to fight well. Chan Changsu was very surprised because all the prisoners who were in this institution with whom he tried to fight, no one resisted him. Indeed, Chan Changsu had an opponent who was ready to engage him in battle. His blows received worthy retaliatory blows. And even at some point it seemed that this fight was for the toothless Sankal, and this man-man from the fifth group lost today. Without teeth, without thinking twice, he kicked his opponent's lower jaw so that he was already behind him. The blow was strong enough. Well, this crazy young man remained standing on his feet. His eyes became crazy and he no longer understood anything. He saw his opponent and had to destroy him. This crazy young Changsu looked at his opponent and repeated only one thing, that he was a spy and must destroy him. The eyes of the young man were crazy and looked at one point. Toothless asked this man-man who he is, why he doesn't attack him and how he knows his name. Young Changsu didn't say anything. He just stood and looked at one point with his eyes. Clearly something was wrong. His pupils were dilated. Such eyes only exist in crazy people who don't fully understand what they are doing. This crazy young man didn't want to answer a single question. He just stood and looked. Toothless couldn't understand what this man needed from him. And in addition, he still didn't want to answer his questions. The next moment, this crazy young man unexpectedly struck the toothless man with his foot. This blow was unexpected and he could not get away from it. Toothless fell to the ground and this crazy young man continued to kick him. Toothless could no longer resist so he received blow after blow. Yung Changsu finished off the closest toothless person on earth. He struck him blow after blow with his fist on the head. Splashes and blood scattered in all directions. Yung Changsu was determined because he believed that he was destroying a spy from the north so he decided that he needed to deal the final blow so that he would be destroyed and with the words die rat, he began to deal a series of blows to the toothless. He really was crazy because he could beat a toothless person lying on the ground. No one does that. Even in battle they don't beat someone who has fallen to the ground. And he not only beat, but he also strangled Songkal, who was lying on the ground toothless, could no longer resist and therefore made barely audible sounds. Yung Changsu went completely crazy, he shouted that his opponent was a rat, and he must die now. 
so he continued to strangle him. Toothless not only didn't resist, but he was already barely breathing. The hands of this crazy person were squeezing his throat more and more, so Toothless stopped breathing worse and worse. At some point, the Toothless guy passed out, and his eyes began to roll back a little more, and this crazy man will really kill Sanko for considering him a spy. Someone came up from behind and called out to Zhang Changsu. The young man did not expect this because he was sure that there were very few people in this place. It was the same guy from the third squad who became Du Shangen's assistant, and asked this crazy man what he was doing because he was sitting on Sankal and strangling him. At that moment, Yung Chamsu got distracted from his opponent and looked towards this guy and began to say something incomprehensible, trying to justify himself. At the same moment, Zhang Chamsu was hit in the face by his opponent's fist. This blow was strong enough and therefore the young man jumped back. Instead, Everything that happened was quite uncrowded and therefore Toothless had to run out to where there were as many prisoners as possible. Sankal jumped up from the ground and began to run with all his might towards where his squad was. There should have been Du Zhanlong who could help him in this situation. This man and from the 5th detachment ran after him. Although Toothless managed to escape from his hands, he believed that the matter was not over yet and he had to finish him off. Sankal couldn't understand what she found on this young man and why he calls him a spy. Most likely he's gone crazy. Indeed, Du Zhanlong, as the third-in-command commander, was always near his squad and now he was also in place after lunch. There was a time when they could not work but relax. When Du Zhanlong saw a toothless man running away from someone, ask him what happened to him, and who beat him again. Toothless replied that the man-man who was running behind him wants to kill him. He calls him a spy and says that he is from North Korea. Indeed, a young man with crazy eyes was running behind him today. Du Jamong saw him for the second time on the territory of his squad. The young man who ran up looked simply crazy, dilated pupils in his eyes, tightly clenched teeth and clenched fists. All this indicated that he was aggressive. Du Jamong saw this young man running up and thought that he did not understand what happened here. But clearly this young man looks dangerous. Therefore, as the commander of the third detachment, he decided to block his path. This man, man, when he came closer, asked Du Zhanlong who he was and why he was interfering. The young man calmly replied that he was the commander of the third detachment, and the man, man was now going to kill a worker from his detachment. So he wanted to find out what happened. Yung Changsu, hearing that it was the commander of the third detachment, was even happy this morning. He came specifically for him because at first he was told that he was the spy and it was he who needed to be destroyed. This madman asked the young man his name, Du Jamong the young man grinned and answered is he really so popular that everyone knows his name. A smile appeared on Yung Changsu's face, he had finally found his target for which he was hunting. He said that he knew it. His eyes became even crazier and his facial expression was even more aggressive. This crazy young man from the 5th squad said that Du Zhanlong is protecting their rats just like him, and they are all spy rats. For the young man, this was news that he never even expected to hear. Where could this man and get the idea that he was a spy? Well, this man man wasn't going to stop and was ready to attack, so he tried to strike with his right fist. Well, the young man was a fairly experienced fighter so he was easily able to escape this blow and a number of subsequent blows that this crazy young man tried to deliver. After dodging one blow, Du Zhanlong did not expect that this young man was so prepared and strong, so Du Zhanlong missed the kick from his opponent. Du Zhanlong understand what is wrong with this young man, why does he attack them and is ready to fight without explanation. The next moment, Yung Changsu tried to strike another kick at the commander of the third squad, but this time Du Zhangan managed to get back from the blow. Yung Changsu looked at Du Zhanlong with crazy eyes and tried to continuously attack, striking one after another, but he did not always succeed because he had a fairly experienced opponent. In most cases, Du Zhanlong simply tried to avoid blows and not strike himself. He wanted to understand this situation that had developed. He needed to know exactly why this young man was behaving this way. But Du Zhanlong was not always able to avoid the blows. Sometimes he missed, and John Changsu achieved his goal. This time he succeeded, he struck another blow at Du Zhanlong. A security guard watched everything that happened with the commander of the 3rd Detachment, and the crazy young man of the 5th Detachment from around the corner. He did not interfere, 
but quietly watched so that no one would notice him. The guard thought to himself why is this young man fighting with the commander of the 3rd Detachment Du Shengen, and not with Choi Sankal, as he told him. Of course, it wasn't that this guard came up with it, but it would also be nice for this commander if they beat him, so they'll teach him a lesson and he won't be such an upstart. Du Zhanglong immediately realized that this young man throws these blows for a reason. He definitely trained and knows how to fight well. After each blow, Chan Changsu stopped in a certain stance. His blows were accurate and targeted, so Du Zhanglong came to the conclusion that this young man was practicing Taekwondo. Therefore, Du Zhanglong that in any case you just need to not give in to him and not let him strike, and it would also be good to know why he does this. When Zhang Changsu tried to strike the next blow, Du Zhanglong was able to get away from this blow by crouching at the last moment. Well, it couldn't go on for so long. Something had to be decided with this young man. One more blow and Du Zhanglong again dodges him. Obviously, this madman from the 5th squad had good technique, but his reaction was a little slowed down, so Du Zhanglong managed to dodge. Chong Changsu went on a full offensive and was ready to grab the commander of the third squad by the throat so as to surely destroy him. As du Zhanglong thought to herself if this young man is a taekwondo player, then you need to attack him from close range, otherwise he will throw punches that could hit him. Of course, he was very sorry that his hands were in such a state, and he could not fully engage in battle with him, unlike many others with whom he fought here. This young man was quite prepared. Therefore, Du Zhanglong decided to come closer to him so that he could not reach him with his blows. After all, the most important thing was to make sure that this madman did not get his hands on him. When Yung Changsu tried to strike the next blow, the young man walked away from him but thought, if he aims at his hands, it will be very dangerous for him. Du Zhanglong thought that this guy was different from all those he fought with here. But then why was such a strong young man locked up in this social institution? He wasn't even injured like Du Zhanglong. The next moment, Yung Changsu began shouting for the commander of the 3rd Detachment to surrender, and he is a spy right after these words. Everything is clear to Zangan. This young man is crazy and is clearly not on friendly terms with his head. Then the commander of the 3rd Detachment decided to ask this young man why he thought that he was a spy. Most likely someone told him so. He couldn't have come up with it himself. Zhang Changsu shouted that he had already said that the commander of the 3rd Detachment wants to protect his comrade, and he is from the north. Then Du Changgan asked him why he thinks that person is a spy. Chion Changsu replied that someone told him that he was a spy. The guard from around the corner heard this whole conversation. He thought if Du Changgan finds out that it was him, then he will tell Song Kol and then he will have there will be huge problems. Before Changgan, I was wondering who this person was who so wanted Sankal and him to be destroyed. But Zhang Changsu was not entirely adequate, and so he began to say something incomprehensible. At first he began to remember who told him, but nothing worked for him because he could not remember what happened a couple of minutes ago. Perhaps it was due to a head injury or, in general, because he went crazy. When the guard saw that the young man couldn't remember who spoke to him, little by little he let it go. He thought, doesn't he remember? If this is so, then it was very good for the guard. Such crazy people are used to the fact that no one takes them seriously. Therefore, if someone starts pretending that they are really interested, they will start talking even more nonsense. First they will listen carefully, and then insist on what someone has convinced them of, and do it so believably because they themselves believe in it. Well, if you start to refute what they say, you just need to do it very tactfully. Du Zhanglong tried to do it and told the young man to tell him who told him. Zhang Changsu tried for several minutes to remember who it was, who told him. Nothing worked, so the commander of the 3rd Detachment said that most likely he forgot or no one told him about it at all. Yung Changsu was completely sure that someone told him that Sankal and his commander of the 3rd Detachment were spies and they were from the north. He even started to get nervous and shout that no, he's not lying and didn't even intend to take it. He remembers exactly what he said, that they are spy rats. This is exactly the kind of reaction that could be expected from a person who is not all right with his psyche, if you deny everything he says. Deny it was this kind of behavior that was right in the hands of Du Zhanglong. Because when a person is nervous, he cannot control the situation and therefore cannot be concentrated on the blows. At such a moment, the commander of the third detachment managed to kick him right in the face. 
You are crazy. This kick calmed the attacker Yung Changsu a little. But Chong Changsu was not going to stop and decided that he had to bring his work to the end and finally resolve the issue with spies from the north. He tried to strike but for some reason they all missed. Most likely it was because he was not concentrating on striking and was simply aggressive towards his opponent. Since he was no longer focused on his technique, his blows were inaccurate and easy to escape. Before Zhang Ong, this crazy man didn't seem so strong anymore. Du Zhang Ong decided that it was impossible to continue like this and this showdown had already been going on for quite a long time. He decided to end it and at the right moment struck with his knee to the chest from the side of Zhang Chengsu's heart. This young man crouched down after receiving the blow and grabbed his left side with his hand. In this social institution, no one had ever dealt such blows to Chan Chengsu. And in general, no one resisted him. In his head in the sense that this young man, the commander of the 3rd Detachment Du Zhang Long, really went through some kind of special training, that he knows how to avoid blows and strikes very hard. When Du Zhang Long, after the strike, decided to strike again so that for sure this young man calmed down, he shouted that enough was enough, but Du Zhang Long struck him. After the blow, Chan Changsu was lying on the ground, getting up. He said that the commander of the third squad fights very well and he probably went through special training in the north. This crazy young man was still sure that there were spies around him, and he now entered into battle with the spy. Du Zhang said that he really went through special training, but he is not a spy about the fact that this young man is a little confused. Chung Chansa didn't understand what he was talking about and why he was confused. Du Zhang continued to say that he was the one who caught these spies, which is why he underwent special training. This didn't even occur to Chung Changsu. Was he mistaken and this commander of the 3rd Detachment is not a spy, but the one who catches them? Yung Changsu asked him is it really true? Du Zhang decided that if such a conversation started, then he would brag a little about his exploits if such a case came up. Du Changgong said that he had captured at least one battalion of North Koreans. These words made an extraordinary impression on Chung Changsu. He sat and listened to every word that the commander of the 3rd Detachment said. Du Zhanglong continued to talk about his service in the army, and said that he knew for sure that the guy he was chasing was not from the north at all. After listening carefully to everything that Du Zhanglong said, the young man said that now everything became clear to him, and he wanted to ask for an apology from him for considering him a spy. For, and he respects him very much, and therefore has no complaints against him, and wants Du Zhanglong to give him a friend. Before Zhanglong, I didn't think that this young man would apologize to him so quickly. For this it's enough to tell the whole truth about himself. On the territory of this social institution, life was usually a succession of prisoners. As always, they had to live according to the schedule that they had for that day. Sanko, yes, I was around the corner, and thought what was wrong with this crazy man. That he first attacked, and then chased him just a few more minutes, and he could have strangled him. Someone approached Sanko from behind. He was a little scared because he thought this is the craziest young man and he wants to start fighting with him again. But it was Du Zhanglong. He said that everything was fine. He dealt with this crazy person who was chasing him. Sankal was wondering what happened. Du Zhanglong said that he had sorted out everything and with whom the misunderstanding that Sankal was a toothless spy was indignant what kind of misunderstanding this guy was just crazy. Du Zhanglong said that he understood him. So he tried to figure it out and settle everything that just happened. And now this crazy person won't bother him anymore. And Du Zhanglong also said that that's why this Zhang Changsu came to ask for his forgiveness, and that same crazy person came out from around the corner. But he was already calm. From behind Du Zhanglong, the voice of that same crazy person was heard. He said that he was asking for forgiveness, and that he understood everything wrong. Sankal asked him where he came from in the hall and why he started doing this. Du Zhanglong said that the young man said that someone definitely told him about this, but he doesn't remember who it was. Sankal asked him what it was and why he decided to kill him. I don't even understand who put him up to it. Du Zhanglong came closer to Sankal and quietly told him that he sees something. This young man is out of his mind, so he needs to understand and forgive him. Sankal listened to the commander of the third detachment and said that he understands and forgives this young man Zhang Changsu, that he is really sorry, Mr. Du Zhanglong's acquaintance cannot be a spy, and he was deeply mistaken. 
Toothless did not understand what kind of words these were, sir, and why this man and was called Du Jean Long, sir. The commander of the third detachment explained that there was nothing like that here. Du Jean Long said that this young man says that they respect him, therefore, he wants to address him in a proper manner, and therefore call him Mr. Now Yung Chang Su was not at all aggressive. A crazy smile appeared on the street. He probably really went crazy because he believed everything they said. As usual, all the squad commanders gathered in the dining room. They were already trying to solve their problems that arose during the day, and today was no exception. They all got together but couldn't understand how it happened that after being released from the isolation ward, this man-man had to teach the commander of the third detachment a lesson. But nothing like that happened, it's nonsense. They sat and discussed with each other what had happened. The commander of the 5th detachment was completely sure that his prisoners, Chan Changsu, definitely had to finish off this commander of the 3rd detachment. The only thing they didn't understand was why then they were walking like this. This crazy man follows the commander of the 3rd like a devoted dog. There was no murder there at all and this was incomprehensible to them. All four commanders of other detachments gathered did not know what to do now. They had absolutely no single plan. The guard didn't like the whole situation that happened either. The only thing that calmed him down was that this man and didn't remember who told him about the spies. The guard was very angry and thought that he needed to come up with something as soon as possible to get rid of these idiots anyway. He needed to get rid of Sung Cho because he owed him money. When they went to dinner, Yung Chang Su began to tell Du Zhanlong that at first he thought that they were also spies. Du Zhanlong asked him where he got this information from. At first, Yung Chang Su said that he didn't remember who told him about this, but he definitely remembered that someone told him to do it. And then at some point he remembered that it was the commander of his squad and it was he who said that the commander of the third squad was a spy and he needed to be killed. Du Zhang Long immediately realized that a coalition had gathered against him from other squad leaders and they wanted revenge for what happened yesterday in the dining room. All four commanders and other squads were sitting separately at the same table. They were discussing something among themselves. They clearly did not like the way Zhang Chansu behaved. Now it became clear who was using this poor man man because it didn't take much effort to convince him that someone was a spy. Before Chang Gong, it became clear who slandered him. He sat and picked up the food that was given to him in the dining room. Well, who needed to call Sang Kao a spy? That was the question. The only one who benefits from this it was the guard, except for him. There is no one to wish harm to the toothless one. He already tried to kill Sangka once, which means this time it was he who could say. Today was the day when the third detachment was working at the quarry. The guard, as always, stood and made sure that every prisoner was not distracted but was working. Before Zhang Long, as always, he wore huge bags of stones. He could not do anything else because he had plaster on his hands. His assistant, who took care of him from the very beginning, stood today and broke huge stones. The guard was thinking what to do now. After all, he didn't have much time. He needed to do something to provoke the situation. This guy stood and broke the blocks into small stones. It was quite difficult for a completely unprepared person to do this, and among these prisoners there were no those for whom it was easy. Hitting me is not an easy job, so the guy decided to rest a little. He had a whole day ahead and he still needed to do this for a long time. He placed his huge hammer and leaned on it, and decided to stand for a few minutes to rest. If he had not done this, then after a few blows he could have simply fallen. The guard decided to take advantage of this situation and punish this guy for the last time. This guard did not touch any of the prisoners. Therefore, all the prisoners of this detachment worked calmly, and they never had any complaints. Today this guy thought in the same way that he could take a break and he didn't even expect that the next moment the guard would take him and hit him in the face with his palm. The blow was delivered very unexpectedly. All the prisoners in the detachment paused their work and looked in the direction where it had just been noisy. They hadn't had anything like that recently, and they hadn't had any run-ins with the guard either. The guard, in an orderly tone, asked the guy why he was messing around, to which he replied that he wasn't messing around, he just wanted to catch his breath. The guy was standing holding part of his face with his hand where he had just hit this guard. He didn't expect that this would start again in their squad and the guards would beat the prisoners like before. One got the impression that the guard didn't hear at all what this guy was saying, shouting at him, 
and said that he was also snapping back besides the fact that he didn't want to work and hit him one more time. The commander of the 3rd Detachment, Du Zhanglong, heard this noise and hurried to the place where these events took place. During the entire time he was commander, this never happened. The guards beat the prisoner. The guards said that lately he had become too kind to them, so they got loose and stopped working properly. The guy made excuses and said that no, everything is wrong. The guard could not calm down and continued to say that this guy's tongue had become too long and that's why he talked a lot, took out his baton and began to threaten her. The guard struck the young man with this baton and told him to first apologize when he counted him out. He had no right to make excuses to the guard. This guard, with all his might, bided over and over again the guy who was lying on the ground and covering his head, while he shouted that this prisoner was a pathetic type, that he represented no one and therefore had no right to vote. Someone behind the guard told him to stop and explain himself in words. Well, the guard wasn't even going to listen to anyone who would tell him what to do. Therefore, when the guard turned his head and saw the commander of the 3rd Detachment, he said in an arrogant voice what he wanted from him, and that he had no right to make comments to him. Before Zhang Meng, I would remind the guard that not long ago they had a very good talk with him, and it seemed to him that he understood everything. It was clear from the guard that he was up to something, so he behaved in such a way, he loudly shouted at everyone and even at Du Zhang Long. Walking a little closer to the young man, this guard said what about that conversation, the last time they talked, he promised not to touch Songkal, but they did not agree that he would not touch his other people. And then he began to blackmail Du Shengen that he could convey those showdowns with Choi Songkal to his superiors, and then they would all be in trouble. The young man thought that really, if he was talking about all this, then in that case Choi Songkal would suffer and he, and he, after all, thinks that he is helping him. All the other prisoners of this detachment stood and watched as their commander resolved the issue of beating this guy. They had already gotten used to the fact that they had been living calmly in the detachment lately. The guard shouted at Du Zhanglong that he shouldn't turn up his nose just because he is a commander, and began poking him in the chest with his baton, showing his superiority. The guard deliberately provoked the young man to start a fight, but despite this, Du Zhanglong behaved calmly and said that he understood everything. The guard failed to provoke the commander of the third squad, so he returned to his first victim. This is the guy he just beat up. This guard said that he needed to finish what he started and prepared to beat this guy further with a telescopic baton that was in his hands. The guy shouted loudly that he was wrong and that he had already understood everything and was apologizing to the guard. Well, that wasn't enough for the guard. And he continued to beat him so that splashes of blood flew in all directions. Du Zhanglong couldn't calmly stand by and watch how they were beating. No reason for this guy. He helped him in everything and now he couldn't stand by and calmly watch it. Du Zhanglong clenched his teeth tightly in order not to lose his temper. But he could never watch how people were beaten for nothing, especially those who could not respond. The young man thought that this guard was some kind of stupid guy who in an instant turned into a killer who was ready to kill this unfortunate guy. The guard looked at Du Zhanglong with one eye and continued to strike this guy. He understood perfectly well that the young man could not restrain himself and come to the defense of this guy. This is exactly what he wanted. When the commander of the third detachment could not restrain himself and was ready to defend this guy, someone's hand pulled him back and stopped him from doing this. The young man turned back and looked who stopped him and then asked what it was and why he did it. He was stopped by the same fat man who called himself the president and to whom his excellency was addressed. This fat man said that this cannot be done, then it will be even worse. The young man didn't understand why he was saying this, but he decided to listen to him to the end. The fat man was saying that he shouldn't interfere. He'll tell you later why. Du Zhanglong decided to take his word and do as the fat man said. He trusted him because during all this time he was here, the fat man only helped him survive. The guy was on his knees and asked for forgiveness from this guard. He could no longer get up on his own from the blows he received and there was nothing left for him. How to ask for forgiveness? The guard said that now he how to communicate with them that all prisoners understand only the language of beating and they don't want to understand anything else. The guard turned his head towards the commander of the third detachment and in a very sarcastic voice asked him what he wanted to say. The commander really only understands beatings and whether he agrees with him. The young man stood and was simply silent 
He had nothing to say in response. Of course he did not agree. But he tried not to provoke the conflict further. The guy tried on his knees and asked for forgiveness. It turned out there would be no end around. They looked at how this beating would end because they understood that each of them could end up in the same situation. The next moment the guard said that he was no longer interested in them, and he would go and see how everyone else was working in their places. All the other prisoners who were standing and watching, at the same moment quickly went to their places. The guard shouted at them why they were standing and didn't they have a job and then said that they were most likely waiting for him to beat them too. The security guard did not continue to shout for them to work, that he was watching them and took out his own, which began to wave around. Du Zhongong approached the beaten guy and asked him if Lion was okay and if he could get up if he helped him. This guy began to make excuses that he really wasn't messing around, he just wanted to catch his breath. Of course the young man knew perfectly well that that was how it was. The young man and the fat man picked up this guy to take him away. The fat man said that this guard was too suspicious and didn't like him at all. Du Zhongong turned to His Excellency I asked him why he stopped him when he wanted to protect this guy. The fat man told them to look in that direction and pointed with his finger where they needed to look. The young man and the guy turned their heads. On that side there were five guards with batons and one of them was with a huge guard dog. The guards were walking nearby near the place where I worked. Today prisoners of the 3rd Detachment. These were huge, well-trained guards who were on security and inspection duties. They walked along the perimeter and looked for violators. Before Zhangong, I was very surprised that in this social institution there are people like these inspectors with dogs. The guy didn't understand how the commander didn't see these inspectors during the entire time he was here. Before Zhang Ong what exactly about them he didn't know anything about where they could become a problem for him, when he wanted to get out of here so he had to find out everything about them. The fact that the commander did not see these people was understandable because the inspectorate usually deals with internal issues and never goes out to work. These inspectors patrolled only those places where the young man could escape from. The young man became interested and he asked when they were patrolling. The guy answered him that there were three groups of patrolling people and they patrolled for 24 hours. The young man thought if they work for 24 hours, what kind of endurance should they have? The fat man said that they are really very scary people. If they are not on their hands before the road, they will mercilessly punish anyone who gets in their way. Besides, they have a dog and she goes crazy from the smell of blood. The fat man continued to say that these inspectors had been near them all this time and if he had started a fight with the guard, they would have immediately stopped and beaten him, and their dog could have bitten them. Then a very bad situation would definitely have developed. The young man thanked the fat man for stopping him. The fat man said that he did what he did. Du Zhongong thought that this guard deliberately provoked him, knowing that this inspection was nearby and wanted them to beat him. But when the fat man stopped the young man, Something didn't go according to the plan that this guard came up with. He was quite a cunning man. The only thing that the young man understood for himself was that he urgently needed to leave this social institution. But for now, he was not even more tired of what was happening here. At this very time in Daysen in one of the office buildings in the same place where the office of the gentleman who was recently hired by Du Zhangong was. This gentleman of his assistance was now having a lunch break and they decided to eat and at the same time discussed the problems that had arisen for them lately. The gentleman asked his assistant what he learned new and why Park Guangho told him about this day Seng Welfare Center. The assistant replied that he actually found out that Park Guangho had an assistant named Choi Sung Chul and it was he who was looking for Du Jang Gong and he began to snoop around about this center. After this assistant went to this social institution, he disappeared. The gentleman thought that it was really this guy who found Du Shengen in this social institution, and this Choi Sangkal entered there. This assistant of Park Guanho entered and never returned. Then it turns out that Park Guanho was not looking for Du Shengen at all, but for his man, and nothing worked out for him. The gentleman's assistant said that he also found out about the center itself. To be brief, this is not a very decent place. He asked what an indecent place means. The assistant replied that the people who work in this social institution say that they lead homeless people to the right path. But in fact, they catch not only homeless people, but also other people who use violence against them and engage them in exhausting labor. These were northern methods. One thing is clear, how these people who were involved in a social institution got away with everything. Has no one complained about them in all this time? 
The assistant said that there were no complaints, they even received a presidential award just recently. These words greatly outraged the gentleman, and he asked, is this true? The assistant continued to talk about how the head of this center has a very close relationship with the top and with Deputy Choi. This institution is sponsored on a very large scale, not only by the top. Well, everyone who has even a little influence receives bribes from them. Now it became clear what Park Guanho was talking about. The gentleman in the brown suit said that of course it's not for him to say, but their country is completely mired in corruption and the further the further, the more and more. The assistant asked his master, does he really want to save Du Shengen from this terrible place? If Park Guan Ho couldn't do it, then does he really think that he can succeed? The gentleman looked at his assistant and said that he was going to save whom? Du Zhanlong. And after these words he laughed very loudly. The gentleman explained that Du Zhanlong got out and returned alive even after he was captured by the northerners. He does not understand how he can help him. These words surprised the assistant very much. He thought to himself, so this is the kind of person he works for. The only thing he didn't understand was why he needed to find out everything. Therefore, the assistant asked Mr. Why did he ask to find out about the Daysan Center? The Mr. replied that he just wanted to know what was what. The assistant did not understand why he had been there for so long. If he really was such a cool gentleman, he replied that most likely it was because he had injured his hands. When he would recover his hands in a month, he would most likely get out of there, and at that time in that same social institution there was relatively calm. Before Zhang Long, when he went to the assembly today, he sat all the time and thought about how he could check. Is it true? This guard in charge of the third squad wanted to set him up. In any case, this guard did not touch this guy for several days after that incident. And if he wanted to punish him, he continued to mock him. However, the guard recently became very aggressive and used his baton for no reason or reason. He beat everyone who came to his hand. And today at the assembly he was walking between the rows when he approached one of the prisoners he began to shout loudly if he did not want to be beaten let him do his job properly recently he began to beat other people and mock them as he usually did. Du Zhanglong forgot for a moment that this institution where they are now has always been like this and the guards here always beat prisoners for no reason. The young man would like to give vent to his anger and destroy everything around here. Well, he had to endure quite a bit until his hands healed. Du Zhanglong reassured you by saying that in a little while his arms would recover, then he could get out of here, and then I would take revenge for my suffering. Today, the security guard of the same fat man who called himself president. The fat man asked why they did this to him. The guy who was beaten recently approached the fat man and asked if he was okay. The fat man replied that no, he was not fine, he was in a lot of pain, then the guy said that he needed to get along with him, and he would ask for at least some ointment for him. So the fat man said that there is no need. There are no normal medicines anyway, and even if they go to the hospital wing, they can again be accused of idleness. The guy agreed with him. The young man did not understand why this guard became so aggressive and beat everyone around him, provoking him into a conflict. Fat man despite the fact that he was beaten, he was still a very positive person, so he asked the commander how his hands were and also asked if he could get some medicine, which he ate wonderfully last time. The young man was a little confused and remembered about the medicine, that is, about newborn rats. The guy sat next to the young man and asked if he could even eat this rat. He's not Diana. The young man asked who Diana was. The guy felt funny. Doesn't his commander know about the American TV series? That's why he asked him if he hadn't watched it, and then we'll continue when you get out of here. Be sure to watch this very interesting American series itself. The fat man and the guy laughed at the young man because it was the first time they had seen someone who had not watched the series. The trunk of the car was open and there was a huge box on top. It was sealed so it couldn't be opened. The president's part-time assistant, his son, was now busy packing this box. He had such a job. The president of the social institution got into the car and asked his son if his assistant had packed it. The father answered him, of course. The president said that they could already move on and leave. The gates of their social institution opened, and on the side stood the guards who guarded this institution with their heads bowed low. It was already quite late. The car with the president of the Daysen Social Institution drove up to one of the most expensive restaurants in the city. It was here that he was supposed to have dinner with one of his patrons. 
When the president got out of the car, his son Bon Appetit to his father, and said that he would be waiting for him in the car. The president said that he has absolutely no appetite, he will now have dinner with such a person who does not know how to eat at all, but he cannot do anything, so he went. Today he had dinner with exactly that deputy Choi who helped him in their affairs with a social institution when the president entered the restaurant he greeted Mr. Deputy and asked how he was doing. Mr. Deputy replied that he was doing well thanks to them. Boss Pak managed to sit down with him at the same table and have dinner. The president of the social institution began to say that he was very grateful for this invitation and that he should have invited the deputy before he invited him. The deputy said that he understood everything perfectly well and they knew that they were now having problems with construction. And the deputy also added when he raised his glass to drink that they shouldn't see each other so often, they would be in a very awkward position. At this very time, the son of the president of a social institution opened his trunk and took out the very box that he had put there. Handing over this box to the deputy's assistant, he said that now is the time when it's time to sell in time and gave the box. Of course there was a bribe prepared for the deputy. The president of the social institution, after drinking one glass, told the deputy that no one else would take care of him except him and he was very grateful to the deputy for his help. The deputy said that he called him just to give him something else. He said that the president of the social institution must understand that he is not a consumer. The president agreed, but it was not clear to him what the deputy could give him. That's how he said that he is ready to provide him with information. Or better yet, it will be a revelation. He must listen carefully and draw the right conclusions. The president of a social institution did not understand why he should listen. Because he pays this gentleman quite a lot of money so that he covers him in everything. The statement that the deputy made was very he proposed a new idea to do away with this social center completely and start a new business for the president of the social institution. The proposal to close the center was a surprise. The deputy confirmed that this is exactly what he meant and continued to say his idea that a new sphere is now being formed in Vienna and this is housing provision, namely provision in large quantities. The president of the social institution asked what Mr. Deputy meant by housing provision. Most likely this was the provision of housing complexes. The deputy replied that no, that was not the level at all. It should be taken much higher. The deputy began to explain that they had made such a decision to build a new city near Daysen, and he needed a very responsible person whom he could rely on. So he made him such an offer. The president of the social institution thought that everything that the deputy says is really very valuable information, and, as Mr. Choi said, it is actually a revelation. The deputy proposed to the president of the social institution a new idea to buy land near the future new city and then open a sanatorium there. And then he added that nowadays it has become difficult to maintain places like your center because there are too many curious and compassionate people. The world is changing and the government is also changing. So the deputy insisted that the president consider his proposal. The president of the social center said that he understood. And the deputy added that everything he just told at this dinner is a big secret. But this is his gift for the apples that he regularly brings him in the parcel. The president of the social institution lowered his head and thanked Mr. Deputy for all the information that he had just provided him. Mr. Deputy, I will continue to say that if the president also plants fruit-bearing trees on his new land and they bloom and bear fruit, it will not bring him even more apples than he is now being treated to. The president of the social institution, of course, agreed with the deputy, but thought to himself that this was a chance, and this was a huge success for him. He could not get such information anywhere. The son of Mr. President was sitting in the car and listening to a song that was playing in his car on the radio. This song said that don't love me late words. And also in this song they sang about the fact that don't wait for me, our love will come to an end. The son of the president of a social institution sat and sang along to this song. He knew it by heart. So he liked to sing words like why did you just leave me if I knew that I would be so sorry. At that moment, when he was singing a song to himself, the back door of the car opened and his father sat in the back seat. The president of the social institution told his son to go. The presidential aide asked his father if dinner had already finished. Then he was ready and began to start the car to get going. The president of the social institution was very pleased and mysteriously answered his son that they weren't finished and most likely that it was already over. When the presidential assistant started the car, 
they slowly began to drive away from the very restaurant where the president of the social institution was now meeting with the deputy. He was driving in the car and thought that he would need to get rid of the center and sell the property there, and then buy land near the new town at the best price and as much as possible then he would definitely get rich. It seemed to him that then it would be more than just the wealth of his family. It would become much higher and they would finally start talking to him on equal terms. He thought that he was not mistaken in this deputy Choi, and yet there is something in the fact that he gave him the largest number of bribes. The president was sitting behind the wheel and couldn't understand what was happening to his father, so he turned around and asked him if something happy had happened there in the restaurant. His father told him that it had happened and let him turn the music up louder. The president's assistant looked at his father and said that he also liked what he was listening to, then it was good, and he was ready to turn up this song louder. The president's assistant turned the knob with a tape recorder so that the music could be heard not only in the car but outside it. The car was driving through the evening city and from it a song was heard in which there were such words as he has no love left. Now he feels nothing, just like your face that left him with a smile. The morning in the social institution began as usual in the barracks of the third detachment. Everyone woke up according to schedule. The prisoners began cleaning as they did every morning. Du Jamon woke up as usual and began to look at his hands. He could already move them calmly and did not feel pain. Enough time had passed since he had been here. The young man had a feeling as if his hands were beginning to heal and this made him very happy, which meant his time here was coming to an end. The month that the doctor was talking about when he was putting on a plaster was also already coming to an end. It was with these thoughts that the young man woke up today. He wanted to get out of here as quickly as possible. He shaved himself thinking that he probably needed to start preparing to get out of here. For this he needed a plan. He had to come up with one in the near future. The same guy who was beaten yesterday approached Du Zhangong. He wanted to tell his commander something important. Oddly enough, he said that the commander of the second detachment was looking for Du Zhangong. The young man asked why, but the guy didn't know. The young man thought that this commander of the second detachment promised that he would know when in fact prepare, and they can eat ramen well. Du Zhangong imagined what the very dish he wanted to eat today looked like and even mentally wished himself bon appetit. The young man imagined how he would use two iron chopsticks to pick up a fairly large amount of very tasty vermicelli and put it down so that he could enjoy it. The commander of the third detachment. When he came to the dining room with other commanders, he saw them sitting at the same table in front of him there was very little noodles. The young man asked why they had prepared so modestly for his arrival today. The commanders of other detachments replied that today they were able to snatch only one pack of noodles of ramen, and they gave such value to him. Of course the young man was very grateful and said thank you. All the other squad commanders sat and watched him as he was. They had very boring faces. They probably had something in mind before inviting the third squad commander here. The day before... All the squad leaders except Du Zhangwang gathered to decide what to do with him. Because that guy Chong Changsu, I coped with the task they assigned him and now they needed to think about what to do next. The commander of the second detachment said that this was not just a failure on his part. He is now stuck to Du Zhangwang. Most likely, he knows for sure that this is their work. One of the commanders said that it would be good if this rat who went over to the other side of Zhang Chansu was also given a good lesson. The commander of the first detachment said that why waste energy on a madman? It won't help them in any way. All these commanders were afraid of only one thing. If Du Zhanglong knew the truth and decides to take revenge on them, what should they do then? They cannot cope with him in any way. The commander of the second detachment said that Du Zhanglong was able to forgive Chong Changsu, although he himself asked to kill him. Maybe it will work for us just to ask for forgiveness. The rest of the commanders did not immediately understand how to simply ask for forgiveness. Well, the commander of the second detachment insisted that this should not just be forgiveness, but to prepare some kind of bribe so that he would definitely not touch them again. The commander of the second detachment said that this bribe should consist of what he likes best and what he loves very much. The commander of the second detachment remembered how Du Zhanglong ate ramen last time. It was exactly the kind that could be given to him as a bribe right here. When he cooked it and then ate it, he always said that it was an extraordinary yummy, and he prepared to eat it all the time. Du Zhangong, sitting at the dinner table with the rest of the squad leaders, said that they wanted to discuss something after he had eaten. 
the commander of the second detachment took full responsibility. He said that yes, they were the ones who came to talk to him and began with the fact that this conversation would be about that same crazy person, Chan Changsu. Du Zhanlong interrupted him and said that it was the poor fellows who told him that he was a spy in the north, and he knew about it. The commander of the second detachment did not deny that it was them, but he wanted to somehow justify himself. She said that they were really sorry and they would not do this again, so they invited him here and were ready to feed him. Everything became clear to the young man. All the other commanders did not understand what was clear to him, and asked Du Zhanlong what he meant and how he felt about it. The commander of the second detachment also did not immediately understand that it was really that simple. This young man is ready to forgive and is not going to take revenge on them. The commanders of other units thought that everything happened much simpler than they thought. They just had to apologize and the incident was over. Each of the squad leaders thought to themselves, Is this confrontation over? And they are no longer in danger, at least the revenge of this commander of the third squad. Before Zhang Long, it was very infuriating that the four squad leaders were doing behind his back. But there was no point in this anymore since the young man was still going to get out of here in the near future. Only he had one question to ask everyone present here. Ask them if they don't want to get out of here. Everyone else was just silent. They were afraid to tell the truth. The commanders of the third detachment understood perfectly well that he was not the only one sitting here against his own will. The words of all the other commanders only confirmed his assumption. Of course, all these commanders were sometimes fed with treats and given a status a little higher than everyone else. But this did not discourage them from returning home. Most likely someone was waiting for them outside. The commander said that he no longer knows whether they are waiting for him or not. Enough time has passed and his relatives do not believe that he will return. At least it seemed so to him. And another commander said that he was kicked out of the house. But despite this, he was sure that his mother had long ago started looking for him. The commander of the second detachment did not say anything. He was just silent. Most likely he had a story that he did not want to tell everyone. And another commander didn't say anything either. He was just silent and thinking about something. He was very young and most likely before he got here some tragedy happened to him. Du Zhanglong could not understand what happened to these commanders after the question he asked them. It felt like he asked the little orphans in the orphanage if they missed their mother. They, too, were victims in this situation, which is why they behaved this way. Each of them had a not very pleasant story for him because of which he was in this social institution. The young man thanked him for the treat and said if they had already finished the conversation, then he would bow and go to his barracks. But he thought to himself that he did not want to sympathize with anyone. And the young man also thought to himself that all these people a few days ago were going to kill him and besides, they mocked other people who are here, so they don't cause any pity. All four commanders in the detachment rebelled to sit in the dining room. After the young man left them, they also felt completely uneasy because the situation in the social institution had been heating up lately. When the young man almost left the room to say goodbye, he said that these commanders should stop pestering other people. They were also caught like them. If power and their positions are taken away from them, then they will become the same simple prisoners. In the end, the young man and the group of these detachment commanders never came to anything. One of these commanders shouted goodbye to the young man to shut up because it was unpleasant for him to listen to what he was talking about. This commander got wound up and started yelling at Du Zhanlong. He just said that the conversation was over. But for some reason everything continues this conversation. Before Zhanlong, I understood only one thing. It became very unpleasant for these people to listen to everything he said. And they were also very scared. This commander of the first detachment could not calm down and began to say that the young man simply did not like him, and therefore he was scaring them with the fact that if their positions were taken away from them, they would be in the place where they are now. There are people whom they mocked. The young man understood for himself only one thing. He didn't say anything that wasn't there. He only said what actually was. And these people were so aggressively opposed to his words and against him. The commander of the first detachment said that who he was and what he knew in general, and clenching her hands into fists, she would rush at the young man. Du Zhanglong foresaw this situation and at the moment, when the enemy ran very close to him, he kicked him so as to stop him. And he also made several blows. Du Zhanglong completely threw the commander of the first detachment to a safe distance. The forces were clearly unequal. 
the young man did not want to continue this showdown any further. The commander of the first detachment tried to get up. Everyone else sat and looked at him. None of these commanders were going to help him. Du Zhanglong told them to wake up already and they were going to stay here forever and did not want to return to normal life and to their families. I'm getting up. The commander of the first detachment said that he was no one. But he said so quietly that it was barely audible. Most likely he didn't want to tell anything about himself. The young man, having heard these words, asked again that no one understood what this man was talking about and why he reacted so aggressively to his words. The commander of the first detachment burst into tears and threw a hysterical sob. He said that no one was waiting for him, even if he leaves here and has no parents or relatives there at large. He continued to sob and through his tears said that even if he left here and started working at this job, he would be disgusted by everyone as no girl would want to look at him. The young man did not agree with him and told him that he really thinks that it is better to rot here and live like a piece of garbage and mock people than to try to live like a normal person. After these words, the commander of the first detachment thought about it, and no longer objected. Indeed, he lives here like a piece of garbage. You still mock other people. The young man was right in all this. Du Zhangong said that's enough. He's leaving because he doesn't want to waste time persuading those who don't even want to listen. When he had almost approached the door and was ready to leave, someone called him. After all, not all of these commanders were so hopeless. Most likely, someone also wanted to get out of here. It was the commander of the second group. He said that he was ready to call the young man again when they found Raman. The most important thing is that he come. The young man thought about how to respond to their proposal. Initially, they were all unpleasant to him and only because Dima wanted to eat he came here for the first time today. After a minute of silence, he said that no, he would not come to them anymore and there was no need to call him anymore. But he thought to himself that he was still going to get out of here with their help or without them. After the young man left this room and was already on the street after him, the door opened and the same commander who a minute ago was sobbing loudly ran out. Du Zhangong walked absolutely calmly towards his barracks. He thought that the conversation with these commanders was already over, and he would no longer meet with them. But this aggressive commander could not forgive what had just happened in the dining room. He had to humiliate himself in front of the young man. Before Chang Gong, someone was approaching from behind. He couldn't imagine who else wanted to meet with him this evening. In his opinion, he dealt with everyone and no one like him seemed to have any claims against him. The same commander who had just knocked him out in the dining room ran away behind him but he had a brick in his hands. The situation repeated itself. He was so close that the young man did not have time to escape from this blow, and he had to cover himself with his hands. This attacking commander managed to strike and wanted to strike. So the young man could not do anything to hit the hands. The only thing that flashed through his head was ah. The brick was almost already near the hands of the young man, so Du Zhanglong from Sil shouted for him to stop. There was nothing more he could do. Well, anyway, the young man decided to act and make sure that the blow would not come quite straight but tangentially and his hands would not be hurt. And so it happened that the brick hit the plaster cast tangentially, which was applied to the young man's hand. Now it was necessary to understand how much harm this blow caused. Almost all of the plaster left a mark on his hand from the impact of a brick. This only happened because the young man was not prepared and did not hear how this commander approached him. The enemy was so aggressive towards the young man that he was ready to strike him again, although he understood that he was much weaker than the young man and could only act on the sly and from behind. Du Zhanglong looked at the plaster that was partially destroyed. He still needed to walk around in it for a while so he was a little upset. The young man asked this squad leader what he was doing and why he was behaving this way towards him. The detachment did not know what to answer him and he simply said some incomprehensible words that did not fit into one sentence. And there was no meaning in these words. Well, this detachment commander was not going to stop and was still aggressive. Obviously, he could not forgive the young man for the humiliation that had just happened to him in the dining room. Now the young man understood that he, too, must neutralize it without harm to himself. This detachment commander does not want to be kind, then he needs to give an answer and teach him a lesson. Therefore. After assessing the whole situation, the young man decided that it would be enough to hit him now with his foot or knee so as to stop him, and maybe give a few more blows so that he no longer wanted to bully himself. When this squad leader came closer, 
Du Jamon first kicked out of his hand the very brick with which he was going to strike again, and then he struck again with his foot so that this commander flew to the side and fell to the ground. Now all that remained was to teach him a lesson so that he would behave calmly. How many blows and he definitely won't be able to resist, much less strike from the back like he just did. Du Jamon dealt blow after blow so that this young man could not rise from the earth. He needed to punish the commander of the first detachment, so that he would understand and was no longer going to attack. That's why he threw him, threw him, kicked him. That's the only way this commander of the first detachment could understand something with his head. He only understood the force. There was no other way to explain it to him. Du Jonglong thought that his hand was about to heal. He wanted to hit him on the hand. But he didn't succeed and only damaged the plaster a little. The young man wondered why this commander of the first detachment tried to attack him and, most importantly, why he was aiming at his hand. The commander of the first detachment realized that he had lost. Now he needed to somehow get out of this situation. So he thought that this young man was very compassionate and he could probably just ask for forgiveness and everything would be resolved of course. Therefore, the commander of the first detachment knelt down and began to ask Du Jean He said that he was wrong and asked him not to kill him. This commander of the first detachment looked with such a pitiful look, just like a beaten puppy. He was not a very good person and that's why he behaved like that. Up to Zhang Long if he wants him to forgive him, although there was so much here that he almost crippled his already crippled hands with a stone. The commander of the first detachment interrupted him and started shouting that he was not aiming at his hands, and he did not want to cripple them even more. The young man then asked where he was aiming, most likely his head and then wanted to kill him, wanted to do it, attacked from behind and hit him with a brick. Du Zhang Long could not stand it and kicked the young man right in the head so that once she would always understand that she no longer needed to approach him. After the young man struck, he told him that, for his information, he was specifically aiming for the head and that's why he hit. If necessary, he'll hit again and left. The young man looked at his hands and thought to himself that, thank God, just a little more and this scumbag would have broken his hands, which had almost healed, they say, God protects those who are protected. A few days later, on the territory of the social center, the family mansion of the director of the center is located and this is where he lives with his two sons. Today the three of them gathered to discuss the latest events. His older son, his assistant, said that he doesn't quite understand why this deputy declassified plans for a new city to them and if this is true, then this is good news and an opportunity for them. The youngest son asked his father if he really wanted to stop the activities of the center. After all, it was at the expense of this center that they lived recently, and it brought them quite a lot of income. The director of this social center answered his son that he really wants to close this center. He doesn't feel sorry for his son at all. And the assistant said that he has nothing against it. It's just that everything happens so suddenly. The director was in a very good mood after yesterday's dinner, and it seemed to him that great prospects were opening up for him. Now he could become several steps higher and much richer. The director said that such things always happen suddenly, that you always need to build the ark before leaving Egypt, that well, that Moses received revelations from above without expecting them. The youngest son was a little stupid and didn't understand what his father was talking about, what the words of revelation meant, he couldn't understand. The director continued to say that yes, this is a revelation, this is a real revelation that will put them in the most honey-smeared place, and they will then live in chocolate. The new city will become Canaan for them. The older brother told his younger brother not to worry, that he should listen to his father, as in principle they always do. The younger brother agreed with them. Now the question arose, what should they do now? And the eldest son wanted to know this, but as an assistant director. The father said that first we need to deal with the center and sell all the property since it will be necessary to buy more land on the territory of the new city. In his opinion, there was no point in selling the building itself from the center since it was useless and could only be bought for next to nothing. Therefore, it was necessary to sell the entire plot and the father also said that it would be necessary to sell the cars. This was necessary. In order to get as much money as possible, these words made the eldest son think. The eldest son told his father that they also have another property in this social center and something will also need to be done with it. He didn't immediately understand what he was talking about, and so he asked what kind of property it was. The senior stage manager said that these were people, that is, 
prisoners who were on the territory of the social center. There were quite a lot of them and something had to be done with them. These people, of course, could be called property because at their expense they received money. They worked for them. Well, wouldn't the issue with these people be resolved if we simply closed the center? This was the opinion of the director of this center. The eldest son said that he is not talking about this. He is talking about those diligent workers who are there in a social institution. The father did not understand what he was talking about and asked what kind of diligent workers these were. His eldest son replied that they could not start choosing diligent workers before the center closed. Most likely, the eldest son, the director of a social institution, came up with some kind of plan and his father was ready to listen to the plan because he trusted his children. The younger brother realized that his older brother now meant that he wanted to use as many people as possible for organs and get a lot of money from it. The father said that this is really possible. After all, they usually pull this off only when they receive a request from the other side. It's unrealistic for that side to be able to get such a large amount of money at one time. The eldest son said that they only need to give in and they'll decide for themselves. The younger brother was very indignant. What does it mean to give in on price? The older brother calmed him down and said that of course it was better to sell this product cheaply than not sell it at all. The father agreed with the words of his eldest son because he understood perfectly well that it would be better for them if as few people as possible remained when the center closed. The eldest son explained that if they just let everyone go, then among them there will definitely be at least one loud-mouthed person who will begin to tell the whole truth about what happened outside the gates of the social institution. And now, of course, many in the city take their opinion into account. Let it stay that way. Therefore, the eldest son suggested getting rid of all possible risks as quickly as possible, and this could only be done through the other side by selling people for organs. The father was very proud of his children, and now he completely agreed with them. After all, they were a family and one whole. Therefore, the father said that he left all this to him. To his eldest son, he agreed and said that he would take care of this to resolve the issue in the near future. The older brother told his younger brother that it was time for them to go because they needed to contact those people on the other side who were dealing with the issue of human organs. Today the weather was very good in the port. As always, there were a sufficient number of yachts. These were yachts mainly of those wealthy people who lived in this city of Daesan. The brothers went into the city by car in order to contact these people they needed. The older brother went out and started calling these people from a street phone. This had to be done so that no one could trace the call, and the younger brother sat and watched how beautiful the clouds are today in the sky. The older brother dialed the phone number he needed and said that the duck meat specialist was bothering them. That was the password. On the other side of the phone they told him how many people didn't understand what happened and why he was calling them himself. Usually everything happened the other way around. The elder brother continued to talk down the phone that he would like to send as many ducks as possible next time, and he can do this in the near future. It was a very sudden proposal, and on the other side they said that they convey the order to them only when it comes to them clients. The elder brother continued to insist that he was ready to offer them a lot of ducks, and he would take only seven-tenths of the usual price, and they could take the rest for themselves on the other side. They asked him if he really wanted to clean out his warehouse. The elder brother said that they didn't need to know about their affairs, and they should accept his offer from the other side. It was said that in this case, would they be able to not tear up the ducks but bring them back whole? Well, of course, it was necessary to euthanize them first. And the most important thing is that they can only give half cost since the procedure will be carried out themselves. The elder brother thought that these people wanted to keep people alive until the order came in because organs are not stored outside the body for a long time, but they only offered half price. The young man thought and said that it's good how many ducks can you take at one time he was with these people where he was told that he needs to start with five. Everything was decided and this time five diligent workers would be selected from the social institution and this had to be done in a very short time. Two brothers gathered all the guards who worked for them and said that this time they would need five people at once and it didn't matter at all what their blood type and all other indicators would be. The older brother said that it doesn't matter at all. There's no need to complicate things. You just need to choose five from one group and this needs to be done in the near future. Said that if you do exactly this and choose five from one group, then people might think it's unnecessary. 
the assistant director answered him that he needs to come up with something and say today the diligence squad is awarded. One of the guards he explained to the guard that if they were going to continue to conduct the business of this social institution, he would play along with them a little. However, now there is no point in this, so let them do as he tells them, the guards agreed. Now they had to choose which of the squads they would call diligent, and from there you would choose five of these prisoners. You had to do all this so that none of them would guess. Of course, there was a huge difference between choosing one person from each squad every month and choosing five from one squad at once, so the guards were very doubtful. The guards knew very well that choosing a diligent worker meant killing him. This would be the death of this person. So even for such workers, choosing five at once for a death sentence was too much. Someone's hand rose up this as the hand of one of the guards of some detachment. This person was ready to name five prisoners who would need to be killed in the near future, and this guard turned out to be the same guard from the third detachment. He said that he was ready to choose people from their detachment. This way he wanted to solve his problems. It was easy for him to do this because he had to name five people and this was exactly the number that he was ready to send to death sentence. It was five that he could not tolerate. The assistant to the president of the social institution asked this guard it was he who was responsible for the third detachment. The guard replied that yes, now he only needed to select five prisoners in his detachment. The guard said that he had nothing to think about, but everything was already ready here. He was ready to name five names that would need to be presented to everyone as diligent workers in the near future, and began to list. The first was Choi Sangkal. You owed him money from the guard and that's why he named him. The second was Du Shengen. He knew everything about this guard and had pressure on him. Then there were the hats that were next to Du Zhanglong. There was the same guy who helped the young man from the very beginning and the fat man who imagined himself as the president and demanded that your eminence address him. Well, the fifth could be anyone. The assistant director of the social institution told him not to include the Du Zhanglong list. This was his personal order. Most likely he had some other plans for this young man. The younger brother did not understand why the older brother needs this Du Zhanglong. After all, they are now finishing this business, and they will not need people of this kind at all. The guard was very indignant why the assistant director didn't want the commander of the third squad to be on the list again. His plan didn't work. The assistant director said that the guard must do his job well. He only needs to obey his decision. He should not think for himself, and he also does not have the right to decide. The guard lowered his head and began to ask for forgiveness because such behavior was not welcomed among the employees of this social institution. The guard said that he would do everything as he was told. Everything that just happened in this room was not entirely clear to the younger brother. So after everyone had left, he decided to clarify why his older brother made such a decision. The elder brother asked his Mr. Younger Brother if he wanted to know why he did not include the list of the commander of the third detachment. Du Zhanglong of course the younger brother wanted to hear an explanation. Therefore, the elder brother first asked him this question. Did he get the impression that Du Zhanglong changed after he was made commander? He didn't know what to answer to his older brother and said that most likely it was true. This young man seemed to have changed. Then it was necessary to decide how he had changed. The younger brother said that he didn't quite understand and didn't know, but he seemed to accept his position and the situation as a whole. The elder brother said that he was absolutely right and that he should remember when he said before that in the near future this young man would be of great benefit. The younger brother agreed. Then the older brother explained that they were starting a new business. That's why he thought and wanted this young man to work for him. The only thing that confused the younger brother was whether he would agree. Therefore, the elder brother said that there is no need to put off until tomorrow what can be done today. You need to go and ask the young man if he is preparing to work for them. The guard formed the entire third detachment and began to read out the names that, in his opinion, belonged to those prisoners who were the best workers that month. Songkal didn't immediately understand why they were all gathered and built together, and now this guard is doing roll call. This usually happens in the morning. The guard spoke loudly so that everyone in this room could hear. He said that this time the rules for selecting a diligent worker had changed, so this time several people would be selected. For all the prisoners, this was some kind of incredible event. They did not believe that it was true and this guard is not joking. If several diligent workers are removed, then these people will have to be released from this social institution.
The guard said that everyone was silent, and he would start talking about those who would be on the list of diligent workers. The first name he named was the name Choi Songkal. Songchul was a little surprised, and he thought that this guard had finally decided to keep his promise and let him out of this social institution. The next name he called was the name of the guy who helped the young man from the very beginning as soon as he got here. It was Lee Sunjo. Each of these prisoners stood very carefully and looked at the guard because he wanted to get out of here, and they were waiting that maybe the next name would be his. The next name was the name of John Doan. This is the name of the same fat man who considered himself the president. When he heard his name he was very happy because he had to leave this institution. Before John Long, he didn't understand all the names that this guard called, these were names from his environment. Well then, he should have said his name too. The guard named two more names and these were Park Won Huan and Lee Jin Sik. These are exactly five prisoners who this month will receive the title of best worker, and, according to the prisoners, they should have been released home. All of these people were very happy they shouted wow of course not one of them believed that this could happen they thought that they were going home the commander of the third detachment did not understand what kind of nonsense this was why was his name not on this list. Lee Kang Jin to the young man and said he doesn't believe himself and will get out of here very soon. Du Zhanlong was very happy for him and not very happy for himself. Sankal went up to the young man and said that he was grateful for everything and that he would go. He was very tired here and wanted to get out of here quickly. The young man was very upset that it was not him but these people who were leaving today. But he decided for himself that let it be so. At least they would be released from here. Whose voice was it that called Du Zhanglong? He turned in that direction and looked who it could be and what he needed. It was the guard of their third detachment. He told the young man to follow him because the deputy director was calling him and he needed to come urgently. Du Zhanglong thought that today was some very unusual day. Instead of one, five people were chosen and now the deputy director himself wants to see him. When the young man came to the office of the deputy director, he was very kind to him at first. He offered him a cup of coffee and began to brew it himself. The young man was very suspicious of this meeting. It seemed to him that the deputy director clearly needed something from him, but he could not understand what exactly. The deputy director put a cup in front of the young man on the table and said that it was for him and he could drink. The young man thanked him. It was instant coffee. The young man didn't remember the last time he drank it, so he took it into his hands with great pleasure, and he started drinking it with everything. This coffee was also sweet and tart and soft in moderation, just like he liked it in ordinary life. The deputy director asked the young man what he did before he got to this social institution. Du Zhanglong was a little surprised, but then decided to answer that he worked there himself, wherever physical strength was needed. The deputy director asked him again, did he also work as a loader, because here he mainly carried stones and it worked out quite well for him? The young man remembered how he worked at a construction site there. He was definitely like a loader and carried bags of cement, so he answered the deputy director that he tried to work as a loader and also said that he did not have a permanent job. The deputy director asked if he had a house. The young man replied that he did not understand. In what sense he wants to know about his house in a house as a building or about a house as a family? The young man replied that in any case, he had neither one nor the other. So the deputy director said that this was very good and decided that he would speak directly. He invited him to work for him, the young man. At first he did not understand what this guy was saying. Du Zhanglong didn't understand if he meant here so he seems to be working for him anyway. The deputy director interrupted him and said no, soon he will be doing something completely different. The deputy director continued to say that the young man does not have a child or a kitten and he still has nowhere to return to after leaving here, so he decided to offer him to work for him. He thought about this when he saw how a young man beat up Commander Chan, despite his hands, such physical characteristics would be very useful to him. Everything was clear to the young man. Only he didn't know what decision he should make, whether he would agree or not. The deputy director was waiting for an answer, so the young man thought a little and decided that he still had to leave here. So he would just play along with him. Who knows if he refuses now, won't it get worse? That's why the young man answered the deputy director that he agreed and would work for him. And the young man also said, I quote the words of the director, that he should be grateful if you see the benefit in him. 
The deputy director was very pleased with his answer and glad. The young man, as always, could not restrain himself and asked the deputy director, But what is this new business, and what are they going to do now? The deputy director said that the center would soon no longer exist and they would start doing new business. These words really surprised the young man. It could change all his plans. Most likely because of this, the management began to select diligent people in a new way, not one at a time, but five at a time. The deputy director asked him whether he really regrets that he was not chosen and he wanted to get out of here so badly. The young man, of course, wanted to leave this social institution. The deputy director told the young man that since he had already agreed to work for him, he would now tell him something very funny. And this funny thing concerned precisely the question that he had just asked. The selected workers did not return home. In no way did the young man have questions again, and he did not know the answers to them. Therefore, the deputy director listened very carefully to this man and continued to talk about how he is looking for profit everywhere, even where there is none, and he does the same with these people. The young man thought that most likely he is forcing them to work somewhere else. The deputy director decided to check the young man's reaction and at the same time check whether he could work for him. He decided to tell him the whole truth. Therefore, he began to tell that they were selling the insides of these people. That is why the young man should not regret that he was not chosen. If he had been selected, he would have been a piece of meat. The young man thought to himself, could this be the sale of organs? He could have guessed anything, but killing people and selling organs was something even for him. The deputy director liked the young man's reaction. After these words, he didn't even twitch, didn't get indignant, and didn't start screaming. The deputy director continued to say that these organs are purchased by people much higher than those with whom they work, and it is these people who set the price for these organs. The young man listened to everything attentively and said that everything was clear to him. But he thought to himself that now it became clear to him where do the prisoners who are in this social institution go, and why no one knows the truth there in freedom. The young man wanted to check with the deputy director whether he understood correctly that a person's price is determined by money and it is these rules that he adheres to. The deputy director said that the young man understood everything correctly, and it is these rules that he adheres to and will adhere to in the future. Then the young man unexpectedly told the deputy director that by working for him he would be able to increase his value. The deputy director did not expect an answer, but he was very pleased with everything that was now said. This young man is in his office, which means he was not mistaken in him and made the right choice. The deputy director told the young man that he thinks absolutely correctly, and he is ready to help him in the future if he agrees to work for him. The young man had already finished his cup of coffee to the very bottom and the conversation was also almost over. Each of them heard what he wanted to hear. The man stood up and asked permission to return to the barracks with everyone else. The deputy director said okay and added that they would talk about all the details later. The young man walked along a long office corridor and digested all the information he had just heard. He had to decide for himself what he would do. He had just learned a fairly large amount of truth that he didn't even suspect about. It concerned him and those around him. These people who were happy today and thought that they would be released, they should simply be sent to the organs. All this brought him into a state of extraordinary anger, but he could not tell it to anyone. Therefore, he needed to solve this problem himself. He understood perfectly well that the leadership of this social institution was a father and two sons who were crazy psychopaths and treated people like commodities. He couldn't wrap his head around how it could be that they would sell all these people for organs. It turns out they would all have to be killed, and he spent all this time with them while he was in the social institution. It was these people who helped him survive. The young man was very worried that he would not even be able to influence anything because everything had already been decided and the names of those people who were to become victims were named. He thought that he had a plan to escape from here alone when his hands healed, but it was almost impossible to escape with several people. He decided to try to move his hands. They practically didn't hurt. He was interested in whether they had already healed or not. A lot depended on this. The young man decided for himself that he could no longer be in this terrible place. If he saw the face of this scoundrel deputy director again, he definitely couldn't vouch for himself. Therefore, he decided that he urgently needed to get out of here and this had to be done tonight. He had no other option in order to survive.
evening came and all the prisoners were already preparing for bed in the barracks, and the days were similar to one another, and this evening was also like that. Du Jamong sat on his bed and thought only about one thing, how to get out of here. He didn't have a plan in his head yet, but he couldn't be idle. He looked at his hand and saw that the key to the entrance doors of this barracks was hanging on his armband. He thought that he needed to use this somehow. A young man who became practically his right hand and who looked after him from the very beginning approached Du Jianglong and asked if everything was fine with him. Du Jianglong asked him why he was interested. The young man said that it just so happens that as soon as they leave, Du Jianglong remains here and this bothered him very much because he did not know the whole truth. Du Jianglong thought that this young man was worried about him staying here. Of course he was very pleased but he understood that he had to get out of here and as quickly as possible. So he told this guy that everything was fine and that he should not worry. This guy told him that he was very grateful to Du Zhanglong, and now when he returns home he will live correctly. On the one hand, Du Zhanglong thought, It's good that they don't know the whole truth, and he answered the young man that it's very good that he will live correctly. When everyone in the barracks fell asleep and no one could hear anything, it was possible to act. Only one person did not sleep that night, and it was Du Zhanglong. Du Zhanglong lay on his bed and waited for the right moment. He thought about not telling anyone, although he knew about everything that was happening in this institution where they were held. He got up and sat on his bed, thinking that he can't do anything about it, and can't save everyone by telling them the truth without any plan. If now he tells everyone where they are actually going and everyone finds out the truth, then his position will be difficult and he will not be able to leave this institution. So he unfastened the key that was hanging on his bandage. He went to the front door, inserted this key into the lock and opened part of it. The job was done. Now he had to move on. He went out into the street. First he needed to see if there were guards somewhere nearby in order to go further. He still didn't have any plan. He took off the bandage from his hand and threw it on the ground. Nothing should connect him with this place. Now he needed to get through unnoticed. Several times a night, the guards had to go around all their areas and make sure that the barracks were closed and none of the prisoners could get out of this social institution. The guard who was watching their barracks walked with a flashlight to see if everything was quiet. He was talking to someone on the phone and said that he really wanted to sleep. This guard was dissatisfied with the fact that duty returned to him very quickly, and he did not have time to rest, and most importantly, did not have time to go play cards. When the guard directed the light of his lantern towards the entrance doors of the barracks, he saw that there was someone near the barracks. He was even a little surprised who it was there. Du Jiamong did not see the guard and thought that he needed to go where he had originally planned and this had to be done very quickly until no one noticed him. The bright light blinded his eyes, he covered his face with his hands so that the light would not irritate his eyes. This meant that he was discovered by one of the guards, but the young man was not confused. In principle, he had nothing to lose. He needed to get out of here. The guard who shined the light directly into his eyes was very happy. He even shouted that it was wonderful that he caught him on his duty. The guard asked only one question. Why is he walking around the territory at night? Du Zhanglong now understands for sure that he was caught, and now he will need to decide something with this guard. He won't just let him go. The guard was angry and shouted at the young man that he had lost here at night and he was also sure that the young man wanted to escape. The guard thought that this Du Zhanglong was completely crazy if he was just trying to escape from the territory of a social institution at night. Therefore, the guard asked him that the young man decided to run away because he was not chosen. The security guard was very pleased that he had now detained the young man. Du Zhanglong thought to himself that most likely this guard thinks that he doesn't know anything about the latest events and doesn't know where these prisoners will be sent. The guard told the young man not to be sad because he wanted to nominate him, but the deputy director didn't allow him, looked at the fact that he invited you separately. He probably liked Du Zhanglong. Now it was clear why all the people close to him were on this list, and they don't even understand what awaits them, thought Du Zhanglong. The security guard wondered how their deputy director would react when he saw him now here on the territory of a social institution at night, trying to escape from here. Therefore, the guard began to scare that all he had to do was whistle and all the inspectors who walk with dogs on the territory of this social institution would come running here. And if these inspectors find out that you are walking around at night, 
It will immediately reach the deputy director, and these words should have scared the young man. The guard wanted to humiliate Du Zhanglong as much as possible and remember where his place is, so he continued to threaten him and said that the deputy director would definitely not praise him if he found out about all this. Du Zhanglong interrupted him and told him to whistle. The guard didn't understand right away and asked the young man again. He said that stop talking and let him blow his whistle if he wants it. The guard was surprised by the young man's words. He thought that it was he who was speaking and that he was very suspicious, and he also thought that the young man was not even confused when he saw him here. You, the guard didn't understand why he wasn't reacting to a single word now. Du Zhanglong continued to tell him to whistle, and he also asked if he doesn't whistle. It means he doesn't want to. Du Zhanglong clenched his fists and prepared to hit the guard. He told him if he didn't whistle then the young man would help him do it. The guard got scared. And he took his whistle, put it in his mouth and whistled loudly. He did this only because Du Zhanglong demanded of him, and not because he had to do it. Inspectors with dogs who were walking around the territory of this social institution and guarding it heard the whistle of the guard. They had to react to this whistle and come to the aid of the guard. The inspector immediately gave the front command to his well-trained dog, and it immediately rushed to the side where the young man and the guard were located. The guard told the young man that now difficult times would come and there would be nothing left of his hands. He knew that Du Zhanglong was worried about his hands healing. Du Zhanglong was absolutely calm and told the guard to stand still and carefully observe what would happen now and then added either I or you will see which of us will survive. The guard was pleased that the inspectors were already very close to them. He expected that the young man would not be able to cope with the dogs and thought that this was the end for him. The inspector dog was indeed already very close. He let go of the dog's leash and gave the command for the dog to grab him. The dog rushed forward to attack the prisoner. It was trained to detain prisoners. The dog very quickly ran up to the young man and tried to pounce on him. Du Zhanglong put forward one hand with a cast so that it could not grab anything else with its fangs. And just a second later, the hand of a young man was grazing the dog. Du Zhanglong thought that he, of course, loves animals very much, but now was not the case and he needed to save his life. But he cannot love those dogs that are going to kill him. This is wrong. So he unclenched her mouth and threw her aside. The dog collapsed to the ground and whined. These are dogs of a fighting breed. So she had to follow the command and detain the intruder. She was trained that way. She immediately got up and prepared to attack her opponent. Her eyes were burning with anger. It seemed that if she attacked again she would tear the man apart. There is only one thing. If a dog or any other animal feels that its opponent is stronger and he can control it, then any animal will not attack and is afraid. And now Du Zhanglong has shown that he is not afraid of this dog. He looked at her with the same look that this dog had just had, with the look of a predator, and she could not withstand this pressure. The dog ran away. The inspector who gave the command and was with it the whole time was surprised. He had never had anything like this before. He shouted after this dog where it should stand. This inspector told the guard to catch the dog, but it was already too late, and it ran far enough away and in front of them stood the culprit because of whom all this happened. The inspector with a baton walked towards the young man. He realized that this prisoner wanted to escape and now he had to punish him. This was part of his duties. So he swung his hand and hit the young man. The blow hit the plaster of his arm. The plaster cracked and crumbled in this place where there was a blow. But the young man's hand did not begin to hurt which means it has healed and maybe this plaster reduced the force of the blow. The guard thought to himself, that's all, he was happy, thinking that now with this blow the inspector had once again broken Du Zhanggong's hands. The inspector did not stop and tried to strike one. The second third young man put his hands with the plaster, and all the blows landed on the plaster. The guard thought that he, too, should be blunt in this beating of the prisoner, and start beating this young man on the hands, because he took very good care of them. The young man put two hands in front of himself in order to protect himself from these blows. He realized that he was not afraid of blows to the plaster. The plaster scattered in all directions. The inspector could not stop and continued to hit the plaster on the young man's hands with a stick. He was ready to simply destroy him. The plaster flew in different directions. The only thing that the young man realized at that moment was that his hands were in perfect order and they no longer hurt as before which meant that they had already healed. And 
The inspectors continued to strike the young man and Plaster continued to fly in all directions because he was defending himself from these blows, and when the next moment he saw that there was no plaster left on his hands, he wanted to try to move his hands. This guard decided that this song was finished for the young man, and now he must come to an end if they hit his hands again. Before Jamong he touched his hands, he had not seen his hands for a month and finally could feel them as before. Nothing hurt. He even exhaled. This was great news. The guard and the inspector didn't understand a little what this young man was talking about. They didn't understand what was great for him now. Most likely he's gone crazy, they thought. Du Jamong told them that he would now show them what excellent means and remove the last piece of plaster from his hand. He was ready to teach them a lesson. The guard got scared and swung his baton at the young man. He said, Why is he smiling here? Is he really tired of his life and was already thinking of striking him with this baton? How at that moment he received a fist right in the nose. The guard certainly did not expect this, and did not expect that the young man's hands had healed, and he would be able to fully engage in battle. After this blow, the guard's nose was broken and his caviar splattered in all directions, and several teeth also flew out in different directions. Du Zhang did not stop and dealt another blow to this inspector so that he could no longer get up and could no longer swing his baton. The rest of the guards saw how their colleague was knocked out. They were a little scared. They understood perfectly well that they were next and they could not avoid it. Indeed, the next one was another guard who came with a dog. A young man also knocked him out to lie on the ground so that he could not move. There was one more guard left. He looked at Du Zhang and realized that he was next. He knew that he couldn't cope with him. If the inspectors and the dog couldn't cope with him, then he definitely couldn't cope with fear took over him completely. Du Jamong took your fist to deal with this guard. He has been waiting for this moment for a very long time and finally it has come. Du Jamong is healed. In response to the noise, several more security guards who were on duty that night at the social institution came running. Each of them was sure that they were about to kill this young man. But none of them knew who was in front of them and no one could even think that he himself could cope with them all. The young man assessed the situation and began to act. He immediately struck the closest guard. Blood flowed from his nose and mouth. One blow was enough for this guard to no longer attack. Another guard tried to hit the young man with his baton, but the blow missed because Du Zhang dodged the blow. And then he delivered a counter blow with his fist right in the face of this guard. He acted very quickly so the guards did not have time to react and missed the blows. After the young man knocked this guard off the moss, he dealt him several more blows so that he would not get up again. The guards were finished. They definitely wouldn't be able to hinder him anymore. The path was free. He could only act according to the plan he came up with. But standing behind them was the same guard who guarded their barracks. He stood and could not move because he was afraid that the young man would do even worse to him than to all the other guards. The guard could not utter a word. He thought for a few minutes and decided that he needed to leave here and report to all management. Therefore, the next moment he turned around and ran towards the room where the guards were located. He was more afraid for his life than for anything else. Du Jamong looked at him and thought that this guard is a bad person and should not be allowed to go far. Therefore, he reached into the pocket of his pants and found there an iron stick that he brought into the hall when he was preparing ramen. This was exactly the moment when it came in handy for him. Pulling this iron rod out of his pocket, the young man thought that if he could not catch up with this guard, then he could stop him. Therefore, he threw this iron stick towards the guard. In addition to the fact that he struck very hard, he also threw accurately. And now he hit his target, and even the iron rod pierced the tendons on the guard's leg. A lot of blood immediately splashed out. The guard definitely couldn't move anymore. Therefore, he fell to the ground and screamed loudly. Most likely he was in a lot of pain because the iron rod pierced his leg right through and the blood did not stop. The guard couldn't move, but that didn't mean he was safe, so the young man gave him another blow. So the guard fell to the ground with his whole body. Du Zhanglong understood perfectly well that he would no longer resist, but he wanted to finish him off and put his foot right on the guard's head and crushed it. Du Zhanglong told the guard that he told him, Either he or the guard and pressed his foot even harder on his head. The guard shouted that he was in great pain. The guard began to beg for mercy. Du Zhanglong said that it is very bad for him to pray for his own mercy. He should pray much better when you can so easily condemn others to death. The young man pressed his foot more and more on his head, 
the guard asked for mercy, said that he was in great pain and began to cry. I was worried about my life. Du Jiamong didn't take long to deal with this guard and immediately kicked him on the head with all his might. The guard was lying on the ground. He was no longer screaming. He had no strength. He could only breathe quietly. He wouldn't bother anyone anymore. While Du Jiamong was dealing with this idiot guard, one of those he had just knocked out stood up behind him. This thug guard was ready to attack the young man again. The guard with a broken nose grabbed his baton and decided that he could still come up from behind and strike the young man. It seemed to him that what happened to him was not enough. Du Jiamong saw that one of the guards was trying to attack him from behind, so he reached into his pocket to take out another iron stick. He pierced the guard's eye with this iron rod so that he screamed loudly and grabbed his eye and, most likely, what was left of him from this place where the eye was, blood splashed. The guard was no longer in the mood to attack the young man. He sat and suffered from pain. Du Jiamong thought that he could not remember how many chopsticks he had in his pocket. He once again reached into his pocket with his hand and counted them. He calmly walked through the territory of this social institution to the place from where he was supposed to get to freedom. He thought that in any case he would kill whoever twitched, and with this guard he told them to just lie around a little more. None of the guards began to rise from the earth. Their lives were much more important than this prisoner who was about to escape. It was an excellent choice of guards. The young man thought that he had now dealt with these guards, but there were also guards at the main gate. In addition, the patrolman would soon get up and report the whole situation to the guards. Thus all the employees and the director would be brought to the gate. Of course, his hands had healed and he could afford to deal with a couple of people. But still, he decided to avoid such a situation and went a different route, since now he was trying to escape and was not committing suicide. He thought that he would be very tired of such a mess. He definitely didn't need it. If he climbs along this rock here, he will definitely not rest. But there is an advantage here that no one will climb after him, and he will be able to leave. Moreover, it was not the first time for him to climb such a wall. He did it more than once when he was still in service. But that means he can do it now. One of the ways to penetrate the north during his soldier years was to climb the rocks off the coast which meant he only needed to remember how he had done it before. Du Jiamong approached this rock, chose the most convenient place where it would be easiest for him to climb onto it, and began to climb up. It was a little difficult for him because he had just begun to move his hands, so he did it very carefully and not very quickly. Of course, his arms are completely healed, but they lack strength due to a whole month of inactivity, so they cannot be so tenacious and it was very difficult for him to pull himself up. He clung to the ledge on this rock with one hand and slowly pulled up his whole body, then clinging with the other hand and everything in turn. The young man rose higher and higher. At some point it turned out that his hands were no longer holding him at all, but he could not give up and moved on. Du Jiamong thought only of one thing that he must reach the end and stretched out his hand to grab the next ledge on this rock. A little more and he will already be at the very top and only then will he be able to rest. But now he needed to move he had no other choice. He needed to make the last push in order to get to the very top of this rock and then he would be completely free. The young man lay down on the ground and lay there for several minutes. He thought about the fact that he almost tore off his arms while he got up and they were looking for it. It was a wonderful feeling he hadn't had for a long time. He felt the air of freedom and complete independence from others. He looked at the trees that surrounded him and enjoyed everything he saw. After resting a little, he decided that he needed to move on and so he stood up, but his thoughts were down there where all the other prisoners with whom he had communicated lately were. He remembered this old man who called himself president, and nothing less, and demanded that he be addressed as his excellency, and this guy who had helped him from the first day. He thought if he left alone, these people would die. Du Jianglong calmed himself down, saying that he couldn't do anything about it, and he needed to go, but he wasn't doing well but he was doing it poorly. He thought that he was no stranger to being the only survivor among everyone around him. It seemed that the situation was repeating itself all the time, and he had already experienced it. He understood that they were starting to do the same thing again. What she did during the service, and it was a little stressful for him. He wanted to get away from everything and live a quiet life. All this time he was walking through the forest. A little later he came out onto some road. Du Jiamong was happy about this. It means he is on the right path. 
Therefore, the young man thought that if he walked along this road, he would probably go into the city, and decided that he needed to go, and not turn off. A few meters down the road, his eyes were blinded by a bright light from a car, he stopped to see what kind of car it was in front of him. He saw that it was a police car that was shining its headlights in his direction. The most important thing was not to give yourself away and not get confused. The car door opened and a policeman got out of the car and asked the young man what he was doing on the road at such a late hour. The young man replied that he was an athlete and went out to exercise and got lost in this forest. Then he asked the police to give him a lift if they don't mind. The policeman agreed to give the young man a ride and they were already rushing towards the city. A conversation ensued between them. The young man said to be taken to the police station. He wants to make a statement. This was a little unexpected for the policeman, and he asked the young man again if he really wanted to go to the police station and not even home. Before Chan Gong, this case was in the back seat and looked in the rearview mirror to see the policeman's face. He said that yes, he has someone to report. The policeman was wondering who he wants to report. He began to say something not very clear. Well, there are such very bad people. He didn't know should he trust this policeman he met because he might not be on the side of the law at all. The policeman said that everything was clear to him, and for some reason he turned off. He didn't ask me a single question. He just drove on in silence. The young man thought something was wrong here and for some reason the car was again heading up and the city was below. Du Zhangong asked the policeman why they were going in this direction and where they were going in general. He realized that something was wrong here. The policeman didn't say anything to him for several minutes and there was no need to say anything. He most likely guessed where this young man was from and what kind of bad people he was talking about. Before Chang Gong that this policeman was going somewhere in an unknown direction and he asked him again why he was going the wrong way. The policeman answered him that the young man had left the center and was wearing their uniform. He didn't understand how he was able to get out of there. There were also a lot of guards there. Du Zhangong thought to himself what the hell was this, and how could he have guessed the policeman continued to say that he would return him there anyway, and what the young man was going to do when he was free he still had nowhere to go. Du Zhangong tried to explain that he was not a street child or a homeless person, the policeman did not agree and said that he himself brought people like him there, so he immediately seized them from afar. The young man thought why the policeman was bringing people there but the policeman himself answered them at the station they give five points for each person sent to the center. Now it was clear that from the very center they were giving money to bring people there. The policeman was happy that he would probably get rich now if he caught the one who escaped. Now before Zhang Long it was clear that the police in this area were also in league with these idiots. The young man didn't think for a long time and told the policeman that he couldn't call himself a policeman after that he was just a piece of garbage. The policeman was indignant and said that the man could have thought that he did not understand what he had just told him. The policeman wanted to show how much higher he was than all these tramps, but he was wrong. Du Zhang Long told the policeman to look ahead if he was driving and without thinking twice he hit him on the head with his fist. So the policeman could no longer control the car and lost control of the steering wheel. When the policeman came to his senses, he saw that the car had left the road and now it could crash into something if he did not react to it. The policeman tried to straighten the wheels of the car so that it would go back onto the road. But it didn't work out well for him, and so he started to brake. The car was uncontrollable and therefore at speed it crashed into the curb standing on the edge of the road. But why did it carry further and crash into a tree? For several minutes now, the car with the policeman and Du Zhangong sitting in the back seat had been standing near the very tree it crashed into. Du Zhangong opened the car doors and went out into the street. He was glad that now he had survived again and nothing was threatening his life now. The young man thought that he had just recovered. How he almost got into the same situation again and did not break his arms and legs. He thought that he didn't want to believe it, but even the police were involved in all this. That's why they were so brave and weren't afraid of anything. He thought that the whole country was rotting in bribes and the like, how it infuriated him. He decided that he needed to move away from this car and walk towards the stop. It was not clear to him whether the buses were running at this time or not, and what time it was anyway. When he walked a few meters, he remembered that he didn't even have money for travel, so he couldn't get to the city by bus. Therefore, he remembered that he needed to find his old friend who brought him to this city. Only he could help him get out of here. Therefore, 
the young man decided that he needed to go to the direction where Cho Taman's office was. Only there he could find him. A car stopped near the office and two young men got out of it. One of them was Cho Taman. He was talking to someone on the phone about how their gang documentation always had to be checked so carefully that they couldn't even go home. Someone from the side called out to Cho Taman. He turned and looked in that direction. He wasn't ready to see Du Shengen now. Du Jamong told him that he barely found him well that he remembered the address written on his business card. Cho Taemun was surprised that Mr. Du Jamong was standing in front of him. Cho Taemun asked the young man how he came here. He no longer had plaster on his hands. Du Jamong told him that this is too long a story. Cho Taemun asked him how he ended up here because he was in the center of day saying, and how he was able to get out of there. Du Shangen was wondering how he knew about the center. Cho Taemun offered to go somewhere so as not to talk on the street, and asked if Du Shangen wanted to eat. Most likely he had not eaten for a long time. Du Jamong replied that he really wants to eat, but it's better that they go to the sauna now, which stinks very strongly and he wore a cast for a very long time. Cho Taemun agreed. Time runs inexorably forward and everything comes to an end. The end has come and Du Jangong stay there in the Daesan Social Institution now he could talk about it as if it had already happened. Du Zangan asked Cho Taemun how he knew where he was. They were sitting in the sauna and could talk calmly. Cho Taemun replied that it was he who came to Park Gwangho and was looking for him and his assistant and found them in this Daesan Social Institution and then asked Du Changan when he was in this social institution if there was a person with him named Choi Sungchul this is Park Gwangho's assistant. The young man replied that this man was still there. He knew that he came there to catch him. But he was wondering how Cho Taemun knew about all this. He was also wondering if Cho Taemun didn't even have the thought of getting him out of there. Cho Taemun answered him that he himself got out of there, and he was sure of it. Du Chan Nong said that this was of course true. But still, why did he wait so long if he knew the whole truth and did not help him? Cho Taemun said that he found out something about this center. They force people into backbreaking labor and sell people, and he didn't know how these psychos could be called people. Du Shengen confirmed his words and also said that he thought so. Judging because that when contacting the police they did not cooperate with him. Cho Taemun also added that not only the police are involved here, but also everyone, starting with those at the top. For a minute he remembered and said that he almost forgot, but Du Zhangong was looking for a bride. The young man was a little surprised what other bride. Then Cho Taemun said that this girl's name seemed to be Suna. She was waiting for him in Seoul. Well, she came here because she was worried. These words really surprised Du Shengen, and he thought that Suna was really looking for him. Cho Taemun was very surprised and asked Du Changgan if she was not his girlfriend. Du Changgan replied that this was not true at all, and she wasn't really his girlfriend. Then the young man thought that Du Changgan was not interested in such a relationship, and is this really one-sided love? Du Zhanglong was very interested. Cho Taemun said that he then doesn't understand at all if both parties are interested and it's all mutual why are they still not together yet, and then added that the gentleman is completely innocent, and said to himself that he lost his innocence back in high school. Du Zhanglong, at the mere thought of Sona, became a completely different person. He thought that he would definitely need to meet her when he returned to the city. Assistant Cho Taemun came into the sauna where they were sitting and steaming. He said that he had brought the clothes that Mr. Cho Taemun had asked for. He told his assistant that he was great and for now he could be free. Cho Taemun said that the gentleman and handing him the clothes added that these were his new clothes and that he should not wear this uniform again. Before Zhang Long, he had almost already put on all the things that he had. And now it was surprising for him that he was offered to change clothes. But it was a good idea because he was wearing the uniform of prisoners of the Daesan Social Institution. Cho Taemun said that he brought these clothes with him just in case, and therefore Mr. can try them on. If they fit, then let him stay in them. Du Zangan put on the clothes that Cho Taemun had just given him. They were exactly his size and fit him well. He now felt like a completely different person. Both the shirt and jacket were the right size. Everything fit perfectly, even the shoes that Cho Taemun gave him. He thanked him for helping him. Du Chan Gong thanked him again and said that he would then go. Cho Taemun replied that they needed to eat on the road and they would now take him all the way to Seoul this time so as not to worry. Cho Taemun it's very good that the gentleman agreed and he knows one wonderful place where they could eat now 
and no one would bother them. Du Shengen asked if the food there was delicious because lately he had lost the habit of eating normal food. Cho Taemun told him that the food there was very tasty and they went to the restaurant. They were sitting at a table in a restaurant and the waiter brought several dishes, this was their food. How many dishes has Du Zhangong not seen in the last month? He hasn't seen good food at all this month. Cho Taemun wished him bon appetit. He couldn't utter a single word. He really wanted to eat, and everything that stood in front of him on the table seemed to him like some kind of miracle. When Du Zhangong began to eat, he thought that he had not eaten human food for a long time and nothing like what was now on this table. He did not want to talk. He really wanted to eat. Therefore, having finished eating one dish, he immediately moved on to the second and began to eat it, enjoying it. Everything turned out to be unusually tasty. When he ate, he realized that indeed Cho Taemun had not deceived him and all the food here was truly killer. It was so delicious when cooked. Du Zhanglong could not stop and ate one dish after another. He wanted to remove all the hunger that he had during this entire month as quickly as possible. Everything was really very tasty, and Cho Taemun didn't deceive him. Well, what's inside? Du Zhanglong didn't give him peace and he couldn't focus only on food. But the food was not just tasty, but very tasty and he was ready to eat it endlessly until he had enough strength. Before Chan Gong, these dishes did not stop, but something inside him prevented him from fully enjoying the taste of these dishes. It was an incomprehensible feeling. He looked at us at Cho Taemun, who was happily eating all this food, and at how he behaved while sitting opposite. Something changed in him, and he could no longer just forget everything that happened to him during this month. Cho Taemun noticed this and tried to find out from him what happened to him or whether he doesn't like this food or maybe there is some other reason. Du Zhanglong finished his portion and thought that he couldn't understand why he felt so bad because everything ended very well for him, and he is already free. For some reason, memories of him sitting in a social institution and with two broken arms trying to work, about how the deputy director shouted at him about how he was humiliated, how he carried these heavy bricks behind his back, and he still couldn't forget how he spent the night in the punishment cell. He felt bad because of what he had experienced this month. He also remembered all those people who helped him survive there. He remembered how he was carried by that strange old man who considered himself the president and the guy who helped us all the time. He couldn't subjugate why does he think about these people, how happy they were when they found out that they could be released. But he knew the whole truth of what was going to happen to them. He remembered the words of the deputy director who said that they sell these prisoners for organs, and these organs are bought by people who have a lot of money. He couldn't understand why he felt so bad now. One situation after another popped up before his eyes. How the people of this organization mocked and beat other people. How the guards were ready to kill to death. And all the chaos that was going on there. He thought that he felt so bad and everything that happened in this day saying social institution was all because of him. Cho Taemun didn't understand what Du Shengen is talking about now why it was because of him that something had to happen in this social institution. Du Zhanglong pushed all the food away from him. He clearly understood that precisely because he turned away from all these people and left them there alone, irreparable things could happen. Reaching out to the box where the iron chopsticks lay, he grabbed a whole handful of these chopsticks. For some reason he thought that they should be useful to him. Then he stood up and asked Cho Taemun for forgiveness for not being able to pay for the food and for these chopsticks that he put in his pocket. That Cho Taemun was very surprised and couldn't understand what happened to Du Shengen, because only recently he was in a completely different mood and was about to go home. Du Shengen got up from the table and left the restaurant, followed by Cho Taemun. He asked where the gentleman was suddenly going. Du Zhanggong's answer was completely unexpected. He said that he was returning to the Daesing Social Institution because he had unfinished business there. In the social institution Daesing was restless after Du Zhanglong carried out his escape and got out by beating the guards and checking each of the prisoners. The guards walked around the barracks and they searched absolutely everything and everyone who got in their way. This has never happened here before when one of the prisoners left the territory of this institution. The main gate did not open, which means that he did not go out through this gate not on the fences. There are no traces behind them, which means he did not climb over the fence. The only way he could get out of here was to climb the rock. The deputy director of this institution asked the guards who were beaten by Du Zhanglong if they were sure that they saw him heading towards this rock, 
they confirmed their words again. One of the guards said that when he opened his eyes after being beaten by Du Zhanglong, he saw that he was heading towards this rock. The guard began to make excuses to the deputy director, saying that he could not in any way prevent him from climbing this rock because he was lying severely beaten and could not move. And Du Zhanglong calmly walked in the direction where the rock was located. The guard said that he remembers exactly that he did not go in the direction of the gate, but in the opposite direction. The director of the Daesan Social Institution was very indignant because according to these guards, he had to climb this wall. It was impossible, at least he thought so. The guard didn't want to hear anything and only asked that he be taken to the hospital first because he was in a lot of pain. The deputy director told him to shut up the idiot. A prisoner slipped away in front of his nose and now he is whining and asking to go to the hospital and kicked him again. The deputy director shouted at this guard that this prisoner Du Zhanglong beat up all his people, escaped, and one of them had his eye gouged out with a chopstick. The guard whimpered in pain and asked for help, because his leg was also pierced through with a chopstick. The director was very upset by this turn of events. He did not expect because he planned to develop his business in the near future and reach a new level. His son and deputy director of this institution said that his father should not worry. They will definitely catch. The director said that this is not the problem at all. If now at such a very important time they start having any problems, then this could create difficulties in their new business because he did not yet know exactly the location of the new city. The guards started shouting. They were calling the director and his sons, who were his deputies. They shouted Du Zhanglong and pointed towards the gate. The director's eldest son was in shock. He could not understand what could happen now and why he was found. If this prisoner was still on the territory, then why did they look for him for so long? But in fact he was not here. The guards found him at the gates of the Daesang Social Institution. But none of the guards were afraid to contact him, so they decided to report him to their management. On the other side of the gates stood Du Zhanglong. He came with his feet to the main gate of this Daesang Social Institution, and this only meant that the young man had not finished all his business here. He told the guards to open the gate because he was going to enter this social institution again. No one could understand why he was doing this. The deputy director didn't understand if Du Zhanglong had returned on his own. His brother, the thug, thought that he had brought someone with him, such as the police, or that he had a weapon in his hands. The guards said that he was alone and unarmed. One of the guards thought that Du Zhanglong couldn't just come back here. Most likely he had something on his mind. One of the brothers told the other that all this was very strange. He replied that there was no need to complicate it. You just need to catch it again. And he also added that everyone should make sure that he would not leave here alive again. He was too dangerous for them and knew more than he needed to know. The director ordered the guards who were nearby to grab him alive. The guards bowed their heads and went to carry out the order. Du Zhanglong asked the guards standing on the other side of the gate why they didn't let him in when he was inside. They didn't let him go out when he was outside. They didn't let him in. These two guards stood and talked to each other. One of them said that such a situation had never happened before. During the entire time he worked here, no one ever ran away. And even if they avoided, they did not return on their own feet. A shout was heard open. These two guards turned around to see who it was. Another guard was approaching them, shouting for them to open the gate. He came closer and began to explain to these guards of yours that you need to open the gate and launch Du Shanglong. And he also added that the director ordered to seize him. Now everything was clear to them. The guard walked up to the gate and began to open it, which surprised Du Shanglong a little. But that's exactly what he wanted because he couldn't otherwise enter the territory of this day Sing social institution. When the gate was open, Du Shanglong went inside. He said that the guards could work more quickly because they are paid money for this. And he also asked the guard if everyone knew that he had escaped from the territory of a social institution. The guard answered him yes. Du Zhanglong asked the guard again if the director knew about this, and the deputy director and his brother, the guards, answered yes and added that this is why they are all here on such a night. The guards tried to come closer, and the young man asked them if they really wanted to imprison him again, and if they were ready to carry out the order of their director. One of them took out the keys and began to twist them on the index finger of his hand. These were the keys to the punishment cell in which he had already been once. Du Zhanglong was now in a completely different mood. He knew what he was doing and knew why he came here. 
he couldn't afford to continue to be humiliated, so he reached into the inside pocket of his jacket and quietly took out a metal stick that he had taken from the restaurant. He had no intention of obeying these guards and was definitely not afraid of them, he said to this guard, has it really not dawned on them yet, and at that moment he threw this wand straight into the hand of the guard who was turning the keys, the wand pierced right through his hand and he will no longer be able to hold the keys in this hand for a very long time blood poured out in all directions. This was the first guard who tried to detain the young man. He was unable to do anything else because wild pain pierced his arm, and he could not think about anything else. The other two guards were scared. They were afraid to approach the young man, but they were obliged to carry out the director's order. They were even more afraid. The guard stood with a broken arm and was bleeding. No one was going to help him, and Du Jean-Long came closer to him to pick up the keys he was waving. Two others from the faucets turned to the young man and asked him what he was doing. They did not understand why he needed these keys. Du Jianlong answered them that they were creatures who kept innocent people locked up here, and that's why he came here to solve this problem once and for all. And he added that he wanted to pay them in coins too. Then he took out another wand from the inside pocket of his jacket. It was not clear which of these two guards it was a wand for. The guards got angry and started swinging their batons. They thought that this way they could scare him and stop him. They shouted that he was a dog. But the scream suddenly stopped, and these guards no longer shouted or waved, but only quietly wheezed. They no longer had the strength to do anything else. Before Zhang stood, he now needed to decide which direction to move. The keys were in his pocket. Behind him lay two guards who were no longer dangerous, and with a broken arm who was writhing in pain. The young man did not feel sorry for them and struck one of the guards with his wand directly in the head. He no longer moved but was lying in a pool of his blood. He struck another guard in the neck with a stick. He was also no longer dangerous, and would never again be able to mock anyone or swing his baton. Du Jamong he walked up to the guard whose hand was pierced, looked at him and, after thinking a little, told him to get up, he had a plan in his head. This guard looked at him with very pitiful eyes. He was so afraid of him that he was afraid to move in his presence, but he had no choice, and he had to follow Du Zhanggong's orders and he began to constantly ask the young man to leave him alive and not kill him like the other two guards. Du Zhanglong ordered this guard with a broken hand to go and report him to the director and his two sons. The guard became even more scared. Then the young man repeated once again that he must go in and report to his superiors about what happened here. If he doesn't want to, then he will die now. The guard had no other choice. He said that there was no need to kill him. He was already running to report what happened near the gate. Now he had no choice but to wait for this idiot security guard to run to his management and report what happened here. Du Jamong decided to wait. The guards walked around the barracks and asked all the prisoners if they had heard anything about Du Jamong and what happened tonight. The prisoners said that they really didn't hear anything. They slept very soundly that night and they don't know where he is now. Many of them had just woken up and were outraged that they were not allowed to sleep. They wanted to find out what happened. One of the prisoners answered that the commander of their squad had escaped. Choi Sankal was very surprised. How could he escape with broken arms? Is he really not a person? It was almost impossible. The guy who was always near Du Jianlong thought that maybe his hands had already healed and that's why he was able to escape from here. His Excellency was happy because he thought that his medicine helped and Du Jianlong recovered. The guy asked if he was talking about that rat, and then he thought and said is it really true? The security guard very quickly ran up and informed the management of this social institution about what happened near the gate, and within a few minutes all the management and all the security of this institution were standing there. The director looked at it all and couldn't understand how this could happen on the territory of a social institution because there were a lot of guards here. And there was one strange thing that the deputy director noticed. The keys to the entrance gates were taken by Du Zhanlong and now they were all closed on the territory of the institution. The security guard confirmed that he decided to close them here. The deputy director of the Daesan Social Institution decided that this young man was crazy and he thought that now it would be easy to deal with him. Therefore, he immediately gave the order for the guards to bring Du Jianlong to him. The guards immediately realized what they could do was only to carry out the order. The second deputy director, and also the youngest son of the director, told his father that he had better not be here until they catch this Du Zhangin. 
The director did not resist and said that he agreed with his son. But if this young man took the keys, then where can he hide here on the territory of a social institution? His son said that last time they destroyed all copies of the keys for security, but still left one copy and he will now go look for it. The director said that he would then go to his office and look in the safe and that they should look too. Both of his sons bowed their heads and said that they agreed with their father. The guard was given an order to turn over every stone, but to find it, it was unacceptable for anyone to run away, so the guards walked in a small group of five people and looked around, searching everywhere. One of the guards asked the other if everyone was really killed there near the entrance gate. The second answered that he couldn't know because he wasn't there but that's what they say. The security guard who was walking in front of these guys slowed down and started coughing. It seemed like he was suffocating. It was unclear what happened to him. Then he stopped completely. All the guards who followed him were surprised why they stopped and what happened there was no one on the sides and in front too. The security guard who walked first began to sit down and groaned in pain. He was bleeding. All this was due to the fact that a metal chopstick got into his throat and he could no longer do anything. Footsteps were heard in front and the young man asked if they were looking for him. They did not yet understand what awaited them, so they were still confident in their abilities. Du Jamon walked towards them and this guard that he was looking for them. He was absolutely sure of what he was doing and confident in his abilities. A group of these guards saw a young man and they began to shout that they needed to kill him. They were glad that they had found him, but they did not know what awaited them, because immediately a metal stick flew into the eye of the loudest one, and he could no longer scream but screamed in pain. One of the guards tried to swing a baton at the young man. He avoided this blow in time and pushed the guard aside, and then he struck him with the same iron chopstick. Now he had his main weapon. He needed to clearly strike his opponent, like this one right in the neck and after that this guard was no longer dangerous he would no longer be able to bring pain to anyone. Another guard ran as close as possible to the young man and tried to swing his baton. This guard thought that he could subdue this young man like that. But everything was completely different when Du Zhanglong grabbed the hand he was swinging. This is how the ranker looked with already frightened eyes. The young man sharply jerked his hand so that he could not strike and grabbed his head. Du Zhanglong held his head with both hands. All that was left was to make one move and break his neck so that he could no longer carry out anyone's bad orders. The next moment he did just that, sharply jerked his head and the neck of this guard was broken. Most likely he didn't need his head because he didn't know how to think with his head. Next to the young man sat another guard who got a stick in his eye. He sat and whined about how he was in pain in his eyes. Du Zhanglong did not listen to all this whining and delivered a kick so that this guard would shut up forever. Of this crowd of guards, there was only one left. He stood at the very end and did not try to attack. He saw what happened to all those who tried to do something, so he was afraid for his life. This guard began to ask the young man for mercy. He turned around and ran in the opposite direction from him. He no longer wanted to mess with him. Du Zhanglong answered him about why he was running away and where he was going. After all, this is the center, and he has the keys to the entrance gate, and he still won't be able to leave without it. Therefore, he took out another metal stick and threw it in the direction of the fleeing guard. He had to be stopped. The enemy had to be dealt with on the spot. A second later, the wand reached its target, and this guard did not have time to run far. He was lying on the earth along with his colleagues. Somewhere nearby you could hear someone walking and groaning in pain. It was clearly one of the wounded guards who was wounded when he was running away from this social institution. This guard walked along the path along the wall, holding on to it. He thought that everything was around the rat. He was so badly wounded, and they didn't even take him to the hospital and didn't help him in any way. More security people came out from around the corner. They shouted that they needed to find this young man and kill him, or at least detain him. This guard has already realized that none of them will be able to do anything to him anyway. Before Zhang Ong, he was a monster. The only thing this guard understood for himself now is that he must get out of this social institution as quickly as possible in order to save his leg. But the next moment he stopped. He didn't know what to do now and in general what awaited him in the near future. He didn't expect to see Du Zhang Ong again. He thought that he wouldn't touch him again after he gave birth. Therefore... A wild fear possessed him when he saw Du Zhanglong in front of him. He perfectly understood the power of the man who stood in front of him. 
The guard couldn't understand why he came back here now and asked the young man if he could escape. Du Zhanglong told him that yes, he thought so too. The security guard was tired. It's unclear why he came back here now, that he could still be contacted by this social institution. Has he really returned to take revenge? Du Zhanglong did not think long and answered this guard that he returned here precisely to kill them all for what they did in this life. The guard asked the young man whether he was going to go so far and really kill everyone who was on the territory of this social institution. The young man replied that he should ask why they went so far and why they abused people by killing them and selling them for their organs. 